Chapter 1441 Two armies face each other Translator, born to be Long Chen stood at the front, facing the distance. A pitch black wave was slowly coming over. This black wave seemed to be slowly devouring the world. It was a boundless sea of darkness. This black sea was composed of the dark forest's tree demons. Hundreds of millions were approaching, and their berserk and vast auras were starting to rage through the air. Although the tree demons were still extremely far away, their killing intent had already reached the Dragonblood Legion. If it was before, then such an impact would multiple the pressure they were feeling. Even experts that had gone through a hundred battles would have their hearts crumble. Due to Long Chen's speech before this, and their new comprehension of what the point of the battle was, none of the Dragonblood warriors were afraid. Not only that, but there was also that figure standing at the front of all of them. Although he wasn't huge, that figure gave them a boundless drive. He was their undefeatable god. As long as he was present, no matter how pessimistic the situation was, he would be able to lead them to victory. This was their unswerving belief. Long Chen stood at the front, his long hair and black robes billowing back. His staunch face was still completely calm, and his starry eyes possessed a reserved light. No one could tell what he was thinking. Chu Yao, Meng Qi, and Tang Wan'er had unconsciously held hands, staring at him with a soft and adoring expression. Everyone worshipped heroes, and when that hero was also their beloved, they felt an indescribable feeling of grandness. Normally, Long Chen liked to laugh and joke around without any propriety, but at important times, no one was more dependable than him. Even as the wave of darkness got closer, no one felt the slightest fear. The only thing welling up within them was battle intent. To fight alongside Long Chen was a supreme glory. This was the special charisma that Long Chen possessed. The darkness got closer, and the atmosphere began to become taut like a bow being drawn. The air grew heavier. Now that they were closer, the Dragonblood Legion could see experts from the human race at the front of the army of tree demons. What shocked Long Chen was that there were hundreds of thousands of human experts, and the corrupt path occupied the majority of that number. Behind the human experts was the army of tree demons. They were all giants, and their crowns covered the sky. From within the forest of tree demons came the roars of magical beasts. It was even possible to see some of their huge bodies between the tree demons. Long Chen, I didn't expect you to really have some gods. But your current actions are nothing more than a mantis trying to stop a carriage. You don't seem to know just how weak you are. A disdainful voice came from within the dark army. The voice wasn't particularly loud, and yet it rumbled through heaven and earth. It was like the world was resonating with his words, and that made the Dragonblood warriors' hearts shake. They had never seen such a terrifying figure before. When that person spoke, they felt the energy of the world grow distant toward them. The speaker stood in the air, his eyes like golden lanterns, a pair of wings on his back. The world shook around him. He was the ancient race's Empyrean, Pen Wanshang. When he spotted Long Chen, killing intent blazed in his eyes. Even three slaps didn't fix your habit of shooting off your mouth. I must regretfully tell you that there's simply no cure for your illness. Chewing a stalk of grass, Long Chen spoke as if he felt sorry for Pen Wancheng's incurable disease. The Dragonblood warrior's jaws dropped as low as possible, their eyes almost popping out. Although they didn't know who Pen Wancheng was, just the fact that several rank 9 celestials were standing deferentially behind him showed what kind of figure he was. Furthermore, they all felt a great heavenly Tao suppression from him. It felt like the heavenly Deus no longer cared about them, and all their energy was surging toward him. This was their first time seeing such a terrifying figure. But Long Chen said that he had slapped him three times? Long Chen, if I don't tear you to pieces today, I'll change my surname to yours, roared Pen Wansheng. No, no matter how I try, there's no way I could give birth to a birdman like you. Find someone else to be your father. Long Chen shook his head. Bastard. Pen Wancheng fully extended his wings, and golden runes revolved around him. All the heavenly Tao energy in the air raged. He was about to attack. Brother Peng, wait a moment. Don't be in such a rush. When eating and drinking, you have to do it slowly in order to savor it. The appetizers haven't even come, but you're rushing into the feast. That's boring. 
Sha Guangyan held Pen Wanchen back. Long Chen nodded at Sha Guangyan. Good. A slap in the face had a clear effect on your illness. You no longer start bragging as soon as you open your mouth. There's hope for you. Sha Guangyan's expression sank just like Pen Wanchen's had. His previous calm expression instantly became twisted with fury. Now not only were the Dragonblood warriors shocked, even the people from the ancient races, the corrupt path, and the ancient family alliance were stunned. Such terrifying figures had both been slapped by Long Chen. Had they gone insane? Or was it the world that had gone insane? Only the people who had been there knew what had happened in the ancient battlefield. They naturally had to keep that secret. So no one knew about the face slapping. Unfortunately for them, Long Chen immediately brought it up here. Everyone felt that this was inconceivable. Just what kind of monster was capable of consecutively slapping the face of Empyreans? Bosses to Loki. He didn't even tell us such a thing. Sighed Guo Ran. If it was him, he'd have announced the matter to the whole world. The Dragonblood warriors stared at Long Chen's back, filled with worship. No matter what level of genius he was facing, they would still have to be slapped by their boss. He was unrivaled. Long Chen, let me tell you your smartest move. Hand over Evil Moon, and we'll immediately leave without making things hard on you. Otherwise, not only will all of you die, but the forest of life will also be destroyed. And once you're all dead, we'll slaughter every last member of your family. Can you still act so tough now? Sha Guangyan glared at Long Chen, not bothering to hide his killing intent. Bullshit. Do you dare to touch a single hair of our family's raged Guo Ran? This person was too arrogant. Not only did he say he would kill them all, but he even said he would kill their families. That was too much. Ha ha ha. Do you think I'm just trying to scare you? You're mistaken. Once we leave the spirit world, we can annihilate all of your families. And not even the martial heaven continent would dare to say anything. Laughed Sha Guangyan. Seeing their fury, he continued. Do you still not know? The spirit world's forest of life is viewed as an enemy of the martial heaven continent. Back then, they betrayed the human race. When the dark era descended and the martial heaven continent was in danger of being destroyed, they chose to stand to the side and just watch causing the martial heaven continent to descend into a dark era lasting tens of thousands of years. Countless human experts fell, and even the sovereign of that era died because of them. They are our enemies, and by standing with them, you become enemies with the entire martial heaven continent. Since you are the enemies, who would dare to say a thing about killing your families what slander? It was the human race that betrayed the forest of life. You raged a dragonblood warrior. Idiot. Have you not opened a history book? Plenty of historical records clearly state that the forest of life is a bunch of lying, backstabbing traitors. They caused the martial heaven continent to fall into that long-lasting dark era and caused almost all life on the continent to die. It's all because of them, snorted Sha Guangyan. The dragonblood warriors were infuriated and just about to burst into curses when Long Chen waved his hand. He indifferently said, History is written by the winners or can be changed according to the requirements of the strong. The true history has long since been lost in the river of time. Arguing about it doesn't have any meaning. I told you all that the current world is one of chaos and disorder. When there's no way to talk reasonably about things, when your convictions clash, the only thing you can do is kill. Sha Guangyan, I won't waste time arguing with you. If you want to play mental warfare, I'd advise you not to embarrass yourself with your little smarts. I owe the forest of life my life, and as long as I live, you won't be able to step half a foot into the forest of life. Furthermore, there's one thing I should say. I have a certain principle. Those who step onto a battlefield and raise their blades toward me are viewed as my enemies, and the people I recognize as enemies all die. Since we come from the same race, I'll say some awkward words especially to the ancient family alliance's people. I'll give you one last chance to retreat from this battlefield, and then you'll still have a chance to keep living. But if you choose to fight, don't blame me when I cut off your heads. Ha ha ha, how arrogant. Do you think we're children? You're the one who's going to die, yet you still dare to say such big words. How childish, sneered a person from the ancient family alliance. However, 
the Dragonblood Legion's people looked at them with pitiable expressions. This one sentence had sealed their fate. Boom. The void suddenly exploded, and a huge illusory image covered the sky. Chapter 1442 Black Soil Exterminates Tree Demons Translator Born to be it was an image of a huge tree whose branches were like dragons spreading high into the sky. When the surrounding experts looked up, stars seemed to hang amongst its branches. Those were its fruit. This huge tree was completely black, and tiny scales were covering its body. Its leaves were in the shape of sharp blades. Black chi exuded from it. When it first appeared, the dragonblood warriors almost thought it was the life god tree. The life god tree was the only other tree that they had ever seen that was this giant. Its huge branches completely covered the sky, and a berserk energy made their hearts shake. The fluctuations coming from this giant tree were horrifying. It was like it could annihilate everyone on this battlefield with just a thought. Most shocking of all was that this giant tree was nothing more than a projection. It wasn't its true body, and yet it still possessed such pressure. Life Master, I'll give you a chance. As long as you choose not to participate in this battle of the human race, my dark forest will not attack the forest of life. A black figure condensed in front of the tree. That figure seemed to be made out of mist and it was impossible to see its face. But the voice came from it. The sky once more shook, and a divine light began to force back the black tree. Another giant tree appeared in the sky, dispelling the darkness. Life energy began to flow through the air. The pressure on the dragonblood warriors vanished. The life god tree. The dragonblood warriors were delighted. As long as the life god tree could block that tree's pressure they could still fight to their fullest abilities. Although it was also just a projection, their power seemed to be equal. That gave the Dragonblood Warriors confidence. You. You recovered? Impossible. The Black Projection's voice was full of shock. A figure also slowly condensed in front of the Life God Tree. It was the Spirit Emperor. You don't need to try discussing any conditions. The Forest of Life will fight to the death alongside Long Chen. HMPH. So your life energy recovered. But if you think you can block my army, you're too arrogant. Since that's the case, today we'll annihilate your forest of life. Starting today, the dark forest alone will govern the spirit world. The black projection snorted. The giant tree exploded. And black rain fell amongst the sea of tree demons. The tree demons began to crazily grow. All their auras grew and became more berserk. Kill. Countless tree demons began to charge over at the Dragonblood Legion. Their bodies were so huge that humans looked like ants in front of them. The ancient race, corrupt path, and ancient family alliances experts stood in their original locations. They eagerly anticipated Long Chen and the others' upcoming miserable plight. Boss, now what? We're not woodcutters, cried out Guo Ran. He had never experienced a fight against tree demons so he didn't know how to fight them. These tree demons are nothing to me. Watch me exterminate them with a wave of my hand. Long Chen laughed and began to rise through the air. When Long Chen spread his arms, soil suddenly appeared all around him. Idiot. You want to use earth energy to handle tree demons? Is there anyone more stupid than you? Sneered Pen Wanshang. Sha Guangyan was also startled that Long Chen would be summoning earth to handle tree demons. Wasn't it simply obvious that Earth birthed wood? It was like he was trying to drown a fish with water. Endless wind waves. Tang Wanur, who had long since been prepared, directly summoned her nine flower manifestation. A hurricane was summoned, and waves of wind came from it, dispersing Long Chen's black soil toward the tree demon army. What this soil is toxic. My body, it's withering the sky full of black soil surged forward. The human experts didn't sense anything from it, but the tree demons let out horrified cries. When a single speck of the black soil touched their bodies, their life energy would rapidly vanish, and their bodies would wither. The first tree demon withered in an instant, collapsing to the ground. Then its withered body disintegrated until it was just a speck of dust. Retreat. The tree demons cried out panickedly and ran for their lives. But it was too late. Under Tang Wanner's powerful wind, the black soil covered the sky. The dark forest's tree demons were easily caught. This was the black soil from Long Chen's primal chaos space which devoured all life. It was toxic to vegetation. No matter how strong the tree demon was, 
they would completely wither in just a few breaths time. The tree demons fell one by one, turning into specks of dust. This scene stunned everyone. These tree demons were comparable to life star experts, but they were instantly killed. Life master, stop. We can still discuss this matter. The dark forest's expert suddenly roared. Sorry, my forest of life is listening to Long Chen's orders. Asking me is useless, said the spirit emperor. The spirit emperor was also shocked. She had never heard of such a powerful soil of death in this world. It caused her to also feel fear. No wonder Long Chen had been so confident before this battle. This black soil was absolutely dreadful. To the forest of life's creatures, this soil was even more deadly. Fortunately, it was flying toward the dark forest. If it flew backward instead, the forest of life would be doomed. Now she also knew why Long Chen hadn't let them approach the battlefield and were told to just hold their position. Fuck, what are you still standing around for? Kill that bastard, roared the dark forest's expert. Roaring rang out and the ground trembled as countless magical beasts charged over at Long Chen. These magical beasts were all huge and powerful, and the majority of them were 11th rank magical beasts. This mass of magical beasts was also terrifying. Long Chen waved his hand, and a mountain of the black soil appeared. Long Chen had no time to release it bit by bit for Tang Wan'er, so he just dropped a mountain of it off for Tang Wan'er to spread. They had to annihilate as many tree demons as they could right now to frighten them from ever coming back. Tang Wan'er summoned a huge sphere of wind blades. It smashed into the black mountain, and the black soil shot out. Because there were so many tree demons, and they covered such a huge area, it was impossible for them to fully retreat in time. Their giant bodies were easy targets. Even as they fled, Tang Wan'er sent her wind blades after them, using the black soil to touch their bodies. Just the slightest bit represented death for them. Magical beasts of the dark forest, hurry up and come. Your daddy Guo Ran's latest invention has long since gotten thirsty of blood. Guo Ran had already flown into the air. The huge cannon on his shoulder pointed at the army of magical beasts. Boom. A huge cannonball shot out. It was only a foot long when it came out, but it rapidly grew. When it landed amongst the magical beasts. It had already grown to 300 meters. It was a giant bomb. Guo Ran had placed spatial runes on it to shrink the cannonball. That way, he didn't need a giant cannon. Boom. It was like a beautiful firework had gone off in the army of magical beasts. Fiery red blades flew out in every direction. Those blades were inscribed with golden runes, and with the power of the explosion behind them, not even 11th rank magical beasts were able to block them. Even with their tough hide, the flying blades cut through their flesh. If they didn't strike bone, they would continue all the way through their bodies. There were too many blades, and the targets were too concentrated. Many magical beasts had their heads pierced and their crystal core shattered. They were slain just like that. Come. Come. Your daddy Guo is still hungry. Guo Ran's mighty attack shook everyone. Even Long Chen was experiencing the power of Guo Ran's latest invention for the first time. It seemed that this fellow was finally learning about how to be Loki, at least in order to show off with greater effect. This one attack was absolutely stunning. At the very least, even Long Chen was stunned by it. Most shocking of all, Guo Ran shot out six cannonballs in total, aiming them at the most concentrated locations of the magical beasts. They were slain in massive numbers. Boss Guo Ran is mighty, the dragon blood warriors cheered. This opening from Guo Ran was beautiful. Someone, go kill him, ordered Sha Guangyan with a dark expression. He turned to a rank 9 celestial beside him. The rank 9 celestial nodded and vanished. At this time, Guo Ran was freely shooting more bombs, relishing in the feeling of having all eyes on him. Long Chen's mouth curled into a smile upon seeing Guo Ran show off. Guo Ran's greatest goal in life was to show off in front of others. He was walking further and further along this unending path. When the rank 9 celestial vanished, Long Chen frowned and slowly raised a finger. But after a moment of hesitation, he lowered his hand again. A figure appeared behind Guo Ran like a ghost, slashing at Guo Ran's neck. Chapter 1443 Sharpness Blossoms Translator Born to be that figure appeared so suddenly that no one could react. His sword was already slashing at Guo Ran's neck. 
It was coming from a dead angle, and even if Guo Ran wasn't busy shooting out cannonballs with his large and clumsy cannon, he wouldn't be able to dodge. The Dragonblood warriors let out startled cries, but that person was so fast, there was nothing they could do. The sword landed right on Guo Ran's neck, but the devastating side of his head flying didn't appear. Instead, sparks flew, and people realized that Guo Ran's neck had suddenly become covered in golden armor. Guo Ran's neck was fine, while that person's sword bounced off. Idiot. Did you think you could sneak attack your daddy? It seems you've never died before Guo Ran laughed. Without even turning back, the cannon on his shoulder suddenly opened on the other side, and a golden flower blossomed. A red light shot out of the center of the flower at his sneak attacker. The sneak attacker hadn't summoned his manifestation in order to sneak up on Guo Ran. To be fair, no one had thought Guo Ran's cannon would be able to fire backward as well. A shameless design like this was probably something only Guo Ran could think of. The cannon's power was immense, but if a sudden sneak attack was launched from behind him, it would be hard for Guo Ran to face his attacker. So he had come up with this sinister trick. The sneak attacker's hair stood on end when that red light appeared. He hastily brandished his sword, about to summon his manifestation. However, just as he was about to summon his manifestation, his whole body trembled, and an expression of absolute terror appeared on his face. He stiffened. Boom. The red light pierced through his body, and he blew up like a watermelon, filling the air with his blood. He killed a rank 9 celestial in one blow. Impossible. The ancient races, corrupt path, and ancient family alliances experts were all stunned. That was a rank 9 celestial. He had been killed in one blow. Seeing Guo Ran actually kill a rank 9 celestial in one blow, Long Chen couldn't help but feel a bit angry inside. His power was clearly enough to suppress rank 9 celestials, but killing them was always extremely difficult. The slightest carelessness and they would get away. As for Guo Ran's little trick, he had been secretly helped by Meng Chi. That rank 9 celestial had been killed before understanding what was going on. It had been too simple. Ha ha ha. A pitiful rank 9 celestial dares to embarrass himself in front of me. Your daddy Guo Ran swept through this world. Looking down on heaven and earth, you little pieces of crap are only fit to crawl before me. Guo Ran laughed excitedly, feeling incredibly satisfied. Long Chen glanced at Meng Chi and saw her smiling. She didn't say anything, and no one else was capable of sensing what she had done. He knew that Meng Chi was an extremely powerful existence now. After he had given the three head nine eye illusion spirit beast skeleton to her. She had told him that she would give him a nice surprise. Now he saw Men Chi silently assist Guo Ran, without forming a hand seal or even moving, to kill a rank 9 celestial. It could be seen how terrifying Men Chi was now. The three head nine eye illusion spirit beast skeleton was clearly extremely beneficial to her. However, Guo Ran's follow up bragging was a bit embarrassing. His skin was too thick. Although it was true that he had killed a rank 9 celestial in one blow. If it hadn't been for Meng Qi's secret assistance, it was an unknown whether or not he could have even injured that dead celestial. Only Guo Ran, Meng Qi, and Long Chen knew about that. The others had no idea, and they all stared in shock at Guo Ran. Using my cannon to kill you weaklings would be bullying. Today, I'll let you see what a true unrivaled hero is. I won't even use my cannon, and I'll still kill you like slaughtering chickens. Cackled Guo Ran as he put away his cannon. Long Chen naturally knew that this was an act. Having used up his cannonballs, Guo Ran still didn't forget to brag, but the opposition was still stunned by him and was unable to determine if his words were true or not. Black specks of soil had covered this world. Under Tang Wan'er's efforts, it was unknown just how many tree demons had been slain, transforming into specks of dust. It was even more effective than I expected. Long Chen was delighted inside. The primal chaos space's black soil was too mysterious. This could count as divine power. It was impossible to calculate how many tree demons had fallen to the black soil just now. But he guessed that at least half of the tree demons were now specks of dust on the battlefield. Spirit Emperor, have your people fall back further so they don't touch the black soil. That thing doesn't differentiate between friend or foe. Long Chen transmitted his orders to the Spirit Emperor. 
he didn't need to actually speak to the spirit emperor. He could simply use the green leaf image on his hand to transmit his thoughts throughout the forest of life. From the start, he had chosen a spot very far from the forest of life to fight. But the black soil was even more terrifying than he had imagined. So to be safe, he had them retreat even further. At this moment, the sea of beasts crashed upon them. Guo Ran had killed many of them, but there were just too many of the beasts. The amount Guo Ran had killed was nothing compared to this army of magical beasts. Brothers, raise your weapons. Kill all the threats in front of you. Don't let them touch the forest of life. This is a battle to protect. And even if we have to die, we won't retreat half a step. Kill, shouted Long Chen, floating above the battlefield. Kill, kill, kill. The dragon blood warriors roared their voices growing louder wave by wave until they drowned out the magical beasts. Over 13,000 warriors took out their weapons and summoned their heavenly Tao manifestations. They charged at the army of magical beasts. Boom. Guo Ran was the first to fly toward them. He charged at a golden bull as large as a mountain and covered in scales. It was exceptionally fierce, but Guo Ran simply pointed a finger, and a golden light flew out. A hole appeared in the golden bull's head and it tumbled back into the distance before lying motionless, dead. Brothers, kill with me, Dragonblood Legion, use the blood of these brutes to testify to our undefeatable oath. Standing atop the golden bull's corpse, Guo Ran raised his hand and roared. In all honesty, he truly did have the air of an undefeatable leader at this time. Kill, the Dragonblood warriors charged, filling the air with the blood of magical beasts. The scent of blood reeked strongly but it stimulated the Dragonblood Warriors' killing intent. Rays of light flashed. The Dragonblood Warriors emitted cold rays of sword chi that cut through the tough hides of the magical beasts. Even the 11th rank magical beasts were no exception. Runes flowed around the Dragonblood Warriors' swords. Their sword chi was thin and long, cutting through the bodies of the magical beasts like cutting through tofu. Their bodies were easily cut into pieces. How can they have such terrifying weapons? Seeing this, the ancient race, corrupt path, and ancient family alliances experts were stunned. That power has surpassed the limit of king items. Although their auras aren't on the level of ancestral items, their killing power is almost on that level. Most importantly, their swords are practically identical. Could it be they made them themselves? Startled cries rang out as they watched the Dragonblood warriors charge through the sea of magical beasts. The experts with the most experience could easily see the details of the Dragonblood Warriors' weapons. Although they didn't have the might of ancestral items, their material was definitely on that level. The runes carved into them were extremely profound and allowed them to unleash sword chi of an exceptionally sharp nature. Even 11th rank magical beasts found their defenses turned to mud in front of their attacks. Should we attack? We can kill them and take their weapons, proposed someone greedily. Over 13,000 warriors with such divine weapons. That was naturally enticing. Those weapons were all forged by Guo Ran. They were his blood, sweat, and tears. The runes carved on them came from the ethereal crafting secret record. He had added a rune he had recently comprehended which imbued them with a sharp nature. The material was of the ancestral item level. While the runes were amazing as well. The only reason they didn't possess the might of ancestral items was because they didn't have item spirits. So, although they couldn't count as ancestral items, they made these people greedy. There's no need. The tree demons are restricted by that strange soil and can't participate in the battle. But don't look down on the dark forest. The magical beasts alone are enough to wipe them out. The magical beasts we see here are nothing more than a small portion of all the magical beasts in the dark forest. It's just that the Dark Forest didn't expect to encounter the Black Soil. Now that the Tree Demons have retreated, they'll be sending out more and more magical beasts. That's enough to crush them. There's no need for us to participate. When they're exhausted, we'll give them the fatal blow. Sha Guangyan had a cold smile as he watched the Dragonblood Warriors fight. When they looked at Long Chen floating in the air, Sha Guangyan and Pen Wancheng both had sinister smiles on their faces. Chapter 1444 Expediting the Growth of the World Trees Translator Born to be the Dragonblood Warriors Swords Danced 
Over 13,000 of them had formed a giant human wall that blocked the charge of the magical beasts. Guo Ran was at the very front, wearing his golden armor that shone brightly and drew everyone's attention. He was a metal machine, wielding a special saber in his hand that killed a magical beast with each attack. Even 11th rank magical beasts weren't able to endure his power. Guo Ran wasn't strong himself, but through his armor, his power multiplied hundreds of times. Even Long Chen had become envious of that. He had asked about making such armor for himself, but the control mechanism for Guo Ran's armor was too complicated. As soon as he saw the principles involved he gave up on that idea. It wasn't just Long Chen. In the Dragon Blood Legion, there were quite a few people who asked for some simple mechanisms from Guo Ran, but they all abandoned the idea in the end. Even just a mechanism to increase the power of their arms was difficult to control. On a battlefield, there was no way for them to fight freely with such a thing. If one arm was too difficult to control, then there was even less to say about a full set of armor. That would be even more difficult than ascending the heavens. Guo Ran hadn't wanted to keep his armor to himself. In fact, he hoped to create similar armor for the entire Dragonblood Legion. Then they could dominate these lands. Unfortunately, not everyone had his kind of unique talent. They were unable to manipulate the subtle mechanisms effortlessly like he was. This dream was shattered. With a slash of Guo Ran's saber, a black striped tiger was cut in two, and a long scar was cut in the ground. Guo Ran raised his head and roared, except it sounded a bit more like a wolf howl. Come, your daddy Guo Ran's blade is still thirsty. His voice was amplified by his armor and contained a metallic ringing to it. It was exceptionally bold, and adding on his terrifying combat power, it caused his enemies' hearts to shake. The current Guo Ran looked like a merciless slaughter machine. He was constantly reaping the lives of these magical beasts. A giant snake opened its mouth, and shot a violet ray at Guo Ran. A huge explosion rocked the world when it struck Guo Ran. But when the dust settled, Guo Ran was fine. He simply slashed his blade once more, killing another 11th rank magical beast. Who is that? How is he so terrifying cried out someone from the ancient races. They were aware that Long Chen's combat power was terrifying, but they hadn't heard of other figures on this level as well. In front of Guo Ran, those powerful magical beasts were all cut down, their blood dyeing the ground scarlet. HMPH. He just relies on his armor. Without his armor. He'd be a snail without a shell, and anyone could easily crush him, said someone irritably. Each time Guo Ran attacked, the runes on his armor would light up. Based on that, it wasn't difficult to determine that Guo Ran's power depended on his armor. But more shocking was that it wasn't just Guo Ran. Gu Yang, Li Qi, and Song Mingyuan were also incredibly powerful. The magical beasts were also killed in one blow by them. They're just relying on the sharpness of their weapons. They can't last long like this. They'll still definitely die, sneered someone. They were standing in the distant sky and could see the entire battlefield clearly. In truth, the dark forest had only brought out half their tree demons and less than a tenth of their magical beasts. The dark forest didn't even view the forest of life as an opponent. They were just prey and a bargaining chip for their cooperation with the martial heaven continent. Their only goal had been to force the Forest of Life to hand over Long Chen. They didn't want to destroy the Forest of Life. If that happened, their bargaining chip would vanish. They wouldn't do something so stupid as to kill the goose that laid the golden eggs. So their main goal had just been intimidation this time. And to intimidate them, they didn't even need to bring out all their troops. However, they hadn't expected their powerful tree demons to run into their bane. Over half the army they had brought had been killed. They could only send out their magical beast army, to prove their worth to the powers of the martial heaven continent that they were trying to work with. The dark forest would definitely send their other magical beasts over. It was because Sha Guangyan and Peng Wancheng had long since seen through that that they were just watching for now. Long Chen, this isn't favorable to us. Peng Wancheng and Sha Guangyan are our greatest threats said Chu Yao who stood beside Long Chen. Clearly, Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan were ordering their side to just watch and wait for when the Dragonblood Legion was exhausted to launch a fatal blow. Having such a threat just standing by was worrisome. I know, but it's fine. 
All schemes are useless in front of absolute power. Long Chen smiled calmly and slowly raised his hand. Runes began to fall from his hand, transforming into runic chains that fell to the battlefield. All the experts watching had their hearts shake when they saw Long Chen make a move. They all looked toward him. They're done for already? How boring, sneered Pen Wanshang. For Long Chen to make a move meant the Dragonblood Legion had to already be having trouble. But right now, it was still just the start. As the leader of the Dragonblood Legion, he was supposed to let his troops to have to join the fight so early. It only proved their defeat was set in stone. Originally, Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan had been expecting Long Chen to only take action when the Dragonblood Legion was getting tired. That would be their best time to attack as well. They would then teach him what despair was. What is he doing? Suddenly, people realized that Long Chen wasn't taking action against the magical beasts. Instead, his runic chains fell toward the magical beast corpses on the ground. Wherever the runic chains went, those huge corpses vanished. Clearly, they were taken away by Long Chen. What an idiot. Even with death at hand, he's greedy for their crystal cores, sneered Pen Wansheng. Hundreds of runic chains flew from Long Chen's body, spreading out and gathering the corpses throughout the battlefield. Long Chen, you, probed Tang Wan'er. Why would he be cleaning up the battlefield at this time? You shouldn't waste a single piece of grain. In a bit, things will become too chaotic to take them. Long Chen smiled and didn't explain much. Right now, he urgently needed the flesh of magical beasts. If he didn't quickly gather the corpses, then the battle would cause their bodies to explode and become more difficult to gather. So this was actually the best time. His runic chains were like his own hands. Whatever he touched could be drawn into the primal chaos space. Those corpses were all tossed into the black soil in the primal chaos space. This was his first time since advancing to the Jade Core Realm to go all out absorbing magical beast corpses. The black soil was like a sea and the magical beast corpses slowly sank within it. Life energy began to fill the primal chaos space. The world trees were growing extremely slowly. Even now, they were only 30 meters tall. They were still in the form of soft shoots. They couldn't even count as saplings. However, as piles of magical beast corpses landed on the black soil, life energy spread throughout the primal chaos space, and the world trees finally began to grow at a visible rate. They quickly reached a height of 300 meters. For normal large trees, this was already a fully grown state. Yet, the world trees were still in the form of soft shoots. Their bodies were still not fully opaque. However, now a third leaf finally sprouted. Long Chen couldn't help being shocked. These world trees were truly shocking. They required a huge amount of life energy to grow. Finally, when they reached a height of 1000 meters, the first branches began to grow out of them, and they took on the form of saplings. That delighted Long Chen. He was waiting just for this moment. He began carefully snapping off those branches and planting them as well. The primal chaos space didn't disappoint him. Those branches also began to take root and grow as the life energy nourished them. Yes, primal chaos bead. You are really amazing. Long Chen gathered corpses as he planted more branches. This time. He left many miles between each world tree. By the time the world trees were fully grown, they would be hundreds of miles tall, and being too concentrated would affect their growth. Long Chen was hard at work. The first batch of the world trees was already at 1500 meters, and more and more branches were growing. He was crazily transplanting them. Fortunately, everything in the primal chaos space was controlled by his spiritual strength. His spiritual strength was spread throughout it and he was constantly snapping off branches to plant them. In just a short couple hours, the primal chaos space was filled with the world trees. However, these world trees were all in different stages of growth. There were clear differences between the first ones and the later ones. Furthermore, as he planted more, their growth slowed down as well. The first batch of world trees that had reached 1800 meters were no longer growing at a visible rate. However, the shocking thing was that just that batch of world trees had as much life energy as thousands of fully matured iron spruce oaks. It had to be known that these world trees were still in a very young state. They were only slightly larger saplings, but they possessed this much life energy. 
This was a nice surprise for Long Chen. Just as he was relishing in this happiness, rumbling rang out. A black mass of figures filled the distant sky. Chapter 1445 Trying to Take Advantage? Translator. Born to be the sky in the distance turned black as giant flying figures began rushing over. Those are spotted ghost mosquitoes. He. Now the dragon blood legions doomed. Laughed a corrupt expert. The black wave in the sky was a mass of black mosquitoes with white spots. Their individual bodies were 30 meters long. There was no way to estimate their numbers as they filled the entire sky. The spotted ghost mosquitoes were an extremely fierce kind of magical beasts. Their mouth perts were exceptionally sharp and could easily pierce the defenses of other magical beasts. Even armored magical beasts were no exception. Worst of all was the poison on their mouth perts. If struck, a person would be instantly paralyzed. Then the spotted ghost mosquitoes would suck out every last drop of their blood. In the dark forest, they were masters of their own region. They had been developing for many years, and their numbers were horrific. Other magical beasts didn't dare to provoke them. A buzzing filled the air as they flew toward the dragon blood legion. But as they pounced, wooden arrows glowing with emerald light shot through their midst. The spirit race warriors were finally attacking. These were Long Chen's orders. Down below. The dragon blood warriors were already having trouble facing the magical beasts. After all, their bodies were too huge, and the dragon blood warriors were forced to run back and forth to protect their defensive line. That was why they needed the spirit race warriors to protect the air above them. After all, they were long range attackers. Millions of spirit race warriors were launching wooden arrows. The rain of arrows caused the spotted ghost mosquitoes to fall from the sky. Although they had terrifying offensive power, and their numbers were also horrifying, their fatal weakness was their low defensive strength. The spirit race warriors could bring down a dozen of them with one arrow they were quickly shot down. Although they were magical beasts, they were still of insect types, and they didn't have crystal cores. One of them fell right beside Guo Ran. Its long mouthpiece easily stabbed through a tough stone like it was tofu. Damn, it's this powerful. Guo Ran smacked his lips. Their mouthpieces were even sharper than the average king item. Meng Chi, you should take the mouthparts and brand them with your spiritual C. These are powerful killing tools. Long Chen secretly transmitted to Meng Chi. Meng Chi nodded. Her spiritual strength spread stealthily into the ground, and their mouthpieces were silently brought into her spiritual space. Each mouthpart was several meters long, incredibly sharp and contained powerful poison. Just as Long Chen said, they were powerful killing tools. Best of all, the battlefield was completely chaotic. All Men Chi had to do was silently spread her spiritual strength, and no one would sense it. The spirit race warriors were continuously shooting. Their movements were very practiced and beautiful, and they could shoot out several arrows in the blink of an eye. Each time they shot an arrow, a small mark would light up on their foreheads. Their wooden arrows were filled with a strange energy. Even though they were wooden arrows, they were even stronger than steel arrows. That should be a kind of faith energy. They give their everything to the life god tree, and the life god tree gives its own energy to them. Long Chen felt a bit envious as he watched them. A healthy faith could give a person great power. They would be able to fight fearlessly and without worry of a heart devil. The spirit race warriors were the most beautiful life forms. They were kind pure, and refined. The dragon blood warriors hadn't been with them for long, but they had already fallen in love with the forest of life and all its life forms. Even without Long Chen's orders, they would be willing to protect them. Even if they had to sacrifice their lives, they wouldn't hesitate. In truth, the forest of life's creatures had also become a kind of conviction for the dragon blood warriors. Protecting the forest of life was protecting the pure and kind side of their hearts. If the forest of life was really exterminated in front of them, if the beautiful spirit race warriors were mercilessly slaughtered, they would go crazy. That was something they refused to see happen. Now the dragon blood warriors were working together with the spirit race warriors. The spirit race warriors were in charge of the air, while the dragon blood warriors were in charge of the ground, both in charge of their individual areas. They managed to hold back the dark forest's army of magical beasts. How are they so strong? Raged an ancient race expert. Six hours had passed. 
and the Dragonblood warriors didn't show any sign of fatigue. Instead, their auras were still blazing with power as they fought. The battlefield was still the same. The mountain of corpses that should have piled up had been cleanly taken away by Long Chen. The only change was that now the ground was running with rivers of blood. What is Long Chen doing? Why is he cleaning up the battlefield? None of the experts on the other side could understand what he was thinking. Long Chen was just floating at the center of the battlefield. He didn't go kill magical beasts, nor did he direct his people's attacks. Instead, he just silently cleaned up the battlefield. Although the corpses of 11th rank magical beasts were valuable, especially their crystal cores, who would actually have the heart to gather those things with death at hand? No matter how precious something was, didn't he think his life was more precious? They had no idea that Long Chen was silently rejoicing. More and more magical beast corpses were being tossed into the primal chaos space as black soil. The black soil was like a bottomless mouth, constantly devouring the corpses to unleash endless life energy for the world trees. After this many hours, even the final batch of world trees had reached a height of 600 meters. The barren primal chaos space was finally filled with greenery. It was thriving with vitality. But as the sprouts grew, their growth slowed down. They needed more and more life energy to grow. Now there were hundreds of thousands of world trees absorbing energy at the same time. Their growth looked very slow. Yet, the slower they grew, the happier Long Chen was. That signified that the world tree's life energy was even greater. Once they were all fully grown. He would possess an undying body. More and more spotted ghost mosquitoes arrived. But the spirit race warriors were still strong enough to handle them. Their arrows never stopped. Even after this long, their tempo didn't fall. The spotted ghost mosquitoes were constantly slain. And Meng Chi silently gathered their mouth parts while Long Chen gathered the corpses of all the magical beasts. Thanks to the two of them, the battlefield was very clear. Watch out below. Long Chen suddenly shouted. Just after he shouted, the ground below the battlefield exploded, and a large mouth devoured over ten of the Dragonblood warriors. The mouth belonged to a black centipede. Its body was glossy, giving off a metallic luster. Its head was as large as a mountain. Boom. The black centipede's head suddenly exploded as over ten rays of sword chi shot into the air. It was killed. The ground began to erupt in more and more places as giant centipedes launched a sudden attack. This time, they didn't devour anyone. Instead, they spat out a black mist, which was pitch black and spread rapidly. The mist is poisonous cried out the dragonblood warriors. They immediately held their breath and fell back. However, some of the black mist still reached them. As soon as it touched their skin, they felt like they were being hit by a branding iron. Their skin instantly corroded. Haha, <laughs> now the Dragonblood Legion is doomed. The distant experts all smiled delightedly. Some people were already stealthily approaching the battlefield, ready to snatch the Dragonblood Warriors' weapons. These people had been waiting to get the weapons for a long time now. The huge centipedes were an ancient species. They were called Golden Tail Underground Centipedes. Although their bodies were huge. They had a strange ability that allowed them to move underground like fish in water. Their auras would be concealed to make them ideal for sneak attacks. These golden tail underground centipedes had 11 stripes on their heads. That was a specific mark, with each stripe representing a rank. In other words, these were all 11th rank magical beasts. Their poison mist could kill life star experts. That was why these experts immediately felt that the Dragonblood Legion was doomed and that this was the best moment to take advantage of them. Everyone retreat, Long Chen cried out. Although the Golden Tail Underground Centipede's arrival was a bit sudden, he wasn't panicked. Even if there was poison, it wouldn't be a problem. That was because each of them had the blessing of the spirit trees. As soon as the poison reached them, a green leaf image would appear on their foreheads. Life energy would fill them, expelling the poison. Although there was no danger to their lives. There was still a time lag between being poisoned and expelling the poison. That would gravely affect their combat strength. After sending out the order to retreat, Tang Wan'er didn't need a reminder from Long Chen. She formed hand seals, 
summoning a wild tempest that blew the poison mist toward the experts that had just crept closer to the battlefield to take advantage. Chapter 1446 Using the Attacker's Spear as Your Shield Translator Born to be a wild wind wrapped around the black mist, turning it into a black mist cyclone that shot toward the distant experts. A.H.H. Tang Wanner's winds were quick, and they reached the enemies in an instant, not giving them any time to react. Quite a few people were devoured by the black mist. The black mist was sticky, and a person's body would dissolve on contact. The weaker ones were instantly turned into white skeletons, before their bones also turned black. In just a breath's time, they were completely dissolved. Even soul transformation experts couldn't escape with their Yuan spirits. Only rank 7 celestials and above were barely able to endure the poison by summoning their heavenly Tao manifestations, but they still withered, and their skin dissolved away, exposing their flesh and blood. As for those below rank 7 celestials, even soul transformation experts were unable to endure. They were all killed by the black mist. The rank 7 celestials and above who managed to survive thanks to their heavenly Tao manifestations immediately fled for their lives. They hadn't expected Long Chen to dare to attack them. Tens of thousands of experts flew into a panic. The majority of the experts that had crept forward died in the mist. Bastards of the Zhuanshan Dao sect. Just wait. If we don't kill you all today, I'll swear I'm not human, roared an ancient family expert. His face no longer had a shred of skin on it. It was a mass of flesh and blood. He was a powerful rank 8 celestial but he had still been turned into his current state. His heavenly Tao energy was in the midst of expelling the poison from his body. However, the poison was very difficult to deal with. It felt like it had taken root in his body and was trying to tear him apart inch by inch. Even his soul was in immense pain. This was definitely a kind of torture. Idiot. If you have any gods, then just come. Does shouting over there have any meaning? Scoffed Long Chen. Since they were standing on the battlefield, they were already enemies. Shouting obscenities at the other side was meaningless. Tang Wanner's wind continued to blow through the enemies. They had to hastily retreat and flee like bunnies. Eventually, they went too far, and her wind energy weakened, allowing them to escape. Ignore them. Send the mist to attack the magical beasts, said Long Chen to Tang Wanner. Long Chen was smiling brightly inside. The Dark Forest truly did have wooden brains. They didn't even know how to properly plan out battles or what the proper order should be. As Tang Wanner's wind returned, the black mist began blowing through the magical beasts. The magical beasts also let out mournful wails as smoke began coming from their bodies. Only a few armored magical beasts were able to resist the mist and continue attacking the Dragonblood Legion. Li Qi, Song Mingguan, Trap the Centipedes. But don't attack them. Spirit race warriors. Shoot the furred magical beasts. Shouted Long Chen. Thanks to the poison mist. The spotted ghost mosquitoes were falling from the sky. They were the first to die from the poison. The dark forest is so stupid. Aren't they just helping Long Chen now? Cursed Peng Wansheng. There's no way around it. Those idiots all have wooden brains. And they don't know how to think. Furthermore. They're so stubborn that they won't listen to anyone else. It doesn't matter. Even if they die, they aren't really our people, said Sha Guangyan indifferently. He had long since heard of the dark forest's stupidity, but today, he supposed he was experiencing what peak stupidity was. In the end, the black mist annihilated the spotted ghost mosquitoes. Only a small portion of them actually died to the spirit race warriors. The rest all died to the poison as the poison mist was their bane. The furred magical beasts were also weak to the mist. Thanks to the poison's corrosion, their defenses sharply dropped. For the spirit race warriors, shooting through their tough hides was very difficult. But that tough defense had become as weak as paper now, and their arrows rained down on them. Their arrows were very accurate, and each one aimed for vitals. The magical beasts collapsed one by one. As for the golden tail underground centipedes, they were constantly popping out from the ground, attacking the Dragonblood Warriors. The Dragonblood Warriors retreated repeatedly. Li Qi and Song Mingguan both summoned their heavenly Tao manifestations, and nine flowers revolved around each of them. They slammed their hands on the ground. Great earthen wall. A huge wall rose from the earth. It was many miles thick and tall, 
and it spread through the battlefield. Countless runes floated across the wall. Thanks to the runes, the earthen wall actually gave off a metallic luster. A heavy aura came from it that made it seem like an invincible city wall. Long Chen smiled. After becoming rank 9 celestials, Li Qi and Song Mingyuan's earth energy had grown even purer. This wall's defensive power was startling. Countless golden tail underground centipedes came crashing out of the ground. This wall didn't just seal the sky, it also sealed the ground beneath it. They were unable to pass. More and more of the centipedes were popping out, crazily attacking the wall. However, this wall was the result of both Li Qi and Song Mingyuan pouring in all their strength. It was incomparably tough. No matter how the countless golden tail underground centipedes attacked, they were unable to break through it. At most, they would cause a few cracks, but those would quickly recover. They tried to climb the walls, but as a result, the wall's runes shook them off. No matter what they tried, they were unable to get by. They were so infuriated that they began to spit out more black mist. They're so useless. The dark forest is filled with idiots. Cursed an ancient race expert. Unable to get past the earthen wall, the golden tail underground centipedes began crazily spitting out poison mist. Tang Wan'er was sending the mist to the attacking magical beasts. As a result, those magical beasts had their defenses sharply drop and were easily picked off by the spirit race warrior's arrows. As for the defensively powerful armored magical beasts, Guo Ran would target them with a giant crossbow. Although the armored magical beasts didn't fear the poison, Guo Ran's explosive arrows were much more terrifying. He aimed for their weakest spots, and once his arrows pierced their bodies, they would explode. Guo Ran only targeted the armored magical beasts. He didn't want to waste his exploding arrows on the other magical beasts. He left them to the spirit race warriors. As a result, the battlefield became very strange. The dragonblood warriors were standing atop the giant wall, looking at the centipedes attacking. Tang Wan'er was constantly sending out the centipedes mist at the other magical beasts. Guo Ran killed armored magical beasts, while the spirit race warriors killed the furred magical beasts. Long Chen continued to gather corpses, while the Dragonblood Warrior's injuries had long since vanished. The Dragonblood Warriors didn't go kill the Golden Tail Underground Centipedes. Occasionally, they would launch an attack to provoke them a bit and make them spit out more poison. Fuck. Are you serious? I can't watch this. The Ancient Race, Corrupt Path, and Ancient Family Experts were all enraged. They couldn't tell what the Dark Forest was thinking. Were they trying to help the Dragonblood Legion? The most difficult thing to bear was that despite the poison clearly being at the front, the other magical beasts all continued foolishly charging head on into it. That was no different than sending themselves to their deaths. Are these magical beasts also idiots? Have their heads turned to wood as well? Cursed someone. The Dark Forest's magical beasts are all controlled by the Dark Forest. Their souls are completely controlled and they were originally dumb anyways. Now they basically don't have any ability to think on their own, said one of the Life Star experts from the Corrupt Path. He clearly knew a bit more than the others. But then, this is too painful to watch, said another expert. It wasn't as if Long Chen's tactics had been very skilled, but those magical beasts were still just foolishly falling for everything. Seeing the powerful magical beasts being slaughtered so easily enraged these experts. The Dark Forest's tree demons had all retreated, and there was no way for them to communicate with them. These magical beasts were all dying for nothing. Long Chen felt like flowers were blooming in his heart. The magical beast corpses were all being tossed into the primal chaos space, and endless life energy was nourishing his world trees. It had to be known that these magical beasts were the elites of the Dark Forest. They were all 10th and 11th rank magical beasts. They possessed extremely strong life energy. Now the world trees were slowly growing, and even the final batch of them had reached 1500 meters. They had almost caught up to the first batch. It seemed the primal chaos space was spreading its life energy evenly throughout the world trees. In the future, the difference between them would grow less and less. In the end, they would reach the same height. You want to run? That's no good. Li Qi, Song Mingyuan, slaughter them. Long Chen suddenly snorted. He also saw intense fluctuations coming from the distance. 
Shocking auras were rapidly approaching. Chapter 1447 Ardent Meteor Shower of Flames Translator Born to be the Golden Tail Underground Centipedes had spat out as much poison mist as they could. Now it seemed that they had received orders, and they suddenly dived back into the ground to flee. Long Chen naturally wouldn't let such outstanding helpers leave like that. He immediately gave the order to Li Qi and Song Mingyuan. Huge hands began to appear in the ground, grabbing the centipedes. A single pinch of two fingers on the golden tail underground centipedes heads and they would die. That was because that was where their poison sack was. Although it was their fatal weak point and had no armor to cover it, enemies didn't dare to actually attack them there. Once the poison sack ruptured, the poison would instantly explode and kill the attacker as well. So while this was their weakest point, it could also be likened to their strongest point. As long as their poison sack was full, even an 11th rank magical beast would be killed in an instant considering that density. So only enemies prepared to die along with it would attack that place. However, today was different. They had run into their bane. Long Chen was using them to kill other magical beasts. They were all killed. Their poison parts were removed. And then their corpses were tossed into the primal chaos space as fertilizer. Just at this moment, rumbling sounds rang out from the distance. And a sea of giant figures were rushing over. It was a veritable sea of beasts. But this time, the scale was ten times greater than at the start. Within this wave of magical beasts were flying leopards, white tigers, flame wolves, and scaled eagles. All kinds of magical beasts were attacking. Furthermore, the magical beasts flying at the front were all 11th rank magical beasts with powerful auras. He, the dark forest is finally bringing out their full power. Now the dragon blood legion is doomed, snickered a corrupt expert. This beast sea is practically endless. Exterminating the dragon blood legion would be simple. Hopefully, they won't be so stupid as to be used by Long Chen again, said someone worriedly. What had happened with the golden tail underground centipedes had been too irritating. Long Chen's expression also became serious now as the true battle was about to start. Even the wood-brained leaders of the dark forest wouldn't send magical beasts like the golden tail underground centipedes again. There would probably be no chance to use any tactics, and they would only be able to fight head on. The mist slowly scattered. The battlefield was running with the blood of magical beasts. There were even large lakes of blood on the ground. The first wave of magical beasts had all been killed. Now, the dragon blood warriors stood behind Long Chen, staring at the endless wave of magical beasts. They tightly clenched their weapons. Behind the dragon blood warriors were millions of spirit race warriors. Their expressions were now slightly nervous. This battle related to the survival of the forest of life. If they won, the forest of life would have some breathing room. If they lost, the spirit world would no longer have a forest of life. Although they were nervous, they were fearless. That was because their spirit emperor had told them that the man standing at the front was the savior of the forest of life. This wasn't said directly by the spirit emperor, but by the life god tree. Even after experiencing countless battles, seeing this endless horde of magical beasts still made Long Chen's heart pound. To say that he didn't feel the slightest bit nervous would be a lie. This was a true battle, not a game. Losing meant people would die, and death would give the survivors an unbearable eternal pain. No one wanted that. Long Chen took a deep breath. He announced, Brothers. You fought with me against enemies from all sides. Our path was formed by the skeletons of our enemies, and the rivers we crossed were formed with their blood. We were able to defeat powerful enemies time and time again, but that wasn't because we were so strong, or because we were so brave. It was because we knew we had no path of retreat. It was because we knew we couldn't lose. It was because we knew winning was our only option. Look around you. Look behind you. They are what you have to protect. This is our conviction, to protect what we want to protect. We would rather die than let it fall. But if we fall, we will leave our pain to others. So we can't be defeated, and we can't die. Brothers, raise your weapons. Let us fight together again and sweep away the enemies in front of us. Let us use their corpses as our stepping stones to the peak of cultivation. Let us use their blood to paint the picture of our lives. Brothers, fight. Reap their lives to protect what is inside your hearts. Long Chen's voice was subdued at first, 
but it grew louder and louder, until it resounded through the air. His voice contained his arrogant will to sweep through everything before him. His voice and his will were above the heavenly deos. Kill. 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 The dragon blood warriors clenched their fists. Each of Long Chen's words smashed into their hearts like a hammer. They looked at their brothers and sisters around them and also looked at the pure spirit race warriors behind them. Long Chen's voice pounded in their ears. Their overflowing battle intent was ignited. It felt like they might combust at any moment. HMPH. What idiots. Does he think randomly saying a few lines will create a miracle? How laughable. Seeing their surging morale. One of the ancient family experts sneered. The others also looked at the Dragonblood Legion disdainfully. In their opinion, Long Chen's actions were to cover up the terror in his heart. He needed words to make himself feel brave. Die. That person had only just spoken when Meng Chi suddenly opened her mouth. That ancient family expert suddenly summoned his manifestation, his aura surging violently. Bang. That rank 7 celestial actually self-destructed from just one word from Meng Chi. His self-destruction killed two others beside him and injured over ten of the people around him. Blood filled the air. That woman knows demonic arts. Cried someone. To cause a person to self-destruct from just one word had to be a demonic art. It was absolutely bizarre. Everyone be careful. That woman has powerful spiritual fluctuations. She's a terrifying soul cultivator. Warn someone. That person was also a soul cultivator. But he was absolutely terrified. He was at the peak of soul transformation. But not even he could use his spiritual strength to control someone from thousands of miles away. Injuring them would be difficult. Let alone causing them to self-destruct. At this time. The Sea of Beasts finally arrived. Their roaring was like thunder, but they were drowned out by the killing cries of the Dragonblood Legion. Ardent meteor shower of flames. Long Chen formed hand seals, and flames began to surge behind him. Arrows of fire flew through the sky. Flame energy circulated through the sky. Golden arrows rapidly grew to become meteors shooting down to the earth. This was a secret art that came from Pill Valley. It involved using the flame energy in his body to link up to the fire elemental energy in the sky, forming huge balls of fire. Each ball was 3,000 meters wide and smashed down like falling stars, exploding amongst the magical beasts. Each of them was like a firework exploding when they landed. Golden flames covered the battlefield. The rain of meteors didn't stop. It was like the heavens were collapsing, and terrifying flames completely enveloped the battlefield. The magical beasts that were struck were instantly smashed to pieces, and those that weren't smashed to death were burned to death. Only a few powerful 11th rank magical beasts were able to charge through the flames to attack. However, their bodies were still burning, and the furred ones had their defensive power sharply drop. Although Long Chen had unleashed a huge area attack, there were still too many magical beasts. Some of them were already skating around the zone of the flames to attack from the sides. Life God, bless us with your divine power to repel our enemies. Just at this moment, devout chanting filled the air. More and more spirit race warriors appeared, and countless spirit beasts also arrived. The forest of life's full power was finally appearing. These spirit race warriors unleashed a rain of arrows at the magical beasts. These arrows easily pierced through the bodies of 11th rank magical beasts and killed them. These were spirit generals and although their cultivation base was equivalent to the soul transformation realm, there was now divine light shining from above their heads. That was the life god's blessing. Their arrows now had a terrifying penetrative power. Not even an 11th rank magical beast would be able to endure being struck where their crystal core was. The dark forest's magical beasts were falling in droves from the spirit race warrior's arrows. As for the spirit beasts, they protected the spirit race warriors preventing the magical beasts from reaching them. The curtains to an immense battle had finally been drawn. With each passing second, lives were mercilessly harvested. We're done watching as well. Prepare to annihilate the Dragonblood Legion in one move, said Sha Guangyan suddenly, killing intent blazing in his eyes. Chapter 1448 An Insignificant Trick Translator Born to be magical beasts were roaring ferociously, filling the sky and the ground. All kinds of magical beasts as large as mountains with shocking auras were attacking. Long Chen's sea of flames roasted them, 
but these magical beasts seemed insane. They charged straight through to attack the Dragonblood Legion. Kill. Guo Ran attacked the first one and sliced a magical beast, whose whole body had been chaired black, in half. It was the opener to a great battle. Wanner, help me look after the battlefield, said Long Chen. All right. Tang Wanner nodded and summoned her manifestation. Wind blades filled the air around her, and more and more of them appeared. Some of them were already slicing their way toward the magical beasts. Normally, Tang Wanner's individual wind blades would have great difficulty piercing the defenses of an 11th rank magical beast. After all, she summoned millions of wind blades at once, so their individual power was limited. However, after becoming a rank 9 celestial, her control over heavenly Tao energy had reached an unprecedented height, and the power of her wind blades also grew. After passing through the sea of flames, the magical beasts were badly burned, and many of them were still burning as they passed through. With their defensive power lowered, her individual wind blades could easily pierce their bodies. So Tang Wanner was the one best suited for overlooking the entire battlefield. Long Chen, I should attack too. Men Chi transmitted to Long Chen upon seeing everyone else join the battle. No, you have another mission. Since Ji Yui Yan's current position, transmitted back Long Chen. Oh, Ji Yui Yan's gone. Wait, that direction he's trying to loop around the battlefield. What's he doing? Men Chi was startled by what she sensed. It's not that surprising. Have Cloud go out to keep a watch on Ji Yui Yan. My guess is he wants to loop around to attack the spirit race warriors from behind. Since Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan are still standing at the front to draw out attention, they probably want to launch a simultaneous attack from both our front and back, said Long Chen. Men Chi nodded. A small, rainbow-colored bird appeared on her shoulder. It was Cloud. After comprehending its ancestral secret arts from the myriad spirit diagram, Cloud had not only learned several domineering techniques, but it had also learned how to control its size and conceal its aura. With its speed and men key senses, keeping watch over one person was practically like playing a game. Cloud quickly flapped its wings and vanished into the distance. Chu Yao, I need you to just make a token effort for now. Your mission will come a bit later. Long Chen smiled wickedly. Fuck those two. They actually sent me to sneak attack from the back. Fuck. Ji Yui Yan was stealthily leading 3,000 experts in a large loop around the battlefield. He cursed inside. He was completely enraged. Sha Guangyan and Pen Wancheng had ordered him around like a dog. However, there was no way around it. Their reasoning was simple. The corrupt path didn't have an expert on their level. So they had to listen to the two of them. The corrupt path's top expert, Len Yuian, hadn't revealed herself from the start. Some people even suspected that she had already left the spirit world. Their three large powers were currently working together with the Dark Forest. Although the corrupt path had sent the most people, numbering in the hundreds of thousands, the majority of them were just extras who had come to dredge up some benefits. Their actual combat power was limited. So the ancient races and ancient family alliances experts all mocked them for being a group of poor ghosts come to beg for food noveloon.com during this time. Gui Yan and the other corrupt experts had been forced to endure the mocking of the ancient races and ancient family alliance. The ancient family alliance had been the worst of the two, as they were originally enemies with the corrupt path. They naturally had all kinds of words for them. Nobody had asked the corrupt path to not have a top expert with them. Now that the great battle was starting, it clearly showed that they were lacking sincerity in their cooperation with the Dark Forest. If they didn't cooperate, then considering the wooden brains of the Dark Forest's leaders, it would be all too easy for the ancient races and ancient family alliance to convince the Dark Forest that the corrupt path wasn't worth allying with. In the future, they might even be cut out like Pill Valley. To the corrupt path, the dark forest was an important alley due to their control over the spirit world. The corrupt path definitely couldn't offend them. This was something the higher-ups had told them before they had entered the spirit world. So Gui Yan had a belly full of anger and nowhere to release it. He could only curse Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan inside. He couldn't even say his curses out loud, because amongst the 3,000 experts he was leading, there were people from the ancient races and ancient families. 
These people were all elites, including Ji Yuai Yan. There were four rank nine celestials. Two were from the corrupt path, while there was one each from the ancient races and ancient families. The remaining experts were mostly rank eight celestials, and the majority of those people were soul transformation experts. There were also over ten life star experts. Those life star experts were just rank six celestials, and thanks to the heavenly Tao suppression, they wouldn't be able to defeat elite rank eight celestial jade core disciples. However, when facing the spirit race warriors who had no heavenly Tao pressure to suppress them, these life star experts could unleash even greater destructive power. It could be said that this group of 3,000 experts was extremely powerful. They were like a sharp blade about to viciously stab the spirit race warriors in their backs. On the battlefield, there were over 1,300,000 people from the ancient races, corrupt path, and ancient family alliance. For 3,000 people to stealthily leave was practically unnoticeable. This sneak attack had a very high chance of success. What Ji Yuai Yan was cursing Sha Guang Yan and Pen Wanchen for wasn't for their tactics. Instead, it was that the two of them had sent their own people to keep a watch over him, as well as to say that when they succeeded, it was thanks to their people and their plan, not the corrupt paths. However, if this ambush failed, the two of them would push all the blame on Ji Yuai Yan, saying that he didn't know how to fight properly. Naturally, Ji Yuai Yan was aware of this, but he had no way to go against it. That was why he was so angry. That bitch Len Yuian, where did she go? She never should have been sent here. Cursed Ji Yuai Yan. If Len Yuian was present, how could the corrupt path be abused like this? Right now, there was nothing they could do. If they won, they wouldn't share the merit. But if they lost, they would take all the blame. The righteous path is all a bunch of scheming to faced hypocrites. Ji Yuai Yan felt like he might explode out of anger. Although the ancient family alliance was a power in their own right, they could somewhat be considered part of the righteous path. In the end, it was the righteous path that was most skilled in scheming. Right now, the corrupt path had no choice in the matter. If they refused to do what the others said, then once the dark forest investigated, the ancient races and ancient family alliance would definitely paint them in a bad light. Ji Yuai Yan had led his 3,000 experts well toward the back of the battlefield, concealing their auras. They were getting closer to the spirit race warriors. After two hours of travel, they finally managed to see the battlefield again. They had truly made a huge loop. Just as they were getting closer, they suddenly sensed something. It felt like something was staring at them from behind. When they looked back, their souls almost fled in fright. Somehow, over 10,000 spirit race warriors had appeared behind them. These warriors all had powerful auras. They were the strongest spirit generals of the Forest of Life. Each of them had a bow with an arrow pointing right at Ji Yuai Yan's army. An invisible aura locked onto them. We've fallen for a trap. Run. There was no way they could fight like this. So they naturally turned to flee. Facing 10,000 terrifying archers, they would have to be stupid not to run. Attack, shouted a spirit race warrior. Her arrow was released, and in the next instant, one of the corrupt path's rank 8 celestials was struck in the head. His head exploded instantaneously. He was a soul transformation expert, but his Yuan spirit was annihilated by this single arrow as well. Ah, no, over 10,000 arrows shot out at the same time. Miserable cries began to ring out as they were slain. Boom. One of the corrupt life star experts slashed his sword out, blocking the arrows coming for him. He shouted, Don't run. They're long-range fighters, so we can't get away. Our only chance is to charge straight at them. He truly was worthy of being a life star expert. His rich battle experience told him that running in this situation would simply make them targets. He led by example and he began charging his way through the torrent of arrows, repeatedly breaking any arrows with his sword. Following him, everyone else quickly realized that this was truly the only way for them to survive. They turned. The spirit race warriors were all spirit generals with the life god tree's blessing, and their power was immense. These experts were constantly being slain. However, there was nowhere for them to run. Since they couldn't run, they could only charge forward. Very quickly the life star experts managed to charge through their arrows to reach them. 
die you ignorant creatures. The life star experts roared and attacked. This was their only chance to retaliate. Yet, they didn't notice that at up one of the spirit race warrior's shoulders was a tiny rainbow-colored bird staring coldly at them. Just as they thought that they had seized their chance to counterattack, the life star experts found that the world around them had become dark. Chapter 1449 Leave Him Alive Translator Born to be what is this place? Where are the spirit race warriors? The life star experts suddenly found themselves in a pitch black space where they couldn't see anything. Not good. We've been ambushed. Ah. One of the life star experts suddenly sensed something off when a sharp blade of energy cut through his body, severing his waist. The other experts hastily took out their weapons. Their weapons runes illuminated this space. Here, their divine sense was completely suppressed, making them blind. When their weapons lit up, they managed to see countless thin strands billowing violently in the darkness. They only just managed to get a glance at those strands when one of them severed a life star expert's arm. These threads were so thin that they were almost impossible to see with the naked eye. They were many times thinner than a hair, but these experts just barely managed to see that these threads were sawtoothed. Their silent attacks cut through these experts' bodies like they were tofu. Fuck. We've been trapped. Run. The life star experts hastily attacked the threads with their full power. But these threads seemed to be controlled by two hands pulling them tautly. They billowed through the space, cutting through bodies. However, the weapons actually bounced off the threads, unable to damage them at all. Our heavenly Tao energy is also suppressed here. Where the hell is this? More and more threads appeared in the air. Millions and millions of them were cutting through them. The life star experts let out miserable cries as they were cut to pieces. Even their Yuan spirits were no exception. Even after death, these life star experts didn't realize how they had died. They didn't even know who had killed them. They didn't know, but the other experts who had come with them saw it clearly. They had personally witnessed a giant bird devour them in one gulp. The cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow. They finally recognized the identity of that little bird. Cloud let out a sharp bird cry, and black threads flew out rapidly at them. Not good. Gui Yan and the others hastily went all out resisting. Barriers of light appeared. Boom. Cloud's attack was blocked. But even for four rank nine celestials, because of how hasty their block was, they were knocked back. The four of them were horrified. Although the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow was an ancient species of great power. They had no idea how it could possess such power at just the peak of the ninth rank. That was only equivalent to the Jade Core Realm. Worst of all, now that the four of them were knocked back, the spirit race warriors' arrows rained down on all of them. There was no way for them to dodge. Although the four rank nine celestials managed to block Cloud's attack, the shockwaves blew away the surrounding experts as well. As they were still impacted by that attack, they were shot down by the arrows. Cloud's arrival had instantly ruined their plans. At such a distance, there was no way for them to dodge or block the arrows of 10,000 spirit generals. The 3,000 experts were slain, while the four rank 9 celestials fled for their lives. They found that fleeing was their smartest choice right now. They were already regretting what that life star expert had said at the beginning. If they had fled from the start, they might already be gone. All the spirit generals aimed their bows at the four of them. As a result, thanks to the divine energy in their arrows, three of the rank nine celestials were torn through with arrows. Damn it, these arrows suppress my heavenly Tao energy, roared the ancient race rank nine celestial. As soon as he was struck, he felt like he was a balloon with a large hole. All his energy was rushing out of him. Just at that moment, another arrow pierced through his head, and he fell to the ground. He was filled with regret, but that couldn't change reality. He died in body and spirit. No. The other two rank nine celestials let out furious roars. But they didn't even last a few more breaths before being killed. It wasn't that they were weak. But that they were facing too many other powerful existences. In front of this absolute power. They had no chance of surviving. Gui Yan fled. Hearing the other's unwilling cries. His hair stood on end. And he was filled with terror. He thought that he was also about to be killed. Yet unexpectedly, the spirit race warriors didn't chase him after killing the other three. Not only did they not chase, 
but even the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow, claimed to be unrivaled in speed, wasn't chasing him. He fled for his life. The spirit race warriors immediately turned toward the battlefield and went to assist upon seeing Ji Yuai Yan flee. The reason they had killed everyone except for Ji Yuai Yan was thanks to Long Chen's orders. Ji Yuai Yan fled, not even returning to the battlefield. He didn't alert Pen Wanchen or Sha Guangyan of his failure. Instead, he went straight toward the exit of the spirit world. Ji Yuai Yan was now completely terrified of Long Chen. Whether it was in terms of wits or martial might, he was now afraid of him. Sha Guangyan and Pen Wanchen had only come up with the plan to sneak attack them at the moment, but Long Chen had long since laid down a trap, waiting for these experts to fall into it. Such an enemy was too terrifying. He felt that the only reason he had survived was thanks to the corrupt god's blessing. He no longer dared to be enemies with Long Chen. In fact, he didn't even have the courage to see him again. He wanted to flee back to the martial heaven continent, back to the corrupt path. He had to report everything that had happened here. Flames continuously burst out of Long Chen as he spread them through the air. From a distance, it was like a flame god was shooting out an endless torrent of golden meteors at the magical beasts. The magical beasts were too numerous, and even with Long Chen's efforts, a lot of them were charging through his flames. However, after going through his flames, they were severely weakened, and the Dragon Blood Legion killed them easily. In fact, as he unleashed his flame attacks, Long Chen still had time to gather some corpses. At this time, the world trees in the primal chaos space were all about the same height of 3,000 meters. There was now a thriving green forest. Oh, they already made their move. Long Chen suddenly sensed many more fruits appearing on the heavenly Dao tree in the black soil. He didn't need Cloud's report to know what had happened over there. The Heavenly Dao tree was also growing stronger. It was actually able to absorb the Heavenly Dao energy of slain celestials from such an immense distance now. Three rank nine Heavenly Dao fruits. It should be close to the end. Long Chen quickly saw three rank nine Heavenly Dao fruits appear. There was nothing new from the Heavenly Dao tree for a while. Long Chen nodded and sent a spiritual message to Chu Yao and Meng Qi. In the distance, Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan were staring closely at the battlefield. They didn't have the slightest idea that the troops they had sent had long since been annihilated. They were still waiting for the sneak attack from the back before launching an all-out attack from the front. Instead, all they were witness to was Long Chen repeatedly unleashing flames. There wasn't the slightest bit of disorder in the Dragonblood Legion's fighting. Why haven't they attacked yet? It should be about time said Pen Wancheng impatiently. Just wait. I did tell them to go around very far so that they wouldn't be noticed. It'll take them a bit of time, said Sha Guangyan. The two of them continued watching closely. This was a world-shaking battle. Not only were the Dragonblood warriors powerful, but the millions of spirit race warriors were also quite strong. The spirit race army would be left to the Dark Forest's magical beasts in a bit. So the two of them only need to keep watch on Long Chen. As soon as he was thrown off balance by their sneak attack, they would kill him. Just as they were staring intently at the battlefield, a snaking wooden stake passed underground from beneath the battlefield to beneath them. The wooden stake was like a serpent. The slightest crack appeared on the earth as its head reached the surface. Two small holes appeared on the wooden stake, seeming to be eyes. It looked around. It saw the ancient race corrupt path, and ancient family alliances experts floating in the air, staring at the battlefield. They didn't notice what was happening beneath them. After observing the situation, the wooden stake slowly retreated underground. It was originally an inch thick, but now it began to thicken. Because everyone's attention was on the battlefield, they didn't notice a small piece of earth beneath them starting to bulge slightly. As the wooden stake thickened, the bulge of earth grew. But this small bulge wasn't particularly rare in this terrain. Once the wooden stake had become three meters thick, it stopped growing. Instead, it became hollow, creating a wooden passageway. Long Chen, Meng Qi, and Chu Yao silently slipped through the wooden channel. When they reached the end, Long Chen nodded to Meng Qi. Meng Qi took a deep breath and slowly formed many complicated hand seals. Her spirit strength began to circulate. 
the three head nine eye illusion spirit beast in her spiritual space suddenly quivered. Chapter 1450 Group Killing Art Translator Born to be Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan, as well as the other experts of the ancient races, ancient family alliance, and corrupt path, were currently staring at the battlefield intently. Pen Wancheng suddenly yawned. After watching for so long, he felt bored, and his eyelids felt a bit heavy. The others were also weary. Some people were starting to nod off. Watch out. We've fallen for a soul-bewitching art. Sha Guangyan suddenly cried out, his voice stabbing into their ears like needles. Everyone was instantly startled awake. Their expressions completely changed. In the instant that they awoke, countless black and white spears were shooting at them. These spears were dozens of meters long and thinner at the front than they were at the back. They whistled through the air at them. These spears weren't actually spears. They were the mouthparts of the spotted ghost mosquitoes. They were extremely hard and sharp. Dodge. It was too late. The spotted ghost mosquitoes' mouthparts became the spears that wreaked their lives. Tens of thousands of the mouthparts pierced through these experts' bodies. The mouthparts immediately unleashed their poison when piercing a person's body. This poison was not inferior to the golden tail underground centipedes at all. It instantly paralyzed people. Like shooting stars, the mouthparts pierced through the entire army, slaying many of them. The mouthparts seemed to be alive, flying through the bodies of one expert after another. Anyone who was struck would stiffen and then collapse to the ground, their souls dissipating. They weren't killed from the poison, but from the spiritual strength attached to the mouthparts. The main thing was that Meng Chi was too kind. Even when facing enemies, she preferred that they died painless deaths. If the poison slowly killed them, it would be much more painful. Kill that woman. Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan were the first to react. They roared and charged at Meng Chi. Meng Chi was like a specter that had appeared in the air. Under her control, the mouthparts were deadly weapons. Listening to Long Chen's suggestion. She had gathered all the spotted ghost centipedes' mouthparts and placed her spiritual mark on them. Although they weren't true soul items, nor had they been nourished by her soul, having them shoot out in a straight line was very simple for her. For this many of the mouthparts to shoot at wherever there were the most enemies, many of them were slain. Pen Wancheng and Sha Guangyan were infuriated. They couldn't figure out how Men Chi had appeared here. She had clearly been on the other side of the battlefield just now. How had she appeared here? However, there was no time to consider this question. Just now, Meng Chi had used a soul art to make them feel tired, causing their sense of alarm to sharply drop before attacking. All three powers on their side had suffered huge losses in an instant. The two of them didn't hesitate to attack her. Pen Wancheng was halfway there when a figure appeared before him. That figure came without any warning and without any killing intent. The figure raised a hand. Long Pao. Long Chen's hand viciously slapped across Pen Wancheng's face. He shot back like a shooting star. Long Chen's arrival caused everyone to feel even more shocked. They looked back at the battlefield to see that Long Chen was still over there, wrapped in flames and fighting intensely. How had another Long Chen appeared here? Sha Guangyan was about to attack him when Long Chen summoned lightning wings and chased after Pen Wancheng. Endless falling wood. Just as everyone was shocked by Long Chen's arrival, the ground burst apart, and wooden stakes flew into the air like dragons, attacking Pen Wancheng. Chu Yao Sha Guangyan was startled again. Long Chen, Meng Chi, and Chu Yao had all come to launch a sneak attack on them. They were caught completely off guard. The slightest hesitation from his shock allowed Chu Yao's wooden stakes to wind together and form a spherical cage around the two of them. The cage then shot into the distance, leaving the battlefield. They've dragged away our leaders. Let's get them, shouted an ancient race rank 9 celestial. Don't panic. We first have to kill that woman. She's just a rank 9 celestial cried another. There were 11 rank 9 celestials here, while Meng Chi was not an Empyrean. Now that she was left here all alone, she was definitely dead. Kill. Everyone charged toward Meng Chi. Meng Chi formed a new hand seal and all the spotted ghost mosquitoes' mouthparts flew back to her, forming a huge barrier that blocked them. Boom. The barrier was immediately attacked by all the experts. Unable to bear such an impact, it instantly blew apart. Where is she? The mouthparts were smashed apart. 
but Men Chi had vanished, stunning them. She's already over there. Men Qi's figure once again appeared on the other side of the battlefield. They had no idea how Men Chi had escaped from right under their noses. Men Chi had naturally slipped away thanks to the channel created by Chu Yao. This was the plan Long Chen had come up with. Although Men Qi's offensive power was shocking, her defensive power was too low. She couldn't handle the attacks of so many people. After she had unleashed her killing move, Men Chi had immediately jumped back into the wooden channel, and Chu Yao sent her back to the original battlefield. After sending Men Chi back, Chu Yao closed the channel. No one else could go through it now. What do we do now? Long Chen had taken away Pen Wansheng, and Chu Yao had taken away Sha Guangyan. They had clearly decided to bring their fight somewhere far away to avoid affecting anyone here. Now that two of their leaders were brought away, the rest of them were an army without a leader. Whatever. Generals against generals, and soldiers against soldiers. We'll kill the Dragonblood Legion, said an ancient family expert, taking the lead in charging to the battlefield. However, his expression wasn't one of hatred or anger, but greed. They had all begun to long for the Dragonblood Legion's weapons. Now they could openly kill them for their treasures. With one person taking the lead, the others all roared and charged at the Dragonblood Legion. Their eyes were all filled with greed as they stared at the Dragonblood Legion's weapons. The majority of them had second-rate king items, and only a few amongst them were in possession of top-grade king items. As for ancestral items, only a few rank 9 celestials were qualified to possess one, but every member of the Dragonblood Legion was carrying a weapon beyond the level of king item. Thus, these experts were naturally greedy for them. The Corrupt Path, Ancient Race, and Ancient Family Alliance's experts all rushed toward the Dragonblood Legion. They quickly encountered each other. Idiot. I've been waiting for a long time. Come and face your deaths. Guo Ran went to greet them first. Armed to his teeth. Guo Ran was like a metal monster. Slashing his blade at the head of a rank 9 celestial. A turtle only knows how to hide in its shell. Die. The rank 9 celestial sneered and slashed a blood colored sword at Guo Ran. Boom. The power of Guo Ran's slash was shocking. The rank 9 celestial was actually blown away. The rank 9 celestial had just stabilized himself when his expression changed. A wind blade had silently appeared at the back of his head. Not good. He hastily dodged. But just as he did so, Guo Ran's saber slashed toward his waist. Guo Ran's attack was timed perfectly with the wind blade, and the rank 9 celestial could only dodge one. There was no third option. The rank 9 celestial was infuriated. He hated himself for being too fast and abandoning the others behind him. Now he didn't have a single helper beside him. This rank 9 celestial was a powerful figure in his own right, and he didn't panic even in this situation. Not saying a word, he dodged the wind blade while ignoring Guo Ran's saber. Instead, his own sword slashed toward Guo Ran's neck. That was the weakest spot on Guo Ran's armor. A person's head had to be able to turn, and it was the same as the wrist elbow, knee, and crotch areas of the armor. Allowing those parts to remain agile meant that they were the weakest defensively. The rank 9 celestial concentrated all his power on his ancestral item sword. This attack would definitely cut off Guo Ran's head if it landed. This was a suicidal attack of exchanging his life for his opponents. But it was his only way out of his current predicament. Theoretically, if Guo Ran's head was normal, he would give up his attack and dodge or block. But Guo Ran didn't retreat, nor did his attack change. Having dodged the wind blade that would have struck his head and thus killed him, the rank 9 celestial was instead cut in two by Guo Ran's saber. A cracking sound also came from Guo Ran's neck. That was the sound of bones breaking. Guo Ran was sent flying back. Guo Ran. Gu Yang cried out. He had been a bit too slow, and now he didn't even know if Guo Ran was still alive. He immediately smashed his spear at that rank 9 celestial. Having been cut in two, the rank 9 celestial was still shocked that Guo Ran had chosen to exchange lives with him. While still stunned, he was blown apart by Gu Yang's attack. A faint figure appeared amongst the blood mist. It was the rank 9 celestial soul. He tried to flee, but a spiritual arrow pierced him, causing his soul to dissipate. Guo Ran. Gu Yang pulled Guo Ran up. Crying out crazily, 
His eyes were completely red. Stop shaking me. I just reattached my neck. And you're going to shake it off again. Guo Ran's familiar voice rang out from inside the armor. Chapter 1451 Fury and Killing Intent Translator Born to be Gu Yang was delighted to hear Guo Ran's voice. As long as he was alive, it was fine. After all, that had been the full strength attack of a rank 9 celestial. However, it couldn't be said that Guo Ran was fine. The bones in his neck had been crushed, and his skull had cracked. That attack had truly been vicious. Guo Ran's armor had eight coils of soft metal around it that were extremely tough yet allowed him to retain his agility. This kind of soft metal was present around all his joints, even his knuckles. That was why Guo Ran was able to keep his body nimble even in his armor. But now, a large hole had been cut into the armor over his neck, and two of the soft metal coils had been severed. However, high risk signified high reward. If Guo Ran hadn't done this, then that rank 9 celestial wouldn't have been slain by Gu Yang and Men Qi's follow-up. There was no need for Guo Ran to circulate his heavenly Tao energy to heal. In just a breath, his bones had healed. Endless life energy flowed through his body, healing his injury. I'm fine. Brother, this is a fierce battle that will require our full power. Kill our strongest enemies, or our brothers will be in danger, said Guo Ran twisting his neck and feeling that it was good enough to keep fighting. All right, let's continue killing. Gu Yang nodded. He knew that this battle was the most dangerous one so far. The fierce magical beasts weren't the problem. The biggest threat came from the army of ancient races, corrupt path, and ancient family alliance. Long Chen and Chu Yao had separated Peng Wancheng and Sha Guangyan from the battlefield for fear of them attacking the Dragonblood warriors. That would cause huge casualties in the Dragonblood Legion. First, kill that soul cultivator. She's our greatest threat, shouted a rank 9 celestial from the corrupt path. He and two other rank 9 celestials immediately went to attack Meng Chi. This time, they were smarter and didn't dare to charge out on their own. If that first rank 9 celestial hadn't been so greedy and charged out alone, he wouldn't have been killed. The three of them had just approached Meng Chi when a bird cry resounded through the air. A huge figure descended from the sky, a dazzling rainbow light shining from its body. It's the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow. Boom. Cloud's wings slammed down, and the three of them hastily brandished their weapons. However, they were still blown away. Flower of the underworld. Reaper of souls. Sea of flowers. Blooming limitlessly. Meng Chi formed hand seals. A soft chant coming from her lips. She looked like a celestial fairy. A huge flower bud appeared over her head. The flower's entire body was pitch black. And it slowly bloomed. As it bloomed, the world became chaotic. The bloody ground vanished. The corpses vanished. The roaring of the magical beasts vanished. It felt like the world had entered a static space. Here, time was forever still. The only thing present here was death. Patiently waiting for them. The flower reached full bloom and then slowly wilted. Men Qi's face was pale, and tears of blood could be seen flowing from her eyes. It was a ghastly sight as it dripped down her jade-like face. When the black flower finally fully wilted, the world regained its original clamor. It was like what had happened just now was an illusion that had passed in the blink of an eye. When the illusion faded, a huge mass of corrupt experts had fallen to the ground. Their expressions were still shocked. As their minds faded into eternal oblivion, the sight of the blood pouring down a fairy's face was the only thing they could recall. The experts from the ancient races, corrupt path, and ancient family alliance were all affected. Anyone without strong enough spiritual strength fell silently to the ground. Their souls extinguished. Their lives had wilted along with the flower. They vanished from this world. This was an absolutely terrifying attack that covered the entire battlefield. Less than 200,000 of the experts were left standing on the battlefield. Their figures now appeared isolated standing so far apart. Even a huge mass of magical beasts fell to the ground. Corpses covered 10,000 miles of the battlefield. Sister Men Chi Tang Wan Er let out a startled cry and rushed over to Men Qi's side. Tears of blood were still flowing from Men Qi's eyes, which had lost their luster. Are your eyes all right? Tang Wan Er felt incomparable grief. She had no idea what kind of terrifying technique Meng Chi had used to instantly kill so many of their enemies.
but it seemed that she had also suffered a terrifying backlash. Her eyes were blind. Wanner, don't worry. I can use my spiritual strength as my eyes. Focus on killing our enemies, or the dragon blood legion will be in danger, said Menchi as she flew into the air. Cloud let out a furious bird cry and appeared beneath her, carrying her on its back. It spread its wings and attacked the three rank nine celestials. Tang Wanner didn't tarry and attacked one of the ancient race's rank nine celestials. Gu Yang, Li Qi, Song Mingyuan, and the recently recovered Guo Ran each picked out a rank nine celestial to fight. Men Qi's terrifying attack had emptied the battlefield. However, there was still an endless stream of magical beasts from the dark forest that was charging in without regard. Right now, the ancient races, corrupt path, and ancient family alliance all had nine rank nine celestials. Men Qi and Cloud were fighting against three of them. Just now, she had used the power of the three head nine eye illusion spirit beast to activate a terrifying killing technique. But the power of this technique had surpassed her limit. The backlash had blinded her eyes and given her a mental blow. Now she felt like needles were stabbing into her mind. But she endured it to continue fighting. In her current state, she couldn't launch direct attacks against the three of them. But she could use her spiritual strength to affect their tempos and give Cloud more opportunities to attack. Having cultivated in the Myriad Spirit Diagram, Cloud's power was extremely terrifying. Under Menki's lead, the two of them weren't at the slightest disadvantage against three rank nine celestials. On the other side, Tang Wanur, Guo Ran, Gu Yang, Li Qi, and Song Mingyuan were all fighting a rank nine celestial each. They were all tied up with their own opponents. However, there was still a rank nine celestial who managed to reach the Dragon Blood Legion. He was an expert from the ancient family alliance, Zhuanshan Dao sect. Today, You'll pay the price for killing Luo Mingheo. The ancient family alliance expert wielded a long battle axe. With a single swing of his battle axe, a dozen of the dragon blood warriors were blown back, coughing up blood. Haha, <laughs> not bad. Not even one of you died from that. Then try to keep receiving my attacks. The ancient family expert laughed and his aura suddenly soared. The battle axe in his hand began to shine as he actually activated a portion of his ancestral item's power. This attack was many times more terrifying than the last. Get out of the way. One of the squad leaders charged forward to receive this attack alone. He knew this attack was something others couldn't receive. If they tried, they would simply be killed. You think you can stop me? What a joke. Sneered the ancient family expert. His battle axe didn't pause and mercilessly fell. Bang! The squad leader's sword exploded, while the battle axe merely paused for a moment before continuing down to strike his body. His armor was blown apart along with his body. The squad leader had died. However, that terrifying attack had been stopped with just his death. The surrounding dragon blood warriors were only sent flying, and none of them died. Squad leader, seeing their squad leader sacrifice his life to protect them, the others let out bestial roars. Ha ha ha. The Dragon Blood Legion really has money. Not only do you have such powerful weapons, but you even have such powerful armor. The ancient family expert laughed. At this time, the other experts from the ancient races, the corrupt path, and ancient families arrived, each of them filled with greed. Kill. Avenge the squad leader, roared a dragon mark warrior, tears covering his face. He and the others had joined the Dragon Blood Legion later and they felt great respect and admiration for the dragon blood warriors that had started out with Long Chen in the eastern wasteland. It was the dragon blood warriors that had led them through the initial slaughter and strengthened their resolve. They had been their teachers. They had taught them the essence of the martial path. They had been like big brothers looking after their little brothers. Whenever the latter had encountered danger, the former had been the ones to bear it. Even after everyone had grown to this point. The original dragon blood warriors still looked after them like little brothers. And today, to protect them, one of them had died. Despite knowing he would die, he still sacrificed himself Novaloon.com ever since they had officially joined the dragon blood legion in the central plains. They had experienced many battles but had always maintained a zero casualty record. Their squad leader's death was unacceptable to them. Haha, <laughs> a group of ants also dares to call for revenge? Just die. 
The ancient family expert laughed at the Dragonblood Legion's warriors who were charging at him. His battle axe slashed down once more. The Nine Flower manifestation behind him revolved as endless heavenly Tao energy poured into his ancestral item. This attack was equally unblockable. Boom. The ancient family expert was just about to kill everyone before him when the ground beneath him suddenly swelled up, sending him flying into the air and causing his attack to miss. All warriors, hear my orders. Retreat back to the defensive line of the spirit race warriors and spirit beasts. Guo Ran cried out new orders. Len Yuai in chapter 1 The piece of the countryside is broken translator. Born to be a small river flowed within the surrounding mountains. Farmland lined the river, and with the sun's warm rays already lighting up the land, the farmers had long since gotten to work. The oxen were walking back and forth on the farms, pulling on the plows that broke apart the earth. But the farms had water in them, and as the oxen traveled, the muddy water splashed. Whether it was the oxen or the farmers, they were all covered in mud. One farmer appeared to be in his thirties. Through the layers of mud, it was vaguely possible to see he was a suntanned man busy with his honest labor. He was constantly shouting, directing the oxen. Only once the land was level could he begin planting the seedlings. This entire year's crop depended on the spring, so he couldn't waste this sunlight. Dad. Suddenly, a tender shout rang out. The man turned to see a little girl who appeared to be between three or four years old running over to him on the embankment between farms. She held two wild fruits in her hand as she excitedly shouted. The little girl wore her hair in pigtails, and she wore a cotton jacket. Although it was spring, this early spring morning was still a bit chilly. She was a beautiful girl who seemed like an adorable doll, with her jade-like face and her crescent eyebrows. Her eyes were the perfect proportion of white and black. Little Yan, why have you run over here? Look, you dirtied your jacket. Aren't you afraid your mom will spank you? The suntanned man immediately smiled, looking at the little girl with love. Even his tiredness was swept away by her arrival. Mom won't hit me. I came here to bring dad some fruit. Are you careful? The suntanned man cried out. The embankment was very muddy, and the girl slipped and fell. Those two fruits she was carrying fell into the mud, and even her dress was dirtied. She immediately began to bawl. The man hastily ran over and wiped her dress a few times. Picking her up, he placed her on a larger rock to the side of the embankment. Little Yan, what hurts? Tell dad, he said, worriedly looking at her. I'm sorry dad, little Yan is too stupid. I got the fruit dirty, little Yan cried, obviously feeling both embarrassed and angry from having her good deed ruined. Hearing that, the man immediately relaxed and smiled. What's so dirty about them? The man directly dug the two fruits from the mud wiped them a few times, and then took a big bite. Dad, they're dirty. Mom said that if you eat dirty things, they'll grow insects inside your stomach. I'll go wash them in the river, cried the girl. Haha, <laughs> that's something that will only happen to children. Your dad's stomach is strong and he can eat them without worry. The man patted his chest confidently. Really? Dad is amazing. The girl actually believed him and looked at him worshipfully. Come, give dad a hug. Dad will bring you home and have your mom change your clothes. If you're so dirty, you won't look like a little fairy. The man took off his outer clothes and lifted the girl. He was afraid of getting the girl's clothes dirty. He clearly doted on her. Dad, am I holding up your work? She asked. Of course not. I've already worked for a while and I needed a break. Let alone your dad. Even the oxen need a rest. Comforted the man. Dad really is the best. The girl leaned over to kiss him on the cheek. Don't. Your dad is dirty, so you can't kiss him. If you eat any dirt, bugs will grow in your stomach. The man hastily dodged with a laugh. Then I'll wait until dad is clean. The girl hung on to his neck. Carrying the girl, the man crossed the farmland and arrived on the path to return to the village. Hey, Leng Erhui, this girl of yours has such pale skin. It's a completely different color from yours. It couldn't be that your wife wasn't loyal to you, right? Joked a fellow farmer who was busy in the fields when he saw them passing. These farmers all liked to joke around, and in truth, they were very close to each other. This joke didn't harbor any ill intent. They were all used to it. Screw off. You and your wife are both so pale, but your child looks like he is made of mud. I heard that he fell once. 
and it was impossible to tell him apart from the ground. It was only the next day that you found him. You're clearly just jealous, laughed the man who had been called Len Erhui. He, my second son is two years older than your girl. Those ages just happen to be suitable. What do you think about setting them up? That farmer's eyebrows rolled several times. Don't even think about it. This girl of mine is like a heavenly fairy. But your son really is not bad. He'll definitely be a capable hunter in the future. What do you mean? He'll be invisible once he's tossed to the ground. And even prey won't notice him. You. Ha ha ha. Leng Erhui laughed and left. Bringing his daughter into the village. The village wasn't very large. There were only a few dozen households. They lived off the land. Relying entirely on farming. Hunting. And gathering. Once the two of them arrived. A few women looking after children immediately smiled toward them. Praising the girl for being smart and attractive. Although they often saw her. It always felt like it wasn't enough. The girl was also very adorable. Cutely calling them third and. Second and. And so on. These villagers lived simple and honest lives here. And they all got along with each other. Aya. My little girl. What happened to you? Are you alright? A woman immediately walked over upon seeing them. Seeing her current appearance. She was both angered and distressed. She's fine. She just fell down and got her clothes dirty. Why don't you go ask mom to change your clothes? I'll get back to work. Len Erhui rubbed the girl's head and then left. The girl's mother brought out a set of clean clothes for little Yan. She had just helped her change into them when the sound of rapid hoofbeats rang out along with several startled cries. What are you doing? Leng Erhui was amongst them. But after a muffled groan, his voice was cut off. Little Yan, don't move. Mom will go out to take a look. Little Yan's mother hastily ran out of the courtyard to see over ten black-robed men. Each of them was large and stocky, and they were currently shouting something. Little Yan's mother quickly saw Leng Erhui on the ground. Erhui, cried Little Yan's mother. She ran over to his side and saw that his nose was sunken in. His teeth had been knocked out of his mouth and his face was covered with blood. The entire village was panicked. They had never seen such strong people. The villagers quickly grabbed their children and stared fearfully at the black-robed men. Some of those black-robed men carried swords on their backs. Some carried sabers on their waists. They seemed like evil fiends to these villagers. Following the panic in the village, the men working on the farms all rushed back. Seeing Leng Erhui lying on the ground, they shouted furiously, What are you doing? Pfft. One man had just opened his mouth when one of those black-robed men with a scar on his face unsheathed his saber and cut off that man's head. Ah, they're killers. Run. Pfft. One of the shouting women was directly cut in two by another man. The villagers were all scared stupid. The sound of crying and terrified shouts echoed. How vexing. We were actually sent to this region. How are we supposed to find any good seedlings amongst these peasants? One of the black-robed men spat on the ground as his gaze swept across the quivering villagers. His gaze was focused on the children the women were carrying. A cold light shone in his eyes. What a waste of time. Kill them all. Such inferior people aren't fit to live in this world. They should make room for useful people, said the scar-faced man who seemed to be the leader. As he spoke, he randomly slashed his saber. One man was directly killed. I won't let you. One village man attacked one of the black-robed men with a farming pick, but he had only just raised it when a sword pierced his chest. That man looked at the sword piercing his chest and unwillingly collapsed. Dad, a seven-year-old boy ran over, wailing, with a single kick from the black-robed man. That child was sent flying. One of the black-robed men arrived in front of Leng Erhui. At this time, Leng Erhui had just been woken by his wife. Seeing the black-robed men, he immediately pushed his wife behind him and shouted, If you have any guts, then come at us. Leave the women alone. The weak don't have the qualifications to set conditions. The black-robed man kicked Leng Erhui in the chest, and he and his wife were both sent tumbling back. The black-robed man raised his sword again. It began to fall toward Leng Erhui's neck without the slightest mercy. Don't hurt daddy. At some unknown point, the little girl had also run over. She stood in front of Leng Erhui's body. She stared at the black-robed man with her black and white eyes. A courageous light shone in those eyes. A light without the slightest fear. Seeing little Yan run over, 
Lang Erhui was startled and hastily pulled her back, giving her to his wife. Bring little Yan away. Little Yan's mother picked her up and immediately fled for her life. The black-robed man was about to chase when Lang Erhui grabbed his waist and swept out his leg. In his carelessness, the black-robed man actually tripped to the ground. Die. With a furious roar, that black-robed man smashed a fist at Lang Erhui's back. Lang Yuai in Chapter 2 The Weak Seek to Live Translator Born to be crack. The sound of bones breaking rang out and Lang Erhui's spine was instantly destroyed. He was just an ordinary person, while his opponent was a cultivator. But even with his spine broken, even as he lost all connection to his lower body, Lang Erhui continued to hang on to the black-robed man. Boom. In his fury, the black-robed man's body suddenly shook. A powerful chi wave directly shattered Lang Erhui's arms, and he was sent flying. Wildly vomiting blood, Lang Erhui smashed into a wall. His body was completely deformed and no longer looked human. He stopped breathing, but his eyes were still looking in the direction his wife had fled. They were filled with longing. Dad, little Yan let out a heart-rending cry as she tried to escape from her mother's hold. But she was too weak, and she was carried away. Where do you think you're going? Suddenly, little Yan's mother trembled. A sword had stabbed into her back and out through her chest. The tip left behind a shallow cut on little Yan's cheek. Mom, little Yan cried out, looking at her mother. Her mother's eyes were filled with death, and her mouth opened and closed as if she wanted to say something, but she was unable to. Her mother's body collapsed on the ground, her blood dyeing the vegetables. This place was her family's garden. Little girl, you're not bad looking but you don't have any spiritual chi fluctuations. You don't even have a spirit root. Ugh. Useless. You can die now. That black-robed man looked at the crying little Yan and ruthlessly sent a kick her way. She was sent flying and crashed into a wall. This kick of his was something that would kill any ordinary adult, let alone a child. The man didn't even give her a second glance. He turned and went in another direction. He had no idea that the girl hadn't died. She stood back up. Blue lines began to appear in her originally black and white eyes. A sickle appeared in her hand, and she ran over at him. That black-robed man was looking over the scene, looking to see if there were any fish that had escaped their nets. He actually didn't realize that a little girl was stealthily getting closer to him. Li Leozen, look out. Suddenly, one of his fellows let out a startled cry as he noticed that the girl behind him had already raised the sickle in her hand. Before Li Leozen could even react, that sickle struck. It was unknown from where that girl even got the power, but that heavy sickle used for cutting firewood sliced cleanly through his neck. Li Leozen let out a startled cry, and without even thinking about it, he slashed his sword behind him. It was an instinctive reaction. Regretfully, those instincts were for use on adults. His slash was aimed at his opponent's waist, but the person attacking him was only a child. His sword swept right over her head, let alone injuring her. It instead caused him to stagger and fall on the ground. His head fell to the ground. Just as it landed, he saw that sickle growing even larger in his eyes. Then, he turned stiff, never to move again. As if she didn't realize he had already died, the little girl continued to crazily hack her blade down on the body. Blood dyed her entire body. The blue color in her eyes grew and there was even a faint pulse to them now. With the blood splashing onto her body, she felt inexhaustible energy within her. She continued hacking her blade. Li Leozen was already turned into mincemeat, but she still didn't stop. Her hands were covered in blood. It wasn't just Li Leozen's, but also her own. The skin on her hands had been ground away, but she didn't seem to be able to feel the pain. She hacked away, each slash stronger than the last. In the end, her sickle brought with it a whistling sound that even caused the other black-robed men to be stunned. A little girl had used a sickle to hack a fourth vestige of chi condensation expert to death. That scene was too bizarre. Eventually, she suddenly collapsed on the ground, unconscious. Only then did the black-robed men walk over, seeing Li Leozen's mincemeat corpse, as well as the little girl who seemed like an adorable doll. They didn't know what to think. This scene was chilling. This girl's extremely bizarre. Perhaps we have found a treasure. If she's a supreme seedling, all of us will have contributed a great merit. 
The scar-faced man picked up the girl and left with the others. The black-robed men had left, but the originally peaceful village had been turned into a land of death. Other than that little girl, the others had all died. It was dark and damp. A moldy smell filled her nose. It was extremely disgusting. The little girl suddenly awoke. Dad. Mom. She cried out. She found that her voice had become hoarse as if she hadn't drunk any water in many days. It felt like smoke was about to come from her throat. Her head was still dazed. She once more fell asleep. In her dreams, she saw her mom and dad playing with her. She also saw her fellow villagers celebrating. It was the new year. All of them were smiling happily. Suddenly, the entire world darkened. It was so dark that it was impossible to see anything. She panicked and began to cry. And she tried to find her mom and dad. As a result, she quickly found their corpses. This isn't real. It must be a dream. She cried. After crying and crying, at some unknown point, she realized there was someone in front of her. She raised her head, but she wasn't able to see that person's face. All she could tell was that it was a woman. She was very tall with an excellent figure. She had long hair, and she seemed to be holding something in her hands. Who are you? Why did you kill my parents? shouted the girl as she pounced on that figure. Buzz. Intense pain in her head woke her up from her dream. She realized she was locked in a cage, and it was constantly rocking. She should be on some sort of cart. A sharp rocking of the cart had caused her head to slam against a wooden pillar. Blood was flowing out. Feeling that blood, she panicked. She almost called out for her mom when she suddenly recalled that her mom was already dead. Her dad was also dead. Release me. I want to go find my mom and dad. She shouted, clutching the cage. The cover on the cage was removed. The blazing sunlight pierced her eyes, causing her to cry out. She hastily covered her eyes with her hands. If you keep shouting, I'll feed you to the wolves. A vicious voice rang out. She didn't even have a chance to see from whom it came before the tarp was put back on. The cage once more became dark. Her stomach growled, but she bitterly endured, not making a sound. After an unknown time, when she was so hungry that she was only half conscious, she felt the cage shake several times. Only then did she powerlessly open her eyes. She saw that a stocky man was carrying her cage as if she was just a wild animal. At the same time, she saw other cages. She saw a pair of frightened eyes in each one of them. I, ah, a boy who appeared seven or eight years old shyly opened his mouth, but he only had time to say a single word when he was beaten by a whip. His skin immediately split and he let out a pained shout. No one said you could speak, so keep your mouth shut. If you want to live, remember this place's rules, said a man icily. The children in hundreds of cages immediately became so terrified that they didn't dare to make a sound. Even when their tears overflowed, they tightly clenched their mouths, not letting their sobs escape. A group of large men quickly carried the cages. They were even faster than horses, and they quickly crossed a mountain. They eventually reached their destination. After putting down their cages, a one-eyed man swept his gaze over them. He icily announced. Your first mission is to survive for seven days here. During this week, you'll have to find your own food and water. If you can't find anything to eat, there's an even simpler method. Human flesh isn't poisonous, and it's not as hard to eat as you think. This group of children looked at him with terror. It was unknown whether they could even understand what he was saying, but this group of people didn't care. After saying that, they directly opened the cages and then left without a second word. The little girl looked around. It was already dusk now, and it would quickly be dark. She felt an unprecedented loneliness. Thinking of her dead parents, she wanted to cry, but there were no more tears to be found in her eyes. I want to live. I want to get revenge for my parents. She clenched her tiny fists and was the first to walk out. The other children saw that and also walked out. They wanted to find some fruits to relieve their hunger, but there were no fruit trees around. There weren't even any bodies of water. The girl quickly found a foot-tall plant as she advanced. She hastily bent down and dug it up. Her hands immediately began to bleed because they were still too tender. However, she bore it and continued digging. Eventually, she dug out a fist-sized ball. She recalled that this thing was called a potato, and it could be eaten. 
Her father had once dug some up for her to eat. She happily looked at it. She was just preparing to wipe off the dirt and eat it when a boy snatched the potato out of her hands. That's mine, she cried. But the boy ignored her and also ignored the dirt on the potato. He directly bit into it, and it was gone in just three mouthfuls. The girl tearfully looked on. At this moment, her fists were quivering and blue ripples appeared in her eyes. Little sister, I have two insect larvae here. You should eat them quickly. Just as the girl's fury was slowly gathering, a gentle voice rang out in her ears. Len Yuian Chapter 3 Followers of the Corrupt God Translator Born to be the girl turned to see another girl a bit bigger than she was. She was holding two larvae in her hands. Big sister, you. The little girl didn't know what to do. Oh, sh. The other girl hastily indicated for her to be quiet. Looking around, she pulled her behind a boulder. Eat it quickly. This kind of larva can be eaten. If you're afraid, you can first kill them. The girl gave the two larvae to little Yan. Little Yan was truly hungry. Looking at these larvae, she directly swallowed them. Randomly chewing them a few times, she swallowed. I didn't trick you, right? Although their flavor is a bit strange, the other girl said with a smile. Big sister, I ate your food. What about you? Asked little Yan. I've already eaten three. This way we won't starve to death for now. How about we search for food together? I'm Gu Nian Rao. What's your name? She asked. Len Yuian. I'm bigger than you. So you can call me big sister Nian Rao. And how about I call you little Yan? That's good. My mom and dad called me that. Len Yuian suddenly thought of her parents and her eyes immediately reddened. Good sister. All of us that were brought here had all our family killed. We're all the same. Right now. If we want to live, we have to rely entirely on ourselves. Don't think about anything else. Just focus on finding food. Gu Nianra pulled on Len Yuian, going deeper in search of food. Gu Nianra was only a year older than Len Yuian, but she possessed a maturity and steadiness that didn't match her age. Try to stay a bit further away from those bigger ones. Otherwise, your things will be snatched by them. In fact, they might even kill you to eat your flesh, said Gu Nianrao. Len Yuian quivered in fear. Eating people? Wasn't that something only fiends would do? That was what all the villagers had said. Going into a small mound, the two of them dug up some earthworms. But Gu Nianrao didn't eat them, and she also didn't let Len Yuian eat them. They wanted to first find water to drink. However, they were surrounded by wild mountains, and there were no rivers. But Gu Nianra was very amazing. She managed to squeeze out a bit of water from some plant stalks, bringing relief to their completely parched throats. Novaloon.com sister, how are you so amazing? Asked Len Yuian a bit worshipfully. My family was hunters. We relied on hunting to survive. And when I was just three years old, I learned how to set traps and capture prey with my dad. When we're severely dehydrated, we can't eat too much. Otherwise, we'll quickly die. So while we should continue looking for earthworms, we shouldn't eat them for now. We have to get some water first, said Gu Nianrao. She brought Len Yuian in search of more vegetation, and she quickly squeezed out several more drops for them. The two of them only ate a few earthworms. Their situation was still terrible. When the sky darkened, they returned to their camp and entered their cages. Those cages were like their homes. They stayed in them to prevent wild beasts from eating them during the night. This night was extremely bitter. They were all starving and feeling cold. Len Yuian even woke up several times because she heard strange sounds in the night, as well as a few chilling screams. Some children were constantly crying. When the sun finally lit up the sky again, the children began to crawl out of their cages. But there were several that didn't get up. One of them was that rather large boy that had snatched the potato Len Yuian had dug up. He was already dead. He didn't find any water and ate too much. That's why he died, said Gu Nianrao. She pulled Len Yuian away to continue searching for water. That little bit of water they had obtained yesterday wasn't even close to enough. Today, they had to find a greater source of water. Food was actually secondary. In the morning, the cold had condensed some dew. Gu Nianra dragged her clothes across the ground, and they quickly became wet. Little Yan, open your mouth. Gu Nianra wrung her clothes, squeezing out the water. 
Len Yuhian hastily opened her mouth, seeing Gu Nianra's actions. The other children quickly imitated her, but there wasn't much do, so the water was very limited. Despite doing their best, Len Yuhian and Gu Nianra had only drunk less than half a cup of water. As the sun rose higher in the sky, the dew quickly disappeared, but Len Yuhian and Gu Nianra were reinvigorated. They went far afield intentionally avoiding others so they could secretly eat a few more earthworms they had caught yesterday. At some point, Gu Nianra saw a small, withered tree not far from them. She went over and snapped a branch, obtaining two sticks that were half a foot long. She then found a stone and smashed it a few times, making one side the stick more pointy. She then began grinding it against the stone. Big sister, what are you doing? Len Yuhian's eyes were wide open. She didn't understand. Gu Nianra smiled slightly and didn't say anything. She continued grinding. Very quickly, she finished two wooden daggers. She held them in her hands and waved them around a few times. A pleased smile appeared on her face. Here, these will be our secret weapons. If someone bullies us and wants to take our food, we'll kill them, said Gu Nianra. I, I can't Len Yuhian said fearfully. That's okay. I'll protect you. I have a little sister just as old as you, but I couldn't save her. This time, I'll definitely protect my sister. Gu Nianra looked at Len Yuhian, her eyes a bit red as if she was reminiscing. The two of them climbed over a steep mountain. They were already several miles from their camp, and it was already an immense distance to travel for two children. This was also very dangerous. Having gone this far, they were exhausting their precious physical energy and water. But once they climbed this mountain, they began shouting in excitement. That was because they saw gourds growing out of a vine. Even Len Yuhian recognized this kind of vegetation. This kind of gourd was filled with water. The villagers would often use its shell to store things. There were over ten of these gourds. The two of them immediately cut one off for each of them. Using their wooden daggers, they cut a small hole. Water immediately began spurting out, along with a faint sweet taste. The two of them didn't waste a single drop. All the liquid in the two gourds was sucked clean. They drank another one before stopping. Completely satisfied. Len Yuhian suggested bringing one back. But Gu Nianra told her not to. Although they had managed to drink their fill. Their bodies were still too weak. Just drinking their fill once wasn't enough to recover. If they were noticed by others. These gourds wouldn't be theirs anymore. In fact. They might even be killed. The two of them decided to be safe and return according to their original path. This one trip took them the whole day. On the way, they ate the gourd's flesh to allay their hunger. Once they returned, they saw that a few people had disappeared. Furthermore, those that had died had also disappeared. The next day, Len Yuhian and Gu Nianra once more went out. But Gu Nianra chose to go along another path and then detour to the gourds. They had just finished one gourd when they heard footsteps. A group of large boys appeared. Seeing those gourds, their expressions immediately changed. They practically became fanatic. They charged up, and Gu Nianra pulled Len Yuhian away. Len Yuhian shouted, but those are ours. Those children were like hungry wolves. They consumed all the gourds in practically an instant. Then they suddenly charged at Gu Nianra and Len Yuhian. Len Yuhian was too young, and she couldn't run quickly. She was quickly caught up too. One of the boys with many scars on his face seemed to be the leader, and he shouted, Kill them. The other boys immediately charged forward, a vicious light shining in their eyes. You already snatched our water. Now what do you want? Shouted Len Yuhian. We want to eat your flesh, roared one of them. He was the first one to charge and directly went after Len Yuhian, causing her to scream. However, he was just about to reach her when Gu Nianra's wooden dagger stabbed through his heart. His body stiffened and then slowly collapsed. That one attack was extremely vicious and sharp, stopping the boys immediately and turning them pale. Gu Nianra waved her dagger at them. There was still blood on it. She icily said, that should have been enough for you. If you come at us again, we'll go all out. At the very least, we'll drag a few of you down with us. Those boys were scared stiff for a moment. Originally, they had thought that these two little girls were just two sheep. They hadn't expected them to have such vicious fangs. Before coming here, I already went through a round of elimination. 
There are dozens of people that died at my hands. If you don't believe me, you can try it. Gu Nianra stared closely at the scarred boy. For a moment, everyone was stunned by Gu Nianra's vicious change. She slowly retreated with Len Yuan. Once they were far enough, they ran off. The boys stared as they went away. In the end, they also left, bringing along their fallen brethren's corpse. On the third day's morning, more people failed to wake up. Looking at those corpses, it was like they had already become numb to that scene. Everyone went out in search of food and water. Furthermore, the struggle between people only grew more intense. That was especially true when it came to Len Yuan and Gu Nianrao. Their group only contained two people, and Len Yuan was too small. It was all too easy for others to treat them as prey. However, Gu Nianrao displayed an extremely vicious side. That wooden daggers of hers touched blood several times, and that intimidated everyone. Later, no one dared to place their sights on them. Instead, they went to fight over food and water with the others. Because everyone's search range had increased so much, they had begun to find sources of food and water. It wasn't as scarce as before, but they needed as much food and water as possible so that they could get stronger. Otherwise, their things would be snatched away and one of those things might be their lives. Here, there was nothing they could rely on except themselves. They couldn't trust in anything except power. Seven days passed. There had originally been hundreds of people, but now they were down to a few dozen. Only a tenth of them had survived. Of those people, Len Yuan was the weakest. If it hadn't been for Gu Nianra's protection, she would have long since died. Once the seven days were up, the one-eyed man returned. He brought them away, and three days later, they arrived in a sect there were tens of thousands of children standing in the plaza currently. At the center of the plaza was a statue that soared into the clouds. From today onwards, you're all followers of the corrupt god. Everything you have is the corrupt gods, and that includes your bodies and souls. Len Yuan Chapter 4 Bathing in the Divine Blessing Translator Born to be more and more red-robed people appeared in the plaza. Every three steps they bowed. Each nine steps, they kowtowed. They were muttering some kind of strange scripture. A strange air filled heaven and earth. Len Yuan and the other's nerves were stretched taut, and it was like some kind of formless energy was enveloping them. Grand corrupt God, please bestow your glory onto these children. Enlighten them on how to advance. From today onwards, they will no longer be sheep lost in the wild. An old man was kneeling in front of the statue and was also muttering a scripture. Len Yuan didn't know that this was a kind of ceremony. All the children were befuddled as they looked at the statue. The ceremony took a full two hours, and during it, none of the children dared to move. Once the ceremony was finally over, all the children were forced together, and the scripture was taught to them. Corrupt God blessing. Temper my body. Make me fearless. Make me forget myself. Make me forget the rest of the world. Everything the world has is bestowed by the God. Every blade of grass, every tree, every thread, every needle. The God graced me with my body, a body to follow heaven's laws. Eliminate the weak, a battle of survival of the fittest. The weak are only born for the strong. All life struggles no one could understand it, but they did their best to memorize it. That was because the elder had just said that this ceremony was to offer sacrifice to the corrupt god. That person would only repeat it three times, and if they still couldn't memorize it, it meant they didn't know how to respect the corrupt god. Those who disrespected the corrupt god would be killed. There were over a thousand words. After only repeating it three times, that person began testing people one by one. If anyone said one word wrong, they would be dragged away. It was said that they would be fed to magical beasts. Thus, whales began to rise. Little Yan, did you memorize it? Asked Gu Nianra stealthily. Yes, Len Yuan nodded. It was quickly their turn. The two of them smoothly passed the test. After that, they were split into a group of 500 people. Since you've memorized it, from today onwards, you will no longer be orphans, but the god's children. Your parents weren't killed. They died to undertake the corrupt god's work. You can consider them heroes that died in battle. If they hadn't died, there would have been no way for you to realize what this world is. This world is emotionless, pitiless, and merciless. It is a world where the weak are only prey to the strong. 
and only the strong are respected. Compassion, duty, propriety, integrity, those are hypocritical shams. Power is the only thing you need. With power, you can fulfill all your desires. Without power, you'll only be able to watch as the things you cherish the most are taken away by others. As for you, you'll be able to do nothing. Starting today, you'll form groups of ten and be thrown deep into the mountains. You'll have to survive on your own for two years. Wild beasts roam about in those mountains. So whether or not you can survive depends on your own abilities that expert directly sent them off after speaking. This was Len Yuian's first time seeing flying magical beasts. The fortunate thing was that she was in the same group as Gu Nian Rao. In their group of ten, there were three girls and seven boys. They all listened to Gu Nian Rao, working together to find a source of water, forage for food, and build a shelter. These children who had originally enjoyed their parents' love had now begun to learn how to survive on their own. Fortunately, Gu Nian Rao was extremely experienced with hunting. When the ten of them worked together, each day was better than the last. They began to form bonds between them, as if they were a family. In the beginning, they only dared to gather a few wild fruits. Once they found a source of water, they began building a shelter. They built traps around the shelter to prevent attacks from wild beasts. A month later, they began hunting for pheasants, rabbits, and other prey. Sometimes, they would even dare to attack wild boars. Living in that intense environment, Len Yuian learned many skills. Under Gu Nianra's guidance, she quickly became their group second in command. She was strong and agile. Their shelter was attacked several times by wild beasts. Once a fierce black bear attacked and broken their traps. Under Gu Nianra and Len Yuian's guidance, they worked together to cut it down. The days passed one by one. They felt that these days were the happiest time of their lives after what they had experienced before. But happy days always passed by the quickest noveloon.com Two years passed in the blink of an eye. Len Yuian was already five and a half years old. In this environment, she had grown a great deal. She had almost forgotten the pain of her past. But on this day, their nightmare returned. People came to bring them back. They tried to run, but they were all caught. They were brought back to the sect after that. They were forced to consume various medicinal pills and take tests to evaluate their physical functions. The pain was enough for them to want to die. In this place, they were like animals that had to follow other people's orders. They wanted to rebel, but they didn't have the power. Three days later, they were brought into a room. Next, someone came and called out three names. Once those three people left, they never returned. Len Yuian and Gu Nianra went out to search only to find them in a nearby valley. They were already dead. There were hundreds of other corpses with them. They should be the people whose talent wasn't good enough. They didn't have the qualifications to be raised. So they were killed, said Gu Nianra hatefully, clenching her fists. These bastards, roared one boy. They were all infuriated. These were companions they had been with for two years. Seeing three of them die. They were incomparably distressed. Scram or die. Just at this moment, a red-robed man appeared, tossing two more corpses onto the pile. Len Yuian and the others returned to their wooden room. And then, more people brought them away again. It was another round of tests. After those tests, only five of their seven remained. Two more of them died. They despaired. In front of these powerful experts, their little bit of power was insignificant. Bastards. Just wait until I get stronger. I'll definitely kill them all to get revenge. I've already remembered all their faces, said one boy through clenched teeth. The next day, the five of them were brought back to the plaza with hundreds of others. It was still the same group as two years ago, but now they numbered much less. Two years had let them grow a great deal. They had become stronger, but the only thing in their eyes was endless hatred. They had obviously encountered the same thing as Len Yuian and the others. It was still the same elder that had held the ceremony back then. He smiled slightly. Now do you understand how important power is? Without power, you won't even be able to survive, let alone have freedom or dignity. However, you don't need to panic. Do you want revenge? Do you want revenge for your companions? Do you want to kill those people who were so cruel to you? Do you also want to kill me with them? That's also fine. 
Everyone is a follower of the corrupt God, and the corrupt God is fair. He will give all of you the chance to fulfill your wishes. The key point is whether or not you can grasp that chance. Starting today, you all have the right to cultivate. As long as you are strong enough, you can kill anyone here that you have enmity against, including myself. You are the seedlings that have been tested to have the greatest potential, but whether or not you can grow is up to yourselves. Now you have the chance to take the first step of your growth. Bathe in the corrupt God's favor. Let the divine ceremony begin. The corrupt God's statue began to shake slightly, and light began to rain from the sky. Those children began to quiver as that light sprinkled upon them. The blood in their bodies began to rapidly circulate. It felt like their bodies were overflowing with energy. Corrupt God, grace me with power. I am willing to become your most loyal servant, shouted some people, their eyes red. Corrupt God, I am willing to offer up my everything to you, including my soul. Following the loud shouting of certain people, it was like the corrupt God had really heard them. The rain of light slowly condensed over them. The others saw that and followed suit. Shouts of solemn oaths rang throughout the air. Those people's voices turned hoarse, but they continued to scream. That was because they found that as they screamed, more light would gather over their bodies, and the power overflowing out of them grew even greater. Len Yuian watched as the people around her screamed with greater and greater fervor. She noticed that when the light landed on her body, there was some kind of power that forced it back. She was unable to absorb it. Once the divine ceremony was over, they learned that they were the disciples of the corrupt God, also known as the corrupt path's disciples. Their sect was called Bloodfiend Gate. Bloodfiend Gate didn't split its disciples into inner or outer disciples. Everyone was the same. They started cultivating and training together. The elders imparted the Qi condensation techniques to them. Qi condensation was the first step. As for the Qi sensing realm, after bathing in the corrupt God's divine grace, they had already passed that. Their cultivation speed was incredibly fast, and their foundation was extremely solid. During this time, they had plenty of food, a good dwelling, and practically anything else that they wanted. In just one month, Len Yuian had reached the seventh heaven stage of Qi condensation. That was the most frightening thing about the God's blessing. Each of these people had been without the slightest foundation. But having experienced countless life and death trials, all their potential was carved out. Gu Nianra was even stronger. She had already reached the ninth heaven stage. To reach the ninth heaven stage of Qi condensation at just six years old was extremely terrifying. Once all the disciples were gathered again, they were no longer children, but cultivators. Although they were young and immature, the pain and suffering of their childhood had allowed them to mature very early. At just six or seven years old, they had the same stature as someone over ten years old. Their eyes were cold and sharp. They also had their own weapons, as well as any battle skills they wanted to cultivate. Compared to a month ago, they were like completely different people. Excellent. You should all have sensed the power of the divine blessing now. It was the corrupt God that changed your everything. Only by bathing under the light of the corrupt God can you become this world's master becoming the master of your own fate. A month ago, I said the corrupt god would give you a chance to get revenge. That time has come. The elder pointed to a mass of people standing in the distance. They were all Qi condensation experts. Do you see them? The people who captured you. The people who killed your families. They're right there. Your chance to get revenge has come. You can challenge them. It will be a fair fight. Life and death will be up to fate. It just depends on whether you have the courage, said the elder. You, I want to challenge you. Seeing the man with the scar on his face, killing intent erupted out of Len Yuian. That was precisely one of the people that had killed her parents. Even if he was burned to ash, she would still recognize that face. Len Yuian Chapter 5 Cruel Rules Translator Born to be Len Yuian immediately thought of how her parents had died miserably. Looking at this scar-faced man, a strange blue light appeared in her pupils. Little Yan, his cultivation base has reached the ninth heaven stage of Qi condensation. You can't beat him, said Gu Nianrao. But Len Yuian had already walked out, a two-foot-long sword in her hand. It was a specially made weapon for her age. The scar-faced man smiled slightly. 
His luck was excellent. Len Yuian had actually challenged him. According to the Corrupt Path's rules, these disciples would only have one chance to challenge them. As long as they passed, they would receive a large reward. But there was another rule. That was that they couldn't kill these children. However, the children challenging them didn't know about that rule. For Len Yuian to challenge him now meant that she couldn't challenge him again in the future. He would receive an easy reward now. The people like him were most afraid of these disciples growing up before challenging them. Then they would definitely die. Len Yuian unsheathed her sword. Even at such a young age, the whistling sound of her sword was so sharp. That was enough to show how strong her wrist strength was. Even some of the elders couldn't help nodding. This Len Yuian was so young, but she was made of good stuff. The scar-faced man snorted and raised his sword. Len Yuian's attack was easily blocked. In terms of power, she was unable to compete with him. Little Yan, cried Gu Nianrao. Len Yuian clenched her teeth. Blood was pouring out of her hand, but she seemed to not be able to sense it. She repeatedly slashed her sword. The corrupt experts shook their heads. Her first slash had been good, but by the third slash, she was just randomly hacking. The scar-faced man snorted. His sword danced and Len Yuian was forced back three times. Blood dripped out of the corner of her mouth. After all, she was just a child, and she was too lacking when it came to power. Furthermore, as she became furious, she even forgot to circulate her chi. Without circulating her chi, she was immediately sent flying back. A cut on her cheek. Blood slowly flowed out. She knelt there, trying to get up, but she didn't succeed. You really are too useless. I still remember that your father was that dark-skinned fellow. Correct? When he died, you retaliated and even managed to kill Li Laozen. Over two years have passed, but you haven't grown at all. Don't even think about getting revenge in your life. You're fated to forever be weak. In the future, you'll only be able to crawl beneath the feet of the strong, sneered the scar-faced man. That was their mission. They were supposed to provoke these disciples to get stronger. They wanted them to be furious. They wanted them to go crazy. Len Yuian was on the ground. The scar-faced man was too powerful. She felt like her body was about to collapse. Her mind entered a muddled state. She could vaguely hear Gu Nianra's cries. But that voice seemed so distant. Just as Len Yuian was about to fall unconscious, she entered a strange space. There was a long-haired woman was in front of her. That woman was holding something in her hand. That was all Len Yuian could tell. She was unable to see anything else about her figure. Who are you? Cried Len Yuian. This was her second time seeing this figure. You still aren't angry enough. This way, you won't be able to obtain the power that should be yours. He is right. You really are too useless. You are unable to get revenge for your parents. They died for nothing. That woman shook her head and then disappeared. No, I will get revenge. I'll get revenge for my parents. I'm not trash. I'll get revenge. Len Yuian slowly raised her head. Her originally black and white eyes now twinkled with a blue light. It was a bit strange. Originally, everyone had thought that the battle was over. But Len Yuian suddenly crawled up. She raised her sword and walked over to the scar-faced man. Her eyes. The scar-faced man's heart shook. He suddenly recalled that when Len Yuian had killed Li Laozen, her eyes had also changed color. Die. Len Yuian's sword slashed down. What startled everyone was that this attack brought with it a whistling sound that made it seem like it was tearing apart space. That wasn't a kind of power she should possess. The scar-faced man hastily raised his sword. As a result, sparks flew. He was forced back several steps. Pfft. Just as he was knocked back, Len Yuian's figure appeared in front of him. With a slash of her sword, his leg was severed. What the experts' expressions all changed. Len Yuian's power was extremely strange. They were unable to see through it. The scar-faced man hadn't expected a child to possess such power. Seeing another slash coming toward him. He hastily dodged. His sword was knocked out of his hand. Len Yuian's sword flew. The scar-faced man's other leg and arms were all cut off. He screamed. But Len Yuian was merciless. She thought of the love her parents had given her. And all kinds of scenes surfaced in her mind. She became more and more infuriated because these people had killed those that she loved the most. 
Len Yuian's sword repeatedly slashed down. The scar-faced man was turned into mincemeat in front of everyone's shocked gazes. Suddenly, the blue light in Len Yuian's eyes faded, and she collapsed limply. Gu Nianra hastily ran over to support her. Len Yuian had succeeded in getting revenge. Countless other disciples immediately challenged the ones that had harmed them. Some succeeded, some failed. This revenge was a trial for these disciples. These were the ways the corrupt path raised its disciples. Three days later, Len Yuian and Gu Nianra were split into a group of 500 people. They cultivated together. They received missions to hunt magical beasts. And with Len Yuian and Gu Nianra present, they never encountered any danger. Three months later, Len Yuian broke through to blood condensation. At this time, they tested their spirit roots. As a result, the higher-ups were disappointed to see that her spirit root was only silver grade. But Gu Nianra's spirit root had reached the dark gold rank. After testing their spirit roots, they underwent an extremely cruel challenge. Their group of disciples was about to undergo a knockout competition. Two people would fight. The winner would live, while the loser would die. When they heard of this, everyone was dumbfounded. Their opponent was specially chosen by the situation. If the two disciples were unable to determine a winner within an incense stick's worth of time, the elder would directly cut off both their heads. Battle isn't a game. The corrupt god does not accept blasphemy. The goal of the battle is to kill your opponent. If you're afraid of death, you'll only die faster. The corrupt god has blessed all of you so that you'll become the strongest warriors. It's not for trash afraid of dying. If your faith is strong enough, you'll be fearless. Then you'll obtain the god's power and be unrivaled. If you're afraid of dying, it's a blasphemy to the corrupt god. The god's displeasure will end your life, said the elder sternly. Following that, two disciples immediately walked out. At the same time, they roared and began a fierce battle. They fought with their full strength, each of their attacks vicious, a true battle to the death. In just ten moves, one of them killed the other, ending the battle. The thing that made Len Yuian feel extremely fortunate about was that she wasn't in the same section as Gu Nianrao. After her experience from last time, she had gained a slight understanding of the essence of battle. Her opponent was easily killed. As for Gu Nianrao, she defeated her opponent in just three moves. Her opponent was dejected and killed by the elder. The fate of losers was death. Over 500 experts were cut down to half. In their original group of 10 people, other than Len Yuian and Gu Nianrao, the rest had all died during this competition. Len Yuian and Gu Nianrao were dejected, but the elder didn't give them much time to feel sorrow. They were soon sent to a small town to slaughter the heathens there. They were heathens that had disrespected their god. When she watched those countless disciples slaughtering those unarmed commoners, Len Yuian couldn't help softly asking Gu Nianrao, Big sister, why do we live? Gu Nianra looked at her and smiled slightly. We live for ourselves. As for them, perhaps it's to vent their feelings. They feel much hatred inside. Perhaps doing this can make them feel a bit better. Gu Nianra and Len Yuian didn't participate in the slaughter. They just watched the other corrupt disciples roar and slaughter the commoners. They held each other as they watched on. Once the heathens were slaughtered, they disbanded and returned to their sect to cultivate. But the corrupt path's cultivation was extremely cruel. The elimination competitions continued. They happened periodically. Sometimes it would be half a year between them. Sometimes there would be two in one month. Time passed bit by bit. The struggle between them only grew more and more intense. And the people were growing more and more vicious. This year, Len Yuian was 13 years old and already a bone-forging expert. Her beauty was also gradually showing itself. Quite a few disciples secretly set their intentions on her, but they only dared to think of that. That was because they were afraid of a certain person, Gu Nianrao. Gu Nianrao's name seemed to be amicable, but she would hunt down whoever dared to provoke Len Yuian to the ends of the earth. But once they reached the bone forging realm, everyone's cultivation slowed down. The bone forging realm was extremely important. It was a realm created through amassing resources. In this realm, the resources had to be concentrated on the absolute geniuses. Just now, Len Yuian had killed her final opponent, but she didn't feel the slightest bit of excitement. Instead, 
her expression was exceedingly grave. Within her original group of over 500 people, the only ones left were her and Gu Nianrao. Furthermore, according to the rules, the two would now have to fight. In other words, only one of them would be able to live. It was an extremely cruel reality. It was just like the past. Once the two had won, they returned behind the mountains to amuse themselves. Gu Nianra had also grown into a beautiful woman. She was like a lotus flower blooming just out of the surface, and anyone who looked at her would feel a good feeling. When she smiled, those deep dimples were exceptionally enchanting. Big sister, tomorrow we'll have to. Len Yuian's voice was a bit hoarse. Will you kill me? Gu Nianra softly brushed Len Yuian's hair, a tender expression on her face Gu Nianru. To care for someone softly. Len Yuian Chapter 6 The Name of the Devil Empress Translator Born to be no. I'd rather die than see you die. Len Yuian held Gu Nianra, resting her head on her chest. Gu Nianra had always looked after her. She viewed her as practically more important than her own life. Therefore, there was no way Len Yuian could really fight her. Gu Nianra also tightly held Len Yuian. I begged the sect master. But his response was that these are the rules set by the corrupt god. Only one of us can live. Caressing her cheek. She asked. Little Yan. Is there anything you feel unfulfilled about? Len Yuian shook her head. She had already gotten revenge for her parents. She had no regrets. But I do. When my parents died. I was in a panic and running. I didn't see them clearly. And most hateful of all. My little sister ended up getting lost as she ran with me. When I went back to find her, she was already a corpse. During these years, I've always been secretly investigating, trying to get revenge for them. Currently, I've only gained a few clues. Little Yan, your big sister is begging you. Give this chance to live to me. I want to get revenge for them, said Gu Nianra tearfully. All right, if I can use my life in exchange for your life, I'm willing. It's just that we'll never be able to see each other again. Len Yuian was willing to die, but she was reluctant to part. Gu Nianra couldn't hold back her tears anymore. They streamed down, and she sobbed. I'm also unwilling to part with you. I will always keep your corpse. I've heard that as long as people work hard at cultivating, they can one day become a god or immortal. At that time, I'll become a god and revive you from the dead. Then we can be reunited. Then I'll wait for you. Big sister, you're so amazing. So I know you can do it, said Len Yuian. Her confident gaze at Gu Nianra made it seem like she could see the day she would become a god. The next day, they were still on the same martial stage. The original 500 disciples had been whittled down to two. There was an elder smiling at them from the stage. For him, seeing disciples slaughter each other was an extremely delightful thing. Furthermore, there were dozens of other elders who had come to watch. They were all looking at Gu Nianra expectantly. Gu Nianra had always been the disciple that had stood out the most amongst her peers. But she had one immense weak point, and that was Len Yuian. Once Len Yuian was gone, Gu Nianra would have nothing besides herself and would truly become a monster. Regretfully, Gu Nianra had always been caring too much about Len Yuian, which had hindered her cultivation speed. So they wanted Gu Nianra to personally remove her burden making her truly vicious. Once that happened, she would become a true expert. Big sister, I'm going to attack now. Len Yuian's expression was calm. Her sword suddenly came out of its sheath, piercing straight toward Gu Nianrao's heart. Gu Nianrao's sword was also as quick as lightning. After blocking Len Yuian's sword, her own sword spun and stabbed toward Len Yuian's head. This attack was extremely vicious. The elders nodded. Gu Nianra had finally accepted the situation and attacked her little sister. Their two swords repeatedly clashed. Sword Chi erupted. In the blink of an eye, they had exchanged 30 blows. Suddenly, Gu Nianra's sword shook and her sword light changed, becoming a lotus flower that mercilessly slammed toward Len Yuian. Len Yuian smiled sadly. This was the move she had agreed to die to yesterday. According to the plan, Len Yuian stabbed her sword at the center of the lotus. That was the strongest part of the attack, and so she would definitely die. Goodbye, big sister. Len Yuian closed her eyes. But the pain she had expected didn't appear. When she opened her eyes, 
She was horrified to find that her sword had stabbed through Gu Nianra's heart. Big sister, cried Len Yuian. Even the elders' expressions changed. They were filled with fury. How? How? Let me heal you. Len Yuian pressed her hand against Gu Nianra's chest, pouring her spiritual chi into her. But she found that all of Gu Nianra's meridians had been destroyed along with her heart. No one could save her now. Len Yuian began to wail. Little Yan. I'm sorry. I tricked you. Please forgive me. I really am unable to bear you dying right in front of me. Forgive my selfishness. I've passed the pain on to you. I've always thought of you as my real little sister. I don't know whether this is fate, or whether I wanted to make up for my regrets. Being able to die for you makes me really happy. Little Yan, don't feel bad. I trust you'll definitely become a god one day. In the future you'll be able to revive. You will. Gu Nianra tried to raise her hand to touch Len Yuian's face, but she failed. Her head fell as her life came to an end. No, you're lying. Everything you're saying is a lie. There aren't any gods or immortals in this world. So why did you have to trick me? Len Yuian clenched Gu Nianra's corpse, letting out a heart-rending cry. How infuriating. That idiot actually dared to kill herself? That's a blasphemy to the corrupt god. Even if she's a corpse, I'll take her to use as a cauldron. One of the elders furiously came onto the stage and grabbed Gu Nianra's head, just about to take her away. Bastard, release my big sister, raged Len Yuian. She immediately slashed her sword at him. Boom. Len Yuian's sword shattered. At the same time, the elder also sent a kick at Len Yuian's ribs. Len Yuian vomited blood, feeling like her ribs had broken into several pieces. Slot. Do you know? You ruined a peerless genius the elder was enraged and once more sent out a kick. Len Yuian was immediately sent flying and crashed onto the martial stage's stone pillar. A large gash appeared on her forehead, and her head was almost crushed. That elder was a meridian opening expert while Len Yuian had only just reached bone forging. She had only tempered six bones, so the power difference between them was immense. She didn't have the slightest ability to resist. Release my big sister. Len Yuian was already half unconscious. She struggled, but with her bones broken, she couldn't stand. She could only watch as that elder dragged Gu Nianra's body by the hair. He would stain her body. Her killing intent erupted. She had never felt this much hatred before. She once more entered that special space, once more seeing that mysterious woman. You're finally angry enough. It's time to take what's yours. That woman extended her hand, handing her something. Len Yuian didn't hesitate to grab it. Buzz. The elder had just left the stage when an icy killing intent soared. In that instant, a sensation of death filled everyone present. Those elders who had been about to leave turned to suddenly see Len Yuian reach her own hand toward her ribs. Her eyes were still closed. The sound of bones breaking rang out as Len Yuian actually tore off a piece of one of her ribs. That three-inch piece of bone had only just appeared when white runes lit up on it. It began to grow, in the end becoming a bone sword. Len Yuian raised the bone sword and slowly opened her eyes. Her original eyes had become a deep ocean blue. They were like two sapphire gemstones noveloon.com but those beautiful eyes seemed to belong to a devil. Those meridian opening experts all felt their blood turn cold. Len Yuian stood. A formless aura erupted out of her. One that directly blew apart the martial stage. Raging chi waves devoured this space. To dare blaspheme my big sister. I'll make it so you never reincarnate in this world. Len Yuian suddenly disappeared like a ghost. When she reappeared. She was right in front of that elder. That elder hastily raised his weapon to block. But his weapon was cut in two along with his body. That bone sword was actually incomparably sharp. Before he could make any further moves. Len Yuian's sword had already pierced his head. Ah. He let out a miserable shriek. His soul was being absorbed by the sword. This was a method to completely exterminate the soul. Making it so that they couldn't reincarnate. He would forever disappear from the world. The other elders were appalled. Len Yuian had actually become a monster. They hastily rushed over, wanting to save that elder. Len Yuian held Gu Nianra's corpse in one hand while she swung her bone sword in the other. Sword Chi slashed apart those powerful elders. Sect Master, save us. 
the particular elder that had been in charge of this group of disciples cried out. These elders rapidly fled, but Len Yuan seemed to have been possessed by a devil. Still holding Gu Nianrao, she chased after them. With each slash of her sword, she cut through someone's body. No one could stop her. There was some kind of strange energy on her bone sword. Other weapons were unable to block it, let alone the human body. These meridian opening experts were slaughtered one by one like chickens. Suddenly, a spear blocked Len Yuan's sword. An elderly man appeared, causing the last one remaining, the elder in charge of her group, to rejoice. Sect Master, please handle this matter for us. This person was precisely Bloodfiend Gate's master. The elder immediately hid behind him. Shut up. The gate master shouted and turned to Len Yuan. Are you willing to take me as your master? Len Yuan icily looked at him. I can take you as my master. But if you are surpassed by me, I will take your head. Ha ha ha. Good. Good. Then I accept you as my apprentice. Laughed the gate master. You. Get over here. I want to cut off your head. Len Yuan pointed her sword at the remaining surviving. The current Len Yuan was icily arrogant and bloodthirsty. She was like a completely different person. Hurry up, shouted the gate master. That elder immediately despaired. He could only go over. He knew that if he went over, he would die. But if he didn't, he would suffer a fate that was even worse than death. Smile, said Len Yuian coldly. What in the end? That elder forced out several smiles. Len Yuian cut off his head when his smile was as close as possible to natural. His head was taken away by her. Len Yuan had suddenly killed dozens of elders and become the gate master's apprentice in one go. Those who had once offended her were all killed. Moreover, the gate master completely ignored all of it. Len Yuan brought Gu Nianra's corpse to the back mountains where they had once played. Her sapphire eyes looked at her body. Big sister, don't worry. I'll definitely become a god and revive you. It won't take too long. She put away her corpse. Her face was icy as she looked at the bone sword in her hand. If you were the one who set this up, then I, Len Yuan, swear to make you live a life worse than death. After becoming the gate master's disciple, Len Yuan returned to that small village. It was still in ruins, and she lived by herself there for three years. During those three years, she didn't cultivate. She just sat quietly in front of her parents' graves. However, her eyes stayed blue the entire time. They never returned to their previous state again. After those three years, she knelt in front of her parents' graves and said, Mom, Dad, you raised me for three years, and I've mourned for you for three years. Although I can't repay all your kindness, your daughter is about to leave. If there is a next life, little Yan will repay all your kindness. From today onwards, little Yan is no longer little Yan. Mom, Dad, goodbye. Len Yuan kowtowed three times. These three kowtows were a goodbye to her past. She was burying all memories of her past deep within her. She rose, her bone sword on her back. She didn't look back. Starting that day, a vicious devil empress was born in the corrupt path. The name Little Yan was gone. The only thing in people's memories was a vicious, emotionless killer. The devil empress Len Yuan. No one knew her past. That was because all those people had all died. They had died to Len Yuan's sword, including her master. Chapter 1452 Golden Pen True Body Translator Born to be the dragon blood warriors who were close to Berserk clenched their teeth and retreated. Long Chen had instilled this principle into them. At any time, they could be willful, rash, even cause trouble if they wanted to. But they could not be like that on the battlefield. On the battlefield. Orders were everything. What were orders? Orders were things that had to be followed even if they involved sacrificing your life. Once orders were sent out, they had to be followed immediately and without any hesitation. Anyone who dared to go against the orders would no longer be a member of the Dragonblood Legion. So despite their hatred, despite their fury, the Dragonblood Legion retreated upon hearing Guo Ran's orders. Other than the Rank 9 Celestials. The front line suddenly pulled back. The ancient race, corrupt path, and ancient family experts chased. But their expressions quickly changed as they entered bar range of the spirit race warriors. The spirit race warriors didn't need any orders. They concentrated their firepower on assisting the Dragonblood Legion. 
As a result, the spirit beasts of the Forest of Life lost their protection and were forced to clash all out against the Dark Forest's magical beasts. The battle was reaching its climax. The Rank 9 Celestial from the Ancient Family Alliance tried to attack the Dragonblood Legion several times as they retreated but he was forced back by the spirit race warriors' concentrated attacks. As for the other experts, they used those openings to attack and cause chaos in the spirit race warriors' formations. However, unexpectedly, the spirit race warriors were extremely courageous and would rather die to protect the Dragonblood Legion. Only once they guaranteed that the Dragonblood Legion was safe did they start fighting back. As a result, Large casualties appeared amongst the spirit race warriors. The Dragonblood Legion began a fierce fight against the experts from the ancient races, the Corrupt Path, and the Ancient Family Alliance, along with the Dark Forest's magical beasts. This was the most brutal fight the Dragonblood Legion had fought in all of history. Their enemies were fierce and outnumbered them by thousands of times, but their hearts were firm. As long as that person was present, he would definitely lead them to victory. All they had to do was wait for news. Boom. Pen Wan Chen was sent flying by Long Chen's slap. Before he could do anything, he was kicked flying. This kick was extremely powerful, because Long Chen was already fighting all out. His divine ring and battle armor were in full force. Pen Wan Chen shot across the ground, creating a straight ditch. Long Chen, you're asking for it. Pen Wan Chen finally stabilized himself. At this time, he was already far from the battlefield. Golden runes lit up all over his body. I don't have time to waste words with you. Today, let's decide who dies. Long Chen didn't waste any time. He sent another kick at Pen Wancheng. Pen Wancheng was infuriated. This attack was clearly just to humiliate him. A cold light flashed in his eyes, and his hands turned into sharp claws that reached toward Long Chen's foot. Pen Wancheng was a descendant of the Golden Pang so his cultivation base's power was concentrated in his claws and wings. If he grabbed Long Chen's foot, he was confident that Long Chen wouldn't be able to escape. Thus, he was pleasantly surprised that Long Chen was so arrogant as to keep going with his foot. He easily caught it. Delighted, Pen Wan Chen attempted to slam him into the ground, but just as he tried, thunder force erupted out of Long Chen, and an irresistible energy forced Pen Wan Chen to let go. At the same time, the thunder force invaded his body, causing him to stiffen. At this moment, Long Chen's other foot viciously kicked Pen Wancheng in the nose. The sound of bones breaking rang out. Pen Wancheng let out a muffled groan as he was once more sent flying. Like a bolt of lightning, Long Chen chased after him. But at that moment, Long Chen felt his heart turn cold. When Pen Wancheng raised his head, Long Chen saw two golden runes in his eyes. Long Chen forcibly twisted his body in the air. At the same time, two golden rays shot out of Pen Wan Chen's eyes. Long Chen's instinctive dodge managed to protect his vitals. However, his shoulder was struck by one of the golden rays, and it was blown away. Blood poured out, and even his bones were exposed. His blood dyed his upper body. This attack was bizarre. It had come so suddenly and at such a close range. If it hadn't been for his shocking spiritual perception, Long Chen might have been killed. This is the Golden Pen race's inherited secret technique, the Golden Pen Light. How does it feel? Pen Wan Cheng's primal chaos manifestation appeared behind him, and his broken nose was already healed. Just now, he had intentionally covered his face, making it seem like an instinctual reaction to having his nose broken but it had been an act to cover himself as he unleashed one of his ultimate moves. He had almost succeeded. Does your face not hurt? If it doesn't, stick it out again for me to slap. Long Chen sneered as the primal chaos space unleashed its life energy. The injury to his shoulder almost instantaneously healed. Now that there was an ocean's worth of life energy in the primal chaos space, he didn't need to worry about being injured. Seeing Long Chen's injury instantly heal. Pen Wancheng's expression twitched. He was an Empyrean, and his attacks contained the power of the Heavenly Deos. Even a Rank 9 Celestial would have difficulty healing themselves from injuries inflicted by him. His attacks contained the will of the Heavenly Deos that constantly attacked the wound. A Rank 9 Celestial would probably need several days just to heal from that kind of injury. However, Long Chen had instantly healed it. 
Pen Wanchen was shocked. Since you don't want to take the initiative, I won't stand on courtesy. Long Chen began to form hand seals. Although he had fought against Pen Wanchen before, he knew that there had been too many people at that time. Although it had looked like a full power fight, Pen Wanchen had been holding back. With his experience, Long Chen knew that the most dependable way to defeat an expert like Pen Wanchen was to slowly increase his power and gradually test out his opponent's tempo and trump cards before attempting to kill them. This way gave the highest odds of victory. Because of his immense battle experience, Long Chen would have an absolute advantage in this aspect as the battle continued. The longer the fight, the greater his chances of winning. However, he couldn't do that now. With each passing second, lives were being lost. Intense fluctuations were also coming from Chu Yao's side as she fought against Sha Guangyan. It seemed they were already fighting all out over there. As for the original battlefield, Long Chen had no confidence in it. This time was different from past battles. This time, he no longer felt any sense of control over the battle. He had to fight for every second, and right now was the moment to go all out. Raging flames devour the heavens. Flame energy erupted out of him, and golden flames filled the sky. As he summoned his flame energy, the flames that were still raging on the original battlefield faded. Long Chen had to use all of Huo Long's power. So that's what it was. You simply left a flame clone to deceive us, realized Pen Wansheng. Now he understood how they had been duped by Long Chen. The flames around that Long Chen had made them unable to tell the difference. Long Chen didn't reply. The golden flames around him condensed into a huge blade in his hand. He attacked. HMPH. Did you summon this flame domain to suppress my feathers? Do you really think the golden pen race only has that little ability? Then I'll let you see the true abilities of the golden pen race. The power that a human like you would never be able to achieve even if you cultivated for a million years. The golden runes in Pen Wancheng's eyes began to revolve faster and faster, and he suddenly soared into the sky. The sky suddenly darkened as a huge body appeared. It was a giant bird whose whole body was golden. The golden pen's true body. Long Chen was shocked. He hadn't expected that someone from the ancient races, who was clearly a mix between the human race and the golden pen race, would be able to bring out the complete golden pen true body. Pen Wancheng's huge body looked like it had been made of gold. Most terrifying of all, his aura was completely different from before. Are you curious? Then I'll tell you. Although I'm from the ancient races, my bloodline shows signs of returning to an ancestral state. It can be said that 99% of my blood is the blood of the golden pen race. If it weren't because of the damn trace of garbage human blood, I'd be able to join the golden pen race. If it weren't for that. I'd be able to summon the golden pen true body whenever I wanted. But now, to protect the purity of my bloodline, I have to rest for several months when I use this technique to make up for my exhausted spirit blood. All of this is because of your damn human race. Your garbage bloodline should have never existed in this world. You should all be killed, roared the transformed pen Wanchen with great hatred. With his wings fully spread, his giant body covered the entire sky. He hated the trace of human blood in his body. He had thought of every possible method but hadn't been able to erase it. He considered it a kind of humiliation. This humiliation was the same humiliation of all the ancient races. Die, you damn human. Pen Wancheng dived down from the sky, shooting at Long Chen like a golden meteor. Chapter 1453 A Frantic and Bloody Battle Translator Born to be Pen Wancheng was incredibly fast. His huge body unleashed a fierce burst of astral winds that shook the sky. His huge wings slammed down, seemingly unstoppable. In the form of the golden pen true body, a single one of his wings was 3,000 meters long. Now that his wings slammed down, they were like giant unstoppable blades. This was Pen Wancheng's strongest state. Long Chen was prepared, and golden flame wings spread on his back. He punched the air. When he punched, the flame essence of the world concentrated on his fist and condensed into a huge fist image of flames that smashed toward Pen Wansheng. Boom. The golden wings smashed into the golden flame fist. Golden light erupted, blazing even brighter than the sun. Long Chen's expression changed slightly, as his attack was shattered by Pen Wansheng's wings. 
But even more shocking was that he had lost track of Peng Wanshang. Suddenly, he twisted. Using his leg like a whip, he swung it behind him. Boom. Long Chen's foot landed on a sharp claw. Peng Wanshang, whose body had shrunk to just a few meters, had appeared behind Long Chen. Long Chen was blown away. Although he had used his startling spiritual perception to intercept this claw, a bloody mark had been left on his leg. Even his dragon scales were unable to block Peng Wanchen's sharp claws. Die. Peng Wanchen's body instantly grew larger again, and he once more smashed his wings at Long Chen. Raging flames devour the heavens. Long Chen pulled out all his flame energy, covering the world with golden flames. Idiot. In my golden pen true body form, your flames are unable to harm me. Peng Wancheng sneered as his wings mercilessly slashed down. Boom. The huge wings blew Long Chen back once more. He carved a long ditch in the ground. No. Peng Wancheng suddenly felt that something was off. This flame-wrapped figure was lacking some kind of aura. Bang. Peng Wancheng tried to dodge. But a black pot viciously smashed into his head. Unable to defend in time. Peng Wancheng's head slammed into the ground. Causing it to shatter. Bastard. Peng Wancheng roared. He had fallen for the same trick twice. Long Chen had a strange movement art. In a battle, he could randomly summon a flame clone that could be easily mistaken for his true body. In truth, this was one of Pill Valley's secret arts. Double Dragon Destruction Peng Wancheng had just shot out of the ground when a godlike roar rang out. Two 30,000 meter dragons appeared around Long Chen. One was golden, while one was violet. They looked incredibly lifelike as they coiled together agilely. When they coiled together, Heaven and earth rumbled, and the void was torn asunder. A terrifying pressure caused the world to quiver. This was Long Chen's first time using his full lightning and flame power after Huo Long had devoured all those earth flames and Lai Long had devoured the huge energy inside the lightning chains. Normally, there wasn't a suitable time to use such a huge move. If your enemy dodged, you would have just shown off your trump card for nothing. This kind of move could only be used to kill your opponent in one move. Long Chen had no time to look for openings. Since he had no time, he might as well force it. Peng Wancheng's heart shook as he stared at those two huge dragons coiling in the sky. This move was horrifying. Don't think you're the only one with trump cards. I have plenty as well. Peng Wancheng spread his wings. Starting from his tail, all his golden runes began to flow toward his head. At the same time, the golden runes in his eyes spun and began to blaze like suns. I'll let you experience the golden pen race's unrivaled skill. Golden pen destroys the void. A huge golden figure appeared in front of Pen Wansheng. It was the exact same form as him. However, it was composed entirely of golden runes. It suddenly shot forward. The golden runes within it were growing larger and unleashing even more dazzling light. This move could no longer be called a technique of the ancient races. This was an inherited secret art of the Golden Pen race. Only extremely pure blood golden winged great pens could use it. Pen Wancheng was the descendant of the human race and the golden winged great pen race. Thus, being able to unleash this move was already inconceivable. The two dragons smashed into the golden pen. The world shook violently and the ground exploded. Terrifying astral winds blew apart the clouds. It was day and yet it was possible to see the stars in the sky shaking. Such an intense collision unleashed a blinding explosion of light that was visible even on the distant battlefield. Cloud, we have to work hard and kill these people. Casualties are already appearing in the Dragon Blood Legion. Long Chen will be pained. Meng Qi's eyes had lost their luster, and she couldn't see the light. But she could sense Long Chen's aura. She knew Long Chen was putting everything on the line over there. She understood Long Chen too well. Each warrior of the Dragon Blood Legion was his brother, and he was incapable of accepting a single one of them as a sacrifice. However, this battle was cruel. No one amongst the Dragon Blood Legion could stop that powerful rank 9 celestial. He was the greatest threat. Cloud let out a sharp bird cry in response to Meng Qi's words. Its feathers rose, and divine runes began to appear on them. It launched an all-out attack on the three rank 9 celestials. Meng Chi formed hand seals and circulated her spiritual strength. The world began to change. One moment it was sunny and breezy, and in the next moment, a thunderous storm appeared. One moment it was a wonderland, 
and the next moment it became a bloody hell. She was affecting her opponent's spirit so that their view of the world constantly changed. This made it all too easy for them to make errors in judgment. And now, they were disturbing each other with their attacks. With Cloud's power, in a one against one, it could absolutely defeat a rank 9 celestial. However, to kill one would be very difficult. With Menki's assistance, they were able to suppress the three of them. But killing them was simply impossible. After all, those were rank 9 celestials. And right now, what they needed wasn't to beat them but to kill them. That was the only way they could assist the others and lessen the casualties of the Dragon Blood Legion. They had to go all out. Boom. Guo Ran forced back his rank 9 Celestial, but he was panicked. The situation of the battlefield was extremely grim, and the Dragon Blood Legion was in danger. Fuck. Do I only know how to show off? With this little ability, how can I keep following boss? Kill. Guo Ran roared. Unleashing a tempest of attacks with his dual sabers, his opponent who had originally been fighting evenly with him was now forced to retreat over and over again. They all sensed Long Chen's aura, and they knew he was fighting all out over there. Gu Yang, Li Qi, Song Mingyuan, and the rest of the Dragon Blood Legion let out furious roars and went all out. In another place far away from the main battlefield, sand and wooden stakes filled the air. Chu Yao stood atop a formation of wood shooting out wooden stakes like arrows. She was also going all out against Sha Guangyan. The land had been turned into a sea of sand, and she had summoned a mountain of wooden stakes. The two of them were fighting an intense battle. Glancing into the distance, Chu Yao couldn't conceal her worry. She was skilled in defense, not offense. Although she was doing her best, she knew it was impossible for her to kill Sha Guangyan. The two of them had plenty of spiritual yuan and a fight between them was a fight of endurance. Their offensive and defensive power were too similar to each other, and neither of their elemental natures had a restrictive effect on the others. Victory or defeat would be decided by whose spiritual yuan would last longer. Even if she could defeat Sha Guangyan in terms of spiritual yuan, it would take a long time to do so. Most importantly, Sha Guangyan wouldn't just foolishly sit here until his spiritual yuan was exhausted. He would run, and Chu Yao wouldn't have any opportunity to kill him. So right now, the only one who could turn the entire battlefield around was Long Chen. If Long Chen won, the situation would instantly reverse. As for if he lost, Chu Yao never thought of that possibility. It wasn't just her. Anyone who understood Long Chen never thought that he would lose. Right now, Long Chen couldn't just defeat Peng Wanshang. He had to kill him. Just defeating him was meaningless. If Pen Wancheng simply fled back to the main battlefield and targeted the Dragon Blood Warriors, he would cause huge casualties. So the only thing that could quickly reverse the tides of this battle was if Long Chen could slay Pen Wancheng. Long Chen, I trust you. You can do it. Chu Yao looked at that blazing light in the distance, praying inside. Novaloon.com The Golden Pen and the Two Dragons Exploded. A tempest of chaotic energy unfurled, devouring both Long Chen and Peng Wanshang. Both of them violently hacked up blood. This exchange had been horrifying. Both of them were injured. Peng Wanshang's manifestation circulated, and his injuries slowly healed. At that moment, Long Chen shot over to him. The black pot in his hand explosively grew, becoming as large as a mountain as it smashed down toward Pen Wanshang. Chapter 1454 Utilizing Evil Moon Translator Born to be the black pot became enormous, and a mass of its black rust floated away. Long Chen was finally able to create the slightest connection between himself and the pot, allowing him to use a bit of its powers. Boom. Pen Wancheng had never seen such a bizarre weapon, and he slammed his claws into the pot, trying to tear it apart. Crack. What cracked wasn't the pot but Peng Wancheng's claws. The pot wasn't harmed at all. Peng Wancheng let out a pained groan as he was sent flying. The pot's power was too bizarre. His claws, which were comparable to ancestral items, had been broken. Long Chen didn't give Peng Wancheng any chance to take a break. He once more smashed his pot at Peng Wancheng. The pot was what remained of the ancient expert who had created the Four Nations ancient remnant. Now he could form the slightest spiritual connection to it. Before this, the black pot had never responded to Long Chen. 
It was only just now that it seemed to have woken up from a deep slumber. Long Chen's spiritual energy poured into the pot, and the pot finally responded. It instantaneously grew to help him strike Pen Wanshang. Pen Wanshen released a noise that sounded like an explosion. He turned into a golden ray of light that slammed toward Long Chen. Boom. Golden light mixed with black dust flew through the air. Long Chen's wrist cracked, and he vomited blood. Pen Wanshen was no better off. His golden wings were now bloody, and his huge body tumbled back across the ground. The wings of the golden pen race were their strongest weapons. But when he used them to clash with the pot, they had almost broken. That filled Pen Wanchen with shock. Fuck. A damn pot for begging dares to show off in front of me. Ridiculous. Pen Wanchen roared furiously. His huge body vanished as he reverted to his original, winged human form. The primal chaos behind him revolved, and the injuries to his wings quickly healed. This was the terror of Pen Wanchen. Someone with such a powerful physical body and quick recovery abilities was practically impossible to defeat. This pot isn't for begging but for stir-frying. Today, I'm planning on eating chicken wings. Long Chen used the pot once more. The pot's item spirit had woken, but it still seemed to be in a half-conscious state. Long Chen couldn't use too much of his power. As long as he poured in his spiritual yu onto it, it would grow larger and unleash greater power. Just that was enough. Having humiliated the golden pen race, you've signed death warrants for your entire bloodline. Long Chen. Pen Wan Chen was a descendant of the noble golden winged great Pang, but Long Chen had called him a chicken. As he roared, Pen Wan Chen's feathers raised, and a golden rune appeared on his forehead. A golden spear materialized in his hand. Countless runes revolved around the spear, and it was like the sharp fang of a devil king. Using my name as a descendant of the golden Pang, awake my full power. Divine light began to shine from the rune on Pen Wan Chen's forehead. The golden spear in his hand began to buzz. The spear seemed like an ancient beast that had been sealed for countless years and now finally regained its freedom. Overflowing killing intent erupted. Die. Pen Wan Cheng's spear unleashed a wave of golden light. A terrifying pressure caused the world to shake. Long Chen's expression changed. He knew that Pen Wan Cheng had used some secret technique to fully activate the ancestral item in his hands. Ancestral items were normally only usable by life star experts. Below the life star realm, an ancestral item's item spirit would not be fully convinced of their master's power and would only use a small portion of their own power to help their master. Yet, Pen Wan Cheng had now fully activated the ancestral item. This attack was full of destructive power. It came so suddenly that Long Chen had no time to change what he was doing. He could only pour his spiritual yuan into the pot. Boom. The golden spear slammed into the pot. A heaven-shaking eruption unleashed huge ripples that blew apart the ground and shattered any mountains in their way. A giant mushroom cloud of dust appeared in the sky, and the space for 10,000 miles was twisting like the world was covered in water. Long Chen repeatedly coughed up blood. His upper body was a bloody pulp, and even his bones were exposed. That huge power had almost caused his body to crumble away. Long Chen was in an extremely miserable state, but Pen Wan Chen was also covered in blood. He was staring in shock at the remaining half of the spear in his hand. The rest of it had shattered. Long Chen pressed his feet into the air, stopping himself from being blown further away. Faint cracks had now appeared on the pot, and he didn't dare to use it any longer. Evil Moon, I'm giving you one last warning. You better not cause any trouble, or I'll toss you in manure and seal you there for eternity. A pitch black saber appeared in Long Chen's hands. An incredibly evil aura filled the air, mixed with a will to slaughter everything. It felt like the air of hell had suddenly emerged. Long Chen raised the black saber into the air, and a saber image soared through the sky, causing the stars to quiver. A formless aura locked Pen Wan Cheng down. Fuck. How can he use it? Pen Wan Cheng's expression changed upon seeing Dragon Bone Evil Moon. Just now, because he had been lost in shock from the destruction of his weapon, he hadn't been able to react before being locked down. It had to be known that powerful moves in battle all required a long casting time, and that was the only way to lock down an opponent and prevent them from fleeing. Without locking down an opponent, they would just run away when you unleashed your attack. Then your huge ultimate move would be a joke. 
So before unleashing a big move, you had to create an opportunity to unleash it, forcing your opponent to have no choice but to receive it. Long Chen had finally created that opportunity and grasped it. He had locked Pen Wan Chen down, and the latter had no choice but to receive his attack now. The Black Saber unleashed endless killing intent. It felt like millions of fiends were roaring. It was definitely a peerless evil weapon that was forged only to slaughter. Pen Wan Cheng's expression became extremely ugly. Clenching his teeth, he stuck out a finger and drew a vertical cross on his forehead. Golden essence blood began to drip out. Pen Wan Cheng was forcing out his most precious, purest essence blood. Blood of the golden pen offered to my ancestors. Bloodline summoning. Ancestral spirit possession. The void exploded, and a huge 30,000 meter figure appeared behind Pen Wan Cheng. It was like a god had descended to the world. This figure was composed of golden runes. It was a human with golden wings just like Pen Wan Cheng, and he held a golden spear. This spear was equally large. When the figure raised the spear, the world rumbled as if it couldn't bear this power. This was the Golden Pen Race's secret art. While that figure was an ancestral heroic spirit that the Golden Pen race offered sacrifice to, it was an extremely terrifying existence. Most extremely ancient inheritances would involve offering sacrifice to an ancestral spirit. In the ancient era, there were some experts who weren't willing to ascend and instead transformed their lives into protective wills that looked after their descendants. As long as their descendants continued to sincerely sacrifice to them, their heroic spirit wouldn't fade. Like an oil lamp, as long as they continued offering more oil, the flame would not go out. Pen Wancheng had now summoned the Golden Pen Race's ancestral spirit, but the price had been a huge amount of his essence blood, as well as his purest essence blood located in the space between his eyebrows. Long Chen didn't even look at the giant figure. All he focused on was unleashing his full power. His 108,000 stars poured their energy through 45 of his acupuncture points. The black saber image in the sky grew more and more solid. It now looked like a true blade, but it didn't cause any rumbling. Instead, it was deadly silent. It was the calm before the slaughter. Split the heavens five. Long Chen let out a thunderous cry that was like the roar of a devil god. The black saber hacked down following Long Chen's movements. It unleashed boundless killing intent. Golden Pen Heaven Breaking Attack. Pen Wan Chen also let out a cry, and the huge figure behind him stabbed its spear at Long Chen. When the golden spear met with the black saber image, the explosive rumbling faded. Deathly silence took over the world. Boom. Then an incomparably violent explosion caused the world to rock. Golden rays of light and black waves spread, unleashing apocalyptic power. The ground crumbled, split, and exploded. Countless cracks appeared in the sky. It felt like a tsunami was spreading through heaven and earth. Terrifying waves spread into the distance. The huge sound caused all the experts fighting on the distant battlefield to go deaf. Then in the next instant, terrifying astral winds buffeted them. Everyone hastily blocked. While the magical beasts high in the sky were blown far into the distance, the fierce astral winds made them feel like their bodies were being torn apart. The weaker ones coughed up blood. What kind of power is this? Cried one of the ancient family experts as he stared at the space in the distance that was still twisting violently. Long Chen's robes were torn apart, and his body was covered in blood. He was panting slightly, but his eyes were calm. He stepped through the air, finding his target. He shot over. He put away the black saber, replacing it with a medicinal cauldron that he smashed into a giant hole beneath him. Chapter 1455 Landing in Desperate Straits Translator Born to be Long Chen had used Evil Moon for the first time to unleash an unrivaled attack, but he was shocked to find that the majority of his spiritual yuan had been sucked away by Evil Moon. Long Chen immediately assumed it was some nonsense caused by Evil Moon and cursed it, but the truth was that he had wrongly accused it. Although he was just using Dragonbone Evil Moon's body and not actually utilizing its true power, trying to use the fifth form of Split the Heavens would automatically use up over ten times the spiritual Yuan as when he used it with his previous ancestral item sword. That amount of energy was the majority of his spiritual Yuan. The exhaustion was huge, but the attack power was terrifying. His power had also been increased by over ten times. 
or there was no way Long Chen would have been able to defeat Pen Wan Chen's attack. On the other hand, he had now used up so much energy that he didn't have enough left for another attack. He could only use the Blazing Dragon Cauldron. The Blazing Dragon Cauldron, which had almost been completely crippled by the Black Pot, had now recovered by 30% after this long recovery time. Its power had risen immensely. The dragon image on the Blazing Dragon Cauldron lit up, and a faint dragon roar could be heard. The Blazing Dragon Cauldron became 3,000 meters wide, and it was like a meteor as it shot toward the giant hole. Pen Wanchen was hacking up blood in the bottom of the hole, his face completely pale. Even the golden runes in his eyes had dimmed. That attack just now hadn't just used up a great amount of his essence blood, but it had also exhausted his spiritual yuan. In his heavily injured state, he hadn't even had time to recover before the blazing dragon cauldron whistled toward him. Golden pen flash. A ray of light shot out of Pen Wancheng's eyes and struck the blazing dragon cauldron. At the same time, golden light revolved around his body and transformed him into a phantom that shot away. The golden ray merely caused the blazing dragon cauldron to quiver ever so slightly, but it couldn't change its trajectory. It smashed down. The ground exploded when the blazing dragon cauldron struck it, but Pen Wancheng had used this attack and strange movement art to avoid this fatal blow. Although he wasn't struck directly, he was blown away by the astral winds and coughed up more blood. Just at this moment, Long Chen circulated his flame and lightning energy, not giving Pen Wancheng any opportunity. This time, he was 90% confident in being able to kill Pen Wancheng without having a chance to heal. Pen Wancheng couldn't handle the double dragon destruction. Pen Wancheng's expression changed once more. He felt himself be locked onto by a terrifying attack. Long Chen was once more using a big move, and in his current state, there was no way Pen Wancheng could receive it. Boom. Suddenly, the void exploded, and countless killer chains shot toward Long Chen. It's the willow. Long Chen's expression changed as he was far too familiar with this aura. These chains were actually willow branches, and their terrifying killing intent made Long Chen's hair stand on end. He immediately gave up on attacking Pen Wancheng and changed his attack to the willow branches. Boom. The two dragons flew out, breaking countless willow branches. But as they did, the void crumbled and a huge figure appeared. It was a giant willow tree. It was many times larger than when Long Chen had first seen it. If he hadn't recognized its aura, he wouldn't be able to tell it was the same one. The giant willow's branches covered the sky, but most of its branches had now been destroyed by Long Chen's attack. He had no time to bother with the willow. Long Chen immediately shot after the pale Pen Wansheng. He had to kill him first before considering anything else. Long Chen was quick as lightning, and he took out the blazing dragon cauldron again. From the moment he had unleashed the fifth form of Split the Heavens, to when he attacked with the blazing dragon cauldron, to when the strange willow had appeared, had been just a moment, there was no time to wait, he had to attack before his opponent could react, this was valuable experience gained through battles, on the battlefield, even the slightest opportunity could not be wasted, Pen Wancheng was just about to use his primal chaos manifestation to heal when the blazing dragon cauldron smashed into him again, Pen Wancheng barely managed to survive it and was sent flying once more. One of his wings broken. Long Chen was shocked inside. Pen Wancheng was truly powerful. Under the torrent of attacks, despite being on his last breaths, Pen Wancheng was still able to survive. Just as Long Chen was preparing to attack again, willow leaves rained down like arrows at him. The willow branches, which covered the sky, had countless leaves and they now began to shine and shoot down at him. The willow leaves were shockingly able to resist the heaven incinerating flame. It was like there was some kind of divine energy protecting and isolating them from the heaven incinerating flame. Long Chen did his best to smash the leaves apart with the blazing dragon cauldron, but the leaves came from every angle, and they were incredibly sharp, easily piercing his body. Not even his dragon scales were able to block these willow leaves. They were life-reaping weapons. Long Chen had never encountered such a terrifying existence. Long Chen extended his arms, unleashing Lai Long and Huo Long. They sped toward the willow leaves, but the willow leaves didn't break, 
despite being attacked by the true bodies of Lai Long and Huo Long. However, thanks to the two of them, the willow leaves were blown back and unable to harm Long Chen. Using that opening, Long Chen went straight toward the willow's crown, because standing there was his target. That figure was the strange willow's core. Seeing Long Chen coming toward it, it didn't even move. It simply stared indifferently at him. Long Chen's heart thudded. That look was like it didn't even view him as an enemy. He took a deep breath, and the blazing dragon cauldron in his hand unleashed blinding light as he smashed it at the figure. Just before the blazing dragon cauldron was about to reach it, the figure simply raised a hand. That hand seemed thin and weak, and yet it flicked the blazing dragon cauldron away easily. Long Chen's hand immediately split open and began to bleed. He was actually unable to keep a hold on the blazing dragon cauldron, and he was sent flying. Long Chen was incomparably shocked. Just what kind of existence was this willow? It was too terrifying. More willow branches and leaves shot toward him once more, and Long Chen immediately called out Lai Long and Huo Long to protect him as he retreated. Be careful, Long Chen. That's a legendary undying willow from a demon spirit world. Its power is limitless, and it is said to possess an undying body, called out Chu Yao from the distance. Chu Yao was trying to rush over to help, but Sha Guangyan was holding her back. Although she had managed to pull away at the start, Sha Guangyan began to go all out to stop her toward the end, and she couldn't escape for the moment. Long Chen, your death has come. Peng Wancheng's cold shout came just as Long Chen escaped from the Undying Willow's attack. He had just finished healing with his Heavenly Dao energy and regained some of his power. Peng Wancheng could tell that the Undying Willow had come to kill Long Chen. He didn't need to do anything else but stop Long Chen from escaping. Seeing Long Chen escape the Undying Willow's attack, Peng Wancheng hastily attacked to prevent him from escaping. But this action was superfluous. How could Long Chen leave all his people behind? Scram. Long Chen slammed the blazing dragon cauldron at Peng Wancheng. Despite healing, Peng Wancheng's combat power had sharply dropped, and he couldn't receive Long Chen's attacks. Long Chen had only just sent Peng Wancheng flying when a sea of sharp willow leaves whistled toward him. He hastily used the blazing dragon cauldron to defend. Fortunately, he had Lai Long and Huo Long protecting him as well. For a moment, he managed to endure. However, Peng Wancheng was now waiting to launch sneak attacks behind him. Long Chen was flustered. No one had expected that just as Long Chen was about to turn the tables, this terrifying undying willow would appear. Now Long Chen was in great danger. Chu Yao did her best to escape Sha Guangyan's entanglement to help, but Sha Guangyan had also realized Long Chen was in desperate straits, so he did everything to block Chu Yao. Although he couldn't defeat her, holding her back temporarily was simple for him. Long Chen was now caught between the Undying Willow and Pen Wansheng. He was in immense danger, and Chu Yao was panicked. She was the one who knew best just how terrifying the Undying Willow was. That was why Chu Yao was doing her best to force back Sha Guangyan. Chu Yao, watch out. Chu Yao was in the midst of crazily attacking Sha Guangyan's blockade when she heard Long Chen's furious roar. His voice had only just rung out when the space behind Chu Ya rippled like water. A sword silently appeared. The sharp blade stabbed through Chu Yao's back all the way to its hilt. Chapter 1456 Everything Hangs by a Thread Translator Born to be Chu Yao Long Chen let out a heart-rending roar. He hadn't expected the Blood Kill Hall's assassin to be patiently lying in wait here. Long Chen didn't know what technique that the assassin was using to have prevented Long Chen from sensing his existence. Now that he attacked, his sword was already through Chu Yao's back. Due to the distraction, a golden ray pierced Long Chen in the ribs. Peng Wancheng sneered. Don't worry, you'll quickly be reunited with her. Die. Long Chen roared furiously and switched out the blazing dragon cauldron for Dragon Bone Evil Moon. An incredibly evil aura of slaughter soared into the sky as he slashed it at Peng Wancheng. Peng Wancheng's expression changed, and he hastily retreated. He had already experienced how terrifying Dragon Bone Evil Moon was, so he didn't dare to take it directly. Forcing away Peng Wancheng, Long Chen unleashed a spinning saber image at the Undying Willow. The saber image blew apart the willow branches that were at least on the ancestral item level. 
In front of Dragon Bone Evil Moon, they were unable to withstand a single blow. Just as Long Chen was crazily forcing back Pen Wancheng and the Undying Willow, the Blood Kill Hall's assassin stabbed Chu Yao through the back. He smiled coldly, but that smile quickly became shock. The Chu Yao in front of him stiffened and transformed into a wooden statue. Not good, it's a fake. The assassin's expression changed, and he pulled his sword back, preparing to flee. However, the statue that his sword had pierced now tightened around his sword, making it so he couldn't pull it out. Just as he was about to use his full power, a sharp wooden stake stabbed through his forehead. Blood splashed as the wooden stake stabbed through him like a spear. Countless roots sprang from the wooden stake, digging into his body. The Blood Kill Hall assassin had no opportunity to flee before his body was completely pierced by roots. The roots then lit up and exploded, killing the assassin. Be careful Chu Yao. There are still three more. Chu Yao thought that she had escaped a calamity by killing this rank 9 celestial from the Blood Kill Hall. But then Long Chen's voice rang out again. Just now, when that person had attacked. Long Chen had instantly sensed at least three of the Blood Kill Hall's assassins in the surrounding area. Originally, they had been planning to attack together, but Sha Guangai and Sand had ended up blocking three of them. They hadn't had a chance to attack, but their killing intent was still sensed by Long Chen in that instant. Chu Yao had only just killed the first assassin when Sha Guangai and took that chance to launch a powerful attack. A Sand hand slammed toward her back and her hasty wooden shield was blown apart. Fairy Chu Yao, sorry, but I'll have to be vicious today. That was what Sha Guangyan said, but his expression wasn't the slightest bit apologetic. Sand filled the air and condensed into flying spears that took advantage of this chance to attack Chu Yao. Chu Yao wiped off some blood from the corner of her mouth. She was in the midst of forming hand seals when her expression changed. A portion of the wooden stakes that were growing out of the ground and in the midst of attacking Sha Guangai and suddenly came back to shield her back. Three rays of sword light came from different angles, stabbing into Chu Yao's shield. Their swords stabbed into the wooden shield, but that cancelled out so much of their power that they couldn't press forward anymore. The three of them were like phantoms. They were from the Bloodkill Hall, and as soon as they appeared, they vanished. It was impossible to track them in the sky. Boom. The shield in front of Chu Yao blew apart as sand spears stabbed through it. Chu Yao was originally fighting evenly with Sha Guangyan, but now that three assassins from the Blood Kill Hall had been added into the mix, she had no choice but to divert some of her power to handle them. As a result, her power in other areas dropped, and she could now no longer fully block Sha Guangyan's attacks. She hastily retreated, and wooden walls grew out of the wall one by one. The wooden walls were destroyed one after another. The sand spears destroyed seven of them before finally running out of energy. Just as Chu Yao was hastily blocking Sha Guangyan's attack, a sword came from a strange angle and stabbed toward her ribs. Chu Yao was about to block that when another sword appeared above her head. Only the sword was visible, while its master was nowhere to be seen. Flowers suddenly bloomed in the air around her, spreading in every direction, very quickly. An invisible figure was revealed by the flower. The three of them were at three different angles and attacking at the same time to seal all her paths of retreat. The endless flowers suddenly exploded, forcing the three of them away. They might be ranked nine celestials, but in front of Chu Yao, they still weren't strong enough. If it weren't for the great threat that Sha Guangai posed to her, the three of them would simply be courting death by attacking Chu Yao. But now, they were like distracting houseflies constantly disturbing her attacks. Most importantly, they were terrifying assassins. If she really allowed them to approach her, it would be dangerous. Fairy Chu Yao, don't struggle meaninglessly. Today, you'll all die here. Sha Guangyan didn't have the slightest sympathy. Taking advantage of the three assassins, he focused entirely on attacking. Sand condensed into a huge fist that slammed down. Boom. Chu Yao's hasty defense was destroyed. She was once more sent flying, coughing up blood that dyed the front of her robes. As she was flying back, a sword silently appeared. Chu Yao did her best to dodge, but it still pierced her ribs. Blood dyed her robes. Blood kill Hall. I swear that if I don't annihilate you all, I won't be Long Chen. Long Chen's furious roar shook the heavens.
He was fighting while wielding Dragonbone Evil Moon, but the Undying Willow was too terrifying. It seemed to be toying with Long Chen, intentionally stalling him so he couldn't go help Chu Yao. The Willow branches completely covered the sky. Every time he destroyed them, new ones grew. These were the branches of the Undying Willow, and it seemed that there was an inexhaustible supply. As for Peng Wansheng, he was launching ranged attacks so Long Chen couldn't possibly help Chu Yao. Seeing her injured, Long Chen almost went crazy. Long Chen wasn't afraid of bleeding, he wasn't afraid of being injured, and he wasn't afraid of dying, but he was afraid of seeing the people by his side bleeding. Seeing his own woman injured, he felt like his heart was being stabbed. You're too weak. You should let me take over. I guarantee I'll instantly slaughter all of them. As long as you relax your mind and let me work with you, no one will be a match for us. Evil Moon's enticing voice rang out at this critical time. Shut up. Long Chen roared furiously. At this time, Evil Moon was trying to seduce Long Chen to make him release its seal. Then it would take over his soul and make him its slave. If he really did that, he would completely lose himself and be under Evil Moon's control. Considering Evil Moon's brutality, it would definitely annihilate all life forms here without discriminating against friend or foe. It existed only to kill. If he agreed, he wouldn't end up saving Chu Yao. He would end up killing everyone here. Unfortunately for Evil Moon, Long Chen's will was extremely powerful, and he wasn't affected. He could see Chu Yao in danger as Sha Guangai and crazily attacked and the three assassins constantly launched sneak attacks. There were several times where she almost lost her life to the assassins. Their attacks were very difficult to handle, and they were too shameless, too despicable. Long Chen, you can only blame yourself for this. This is the karma for destroying one of the Blood Kill Hall's strongholds in the Eastern Wasteland and blaspheming the statue of the Killing God. Your death and the deaths of all the people around you, are all because of the seed you planted. Don't blame anyone else. Death is your only ending, and only death will cleanse you of your sins. The will of the killing god cannot be overturned, sneered one of the assassins as his sword almost stabbed through Chu Yao's back. Fuck your mother. Starting today, I will hunt down your blood kill hall to the last man, roared Long Chen. He repeatedly slashed his saber. Unleashing huge saber images that broke through the obstacles in front of him, allowing him to slowly get closer to Chu Yao. However, the Undying Willow was too difficult to deal with. It truly had an undying body, and its life energy was almost limitless. Long Chen didn't even know how many of its branches he had destroyed, but they still continued growing without any sign of stopping. In the distant battlefield, the Dragonblood Legion also saw Chu Yao's situation. Brothers, kill. We have to save boss and sister Chu Yao. The Dragonblood Warrior's eyes were scarlet. This time, it was Long Chen and Chu Yao who had fallen into unprecedented danger. They had to help the two of them. Hence, the Dragonblood Legion no longer fought defensively. They focused entirely on attacking, going crazy as they forced their way forward in a suicidal manner. The Dragonblood Legion had gone insane. Their everything had been bestowed by Long Chen. Without Long Chen, they would have never reached their current heights. Kill. The Dragonblood Legion can lose us, but it can't lose our boss. One of the squad leaders launched a direct attack at the rank 9 Celestial, pulling open the curtains to a crazy, bloody battle. The Dragonblood Legion was charging forward without regard for death. The Forest of Life's army almost pressed forward with the Dragonblood Legion, doing their best to protect them. However, they were too far now and in their suicidal push, they were cut down one after another by the opposing experts. The Dragonblood Legion was fighting crazily. They used their bodies to take their opponent's attacks while their own blades attacked the enemies. They've gone insane. The opposing experts were horrified. The current Dragonblood Legion seemed like a group of bloodthirsty fiends, and they didn't care about their own lives. Even the fierce corrupt experts felt a chill. They pushed forward gradually getting closer to Chu Yao, but they couldn't get there in time. Chu Yao was covered in injuries and tottering on the verge of collapse. Die. Sha Guangyan launched another powerful attack, causing Chu Yao to cough up blood. Her body seemed to fall apart as she involuntarily shot back. Behind her, one of the Blood Kill Hall assassins smiled. His sword slashed toward her like a bolt of lightning. 
If it landed, it would definitely take her life. Long Chen, I'm sorry, I couldn't help you at all. Chu Yao was covered in injuries and had spent a great deal of her spiritual yuan. She was powerless to block this attack. Instead of fear, she looked into the distance at the insane Long Chen. A touch of sadness in her eyes. The Blood Kill Hall assassin's sword shone brightly as it slashed down. Yet, before it could reach her body, a gentle hand wrapped around Chu Yao's waist, and a bone sword swung through the air, cutting through the restrictions of time and space. It was like a star had exploded, and blinding light filled the sky. Chapter 1457 A Shocking Reversal Translator Born to be the bone sword swung through the air, unleashing blinding light. In that instant, it felt like time was standing still. The only thing moving in this world was the bone sword. The blood kill hall assassin suddenly turned icy cold. Then the world split in two and began to slide away. A line of blood appeared from the top of his head down to his nose, then neck, stomach, until his entire body split in two. It wasn't this world that was split in two, but his body. His eyes were seeing things from different angles. However, he had no time to consider that issue. That sword didn't just cut apart his body, but it also annihilated his soul. Ready yourself. I'll handle them, but the battle's not over. A beautiful voice rang out in Chu Yao's ears, but that voice felt icy as if it could freeze a person's soul. Chu Yao looked in disbelief at the person before her. This was a woman who was beautiful to the peak. Her blue eyes were like gemstones in the night, releasing a dreamlike light. She was beautiful and mysterious, but those eyes also contained unconcealable killing intent. They were like the eyes of a merciless goddess of death. Len Yuan, Sha Guangyan was also filled with disbelief as he stared at this woman. She was the corrupt path's supreme expert. Len Yuan. No one had expected her to appear and save Chu Yao. Len Yuan completely ignored Sha Guangyan. Without even looking back, her sword slashed out behind her, cutting through a figure hidden in space. Shameful things. You really disgust me. Len Yuan's sapphire eyes were shining, looking like they could see through all the mysteries of heaven and earth. It's the void piercing eyes. Since three of the four assassins from the Blood Kill Hall had been slain, the last one fled hastily. However, he had just moved when a bone sword slashed out. Although Len Yuan was simply slashing through the air and not striking him, the distant assassin instantly exploded. It was a bizarre sight. Long Chen had not expected Len Yuan to come and help, but she had truly come at the right time. This was his first time being full of gratitude toward her. Chu Yao stared in shock at this death goddess, even as all the assassins were slain. She didn't recover from her shock. Len Yuan's name was known throughout the martial heaven continent. She possessed both beauty and power that could shake the world, and her vicious means were well known. Who could have possibly thought that she would come to save Chu Yao? Chu Yao was pushed away by Len Yuan. Len Yuan's voice rang in her ears. Don't just stand there. That undying willow is an emperor amongst undying willows, and its origins are mysterious. Hurry and help Long Chen. Otherwise, he'll be killed before long. Only then did Chu Ya realize that Long Chen's figure had vanished behind a wall of willow branches. She nodded. Although she didn't know why Len Yuan would help her, she guessed it was connected to Long Chen. Hastily using her heavenly Tao energy to heal, she rushed over to Long Chen. Len Yuan, what do you think you're doing? You intend to violate the agreement. Sha Guangyan was infuriated that his victory was ruined at the last moment. First of all, don't shout at me. Only he is qualified to do so. Other than him, everyone else who has dared to do that has died. Second, I don't care about any agreement. There is nothing in this world that can restrict me. Third, I'll simply say this. My throne just so happens to be missing an expert's skull. And yours will do quite nicely. Len Yuan stared at Sha Guangyan without the slightest emotion, but a chilling killing intent had already enveloped him. Sha Guangyan laughed. What a joke. You and I are both Empyreans. In a one against one, who knows whether or not you can even defeat me, let alone kill me? Are you sleep talking? Len Yuan's mouth curled into a smile. Someone who hasn't even awakened their manifestation dares to call themselves an Empyrean? That's a real joke. As for whether or not I'm sleep-talking, you'll quickly know. 
Len Yuyan slashed her sword at the same time as the final word came out her mouth. It was incredibly quick, and it had already reached Sha Guangyan. Sha Guangyan was shocked by her speed. Not only did it come without any warning, but she also didn't have to store up any energy to launch such a fierce killing blow. By the time he could react, the bone sword was right before his face. He didn't even have time to summon his sand energy, and a sand chain pulled him from behind, bringing him away. His reaction speed was also shocking. Although the speed at which he retreated was shocking enough, he didn't manage to completely dodge it. The tip of the bone sword slashed across his face, leaving a bloody wound from his forehead to his chin. It was so deep that you could see bone. Any slower and he'd have been cut in two. Blood spurted, and Sha Guangyan was horrified to find that some unknown energy was present on his wound, causing his blood to pour out rapidly. He hastily circulated his heavenly Tao energy to heal. Len Yuyan, you're courting death, roared Sha Guangyan. Len Yuyan had almost killed him just now. Following his roar, the just healed injury on his face split open once more, and blood poured out. Len Yuyan's bone sword possessed a special energy that was above the heavenly Deos. The injuries caused by it could not be healed. Even using heavenly Tao energy to heal it would just heal the appearance. Once the muscles were used, they would split apart again. It was an eternal injury. Sha Guangyan was shocked, and he roared furiously. Sand soared into the air, forming a huge twister that smashed toward Len Yuyan. This was a huge area attack that had once made Chu Ya suffer. It was extremely powerful, but Len Yuyan was not showing any expression. A primal chaos manifestation appeared behind her, and killing intent caused the sky to shake. Her sword slashed down, and the sand twister was cut in two. Len Yuyan appeared right in front of Sha Guangyan like a death goddess. Sand waterfall. Sha Guangyan was horrified and slammed the ground with his palms. His sand soared into the sky like a waterfall flowing in reverse, forming multiple layers in front of Len Yuyan. But yet again, Len Yuyan simply slashed her sword out. The runes on it unleashed a bright glow, and the waterfall was blown apart. Let me see how long you can last, as her bone sword danced. The waterfall was constantly being blown apart. Sha Guangyan was filled with terror. This sand waterfall was his strongest defense, but it appeared so weak in front of Len Yuyan's bone sword. He was comforted that the speed at which Len Yuyan broke through his waterfalls was not as fast as the rate at which he created them. However, Len Yuyan was just randomly slashing her sword, while he was using up a huge amount of his spiritual Yuan. He would run out of energy sooner or later and then his death would come. Sha Guangyan hadn't expected Len Yuyan to be even more terrifying than the rumors said. In truth, he was already defeated. He was only bitterly enduring in hope that the situation would turn around. Len Yuyan instantly forced Sha Guangyan into desperate straits. If he didn't specialize in defense, he'd already have been killed. Len Yuyan was too powerful. Chu Yao flew over to Long Chen's side. Her current power had dropped from her peak, and she couldn't handle the undying willow. However, Pen Wanchen was also weakened, and she could protect Long Chen's back from him. Yet, just as she went to stop Pen Wanchen, Long Chen sent her a spiritual message. Go help Meng Qi and the others, then call over Li Qi and Song Mingguan. Chu Yao was startled, but she chose to listen to his directions. She turned toward Meng Qi's side. Endless falling wood. Wooden stakes soared into the sky like serpents, attacking the rank 9 celestials. One of the corrupt rank 9 celestials in the midst of attacking Cloud did his best to dodge the wooden stakes, and as a result, he was slain by Cloud's attack. Chu Yao's arrival instantly broke the equilibrium of the battle. The Dragonblood Legion's absolute disadvantage became an absolute advantage. Wooden stakes flew out everywhere, covering the battlefield. Following the death of one rank 9 celestial, Cloud let out a cry, and with Men Qi's assistance, it spat out a black ball of light that killed another rank 9 celestial entangled by the wooden stakes. Two rank 9 celestials were slain in just a moment. The balance was completely ruined, with the scales of victory tipping toward the Dragonblood Legion. With Gu Yang's assistance, Guo Ran killed a rank 9 celestial from the ancient races. Another expert was freed up. Kill them all. Don't leave a single one. Vengeance for our brothers. 
Kuo Ran roared furiously and started a crazy slaughter of the opposing experts. Due to their absolute disadvantage, Kuo Ran had been forced to watch as several of the Dragonblood warriors were slain. Some of them died from launching suicidal attacks that brought down their enemies with them. That sight was branded in his heart. His killing intent overflowed as he cut down these experts one by one. Kill them all. The Dragonblood warriors roared furiously, their eyes scarlet. They were like bloodthirsty magical beasts that only knew slaughter. That was the only way to release their fury. With Chu Yao's arrival, the Dragonblood Legion slaughtered their enemies. Li Qi and Song Mingyuan rushed over to Long Chen's battlefield. Just as they were getting closer, they saw a giant saber image soar into the sky and shatter countless willow branches. Split the Heavens 5 Chapter 1458 Heaven Sealing Earth Locking Killing Formation Translator Born to be the black saber image looked like a manifestation of evil. It was like the blade of a fiend that wanted to extinguish all life in this world. Boom. The undying willow was cut in two, and the saber image continued onward to the distant Pen Wanshang. Pen Wanshen was shocked, not being able to comprehend how Long Chen had unleashed such a terrifying attack. He stabbed himself in the forehead with his finger. Blood spurted out, flowing with golden runes. Two huge wings appeared on his back. Those 30,000 meter wings released a blinding light and powerful pressure. Folding in, they protected Pen Wanchen like two large hands. The black saber image struck the golden wings. They exploded, and Pen Wanchen shot out like a shooting star, going so far that he vanished over the horizon. Boss 1, Li Qi and Song Mingyuan arrived just in time to see Long Chen pull off this incredible victory. The huge tree was cut in two and Pen Wanchen was sent flying. Just as they thought the battle was over, the undying willow's two halves began to shine, and its scale-like bark began to ripple. Countless branches grew out of its crown to reconnect its two halves. It instantly healed. What Li Qi and Song Mingyuan were shocked. It was able to heal so easily after such a terrifying attack? The undying willow's life energy far surpassed their imagination. Li Qi, Mingyuan, quick, help me out. Long Chen was panting slightly. He suddenly formed a hand seal, and the sky darkened. A mass of black soil was falling out of the sky. This huge amount of soil was many miles thick. Earth-covered star. Li Qi and Song Mingyuan were prepared, and the black soil swelled up, wrapping around the just-recovered undying willow. It condensed into a huge sphere on the ground. It shook intensely, looking like it might explode at any moment. Condensed Li Qi and Song Mingyuan slammed the ground with their palms and countless dark gold runes appeared, surging toward the earth and sphere. The runes were like millions of fish swimming on top of the earth and sphere. They began to form rows, forming runic chains. The sphere shook. Clearly, the undying willow was launching a crazy attack to escape. Each time it shook, the world shook along with it. Everyone's hearts clenched. More and more runes streamed over from every direction on the ground. They crawled up the sphere. But each time the sphere fiercely shook, a portion of the runes were broken. Fortunately, there were enough runes to make up for the shattered ones. Li Qi and Song Mingyuan both spat a mouthful of their blood on the ground. As their essence blood entered the ground, the earthen runes grew more excited and crazily charged forward. However, the sphere was still shaking intensely, breaking apart their runes. Li Qi and Song Mingyuan were both tense. As long as these runic chains managed to reach the top, it would form a complete runic prison, and their heaven-sealing earth-locking formation would be complete. Then they wouldn't need to fear the undying willow any longer. However, the undying willow seemed to be aware of this danger and was crazily struggling, refusing to allow the formation to be completed. Fuck. We'll go all out. Li Qi and Song Mingyuan spat out nine consecutive mouthfuls of blood. Their faces turned white as paper. With this boost, the first runic chain finally reached the top of the sphere. Once it did, the chain brightened, and no matter how the sphere trembled, no more runes were broken. Then more and more chains managed to reach the top. Any chains that managed to reach the top no longer broke. As more and more of the chains became complete, the trembling of the sphere lessened until it was still. 10,000 chains had tightly wrapped the sphere. Li Qi and Song Mingyuan shouted once more, Heaven Sealing Earth Locking Killing Formation with a final hand seal. 
the runes on the sphere began to revolve, causing it to shrink. In just a moment, it was only a couple of miles wide. It had to be known that the original Undying Willow had been dozens of times larger than that. It had been compressed to this point, but once it reached this point, it began to shake once more. Most likely, the Undying Willow inside was struggling crazily, yet... It only managed to stall the compression for a moment before it continued. In the end, it became the size of a fist. Boss, it transformed into a seed form. We're unable to kill it, said Li Qi, panting slightly. Long Chen was also weary now. The Undying Willow had been too terrifying. Even his black soil, the bane of all life, was unable to kill it. The black soil came from the primal chaos space. So Long Chen was even more aware of the situation inside the sphere than Li Qi and Song Mingyuan. The Undying Willow had been crazily struggling at first. Other tree demons would instantly wither upon coming into contact with the black soil. But this Undying Willow had released some kind of light that had temporarily blocked the black soil. However, as time passed, the Undying Willow had also not been able to resist. Its leaves and branches had begun to wither. When the formation was complete and it realized it couldn't win, it finally transformed into a tiny seed. It seemed to be in a dormant state that made it so even the black soil couldn't kill it. It was no wonder it was called the Undying Willow. Those that could be called Undying were truly terrifying. Without the black soil, Long Chen wouldn't have been able to survive today. Long Chen put away the sphere containing the Undying Willow's seed form. He was just about to go assist Len Yuian when he realized she and Sha Guangyan had already vanished. Chu Yao and the others came rushing over. All the Dragonblood Legion came. The Dark Forest's magical beasts had been routed along with the army of the ancient races, Corrupt Path, and Ancient Family Alliance. Long Chen, are you alright? Chu Yao came forward and helped support Long Chen. She pressed a hand against his back slowly released the little bit of spiritual yuan she had left into his body. Long Chen's spiritual yuan was at rock bottom now. Where is Len Yuian? With Chu Yao's assistance, Long Chen no longer felt that the world was spinning around him. She already left. She told me to tell you that she had not repaid one of your favors and still owes you one final favor. Chu Yao looked at Long Chen with a complicated expression. Len Yuian was known as the Corrupt Path's number one killing goddess, unrivaled in her generation. But today, she had come to help Long Chen. Furthermore, her actions today were equivalent to betraying the Corrupt Path. Chu Yao was unable to imagine how Len Yuian could owe Long Chen such a favor. Long Chen, goodbye. I will return your favor of not killing me twice. Len Yuian's parting words from when they had encountered each other in the ancient battlefield rang out in Long Chen's mind. One final favor. Long Chen had a complicated feeling. He didn't know what he felt toward Len Yuian, but he felt a bit distressed now. Taking a deep breath, he expelled those emotions for now. The battle was over, and the Dragonblood Legion, the Spirit Race Warriors, and the Forest of Life Spirit Beasts were all here. The army of spirit race warriors had shrunk a great deal. At the very least, half were no longer present. That made Long Chen's heart turn heavy. How many of the Dragonblood Legion sacrificed their lives? Asked Long Chen, his voice heavy. He did his best to keep the emotion out of his voice, but his voice still trembled. His nervousness couldn't be hidden. Guo Ran, Gu Yang, and the others were all silent. Tang Wan'er and Meng Qi had expressions of grief. Everyone was silent. Tell me, sighed Long Chen. In truth, just by using his divine sense, he could see how many casualties there had been. But he didn't dare. He didn't want to see those familiar figures gone. A total of 537 of our brothers died. Guo Ran was the one who spoke the number. All the Dragonblood Legion had tears in their eyes. This was not a number to them. This was the lives of their brothers that were lost forever. Long Chen, it was my fault. I, said Meng Chi. Boss, I didn't lead the battle well enough, cried Guo Ran. Long Chen waved his hand. Battle is not a game. Since we've chosen to fight, those who die will forever be by our side. So don't blame yourselves. We all did our best. It's not that we weren't strong enough, but that our enemies were just too powerful. Long Chen was comforting them when he suddenly coughed out a mouthful of blood. Alarming everyone. Boss, 
Long Chen, Chu Yao's tears overflowed. She was in the midst of healing Long Chen's injuries, so her soul was connected to his. Only she knew how much pain he was in. Long Chen was comforting others, when in reality, he was the one who needed to be comforted the most. I'm fine. Long Chen shook his head, but his voice was also choked with emotion just like the others. Clean up the battlefield. We'll go back to the forest of life to rest and reorganize. This matter definitely won't end here. Everyone began cleaning up the battlefield, gathering some things that the experts had left behind. The powerful magical beast corpses were also gathered. Boss, there's also this arm. It's Sha Guangyan's. Guo Ran noticed an arm while cleaning the battlefield. Keep it. We can use it as a present for the ancient family alliance, said Long Chen indifferently. All right. Guo Ran put away the arm, and the battlefield was cleaned up by them. Since the Dark Forest didn't make any more moves, Long Chen led the Dragonblood Legion back to the Forest of Life. The world returned to calm, but the battlefield was now covered in rivers of blood. Countless dead spirits were buried, along with the souls of 537 heroes who had sacrificed all their hot blood here. Chapter 1459 Resting After the Battle Translator Born to be this had been the most desperate battle the Dragonblood Legion had ever fought. Their zero casualty legend was shattered. Now the Dragonblood Legion had 12,537 people left, and that cast a dark shadow on them. After returning to the Forest of Life, all the life forms in the forest prostrated themselves toward them. Even the Spirit Emperor personally prostrated herself to Long Chen. Long Chen hastily pulled her up. Spirit Emperor, if it hadn't been for the Forest of Life's kindness, I'd have long since died in the eastern wasteland. None of us have any regrets over fighting for the forest of life today. No regrets the Dragonblood warriors all cried out united. Even ignoring the forest of life's connection with Long Chen, they were all hot-blooded warriors who wouldn't just watch as the forest of life was annihilated. Furthermore, the human race had once betrayed these kind spirit women. This could be considered a kind of atonement. Even the ones who had died felt no regret. The spirit emperor was full of gratitude. I know you don't like that much courtesy, but your great favor will be forever remembered by the forest of life. The spirit emperor then placed her hands in front of her chest. Her hands took a strange form, looking like a flower blooming, with a sacred light shining on her face. She solemnly said, using the name of the life god tree, the forest of life forms an alliance with Long Chen. As long as Long Chen is alive, the forest of life will assist him with our full power. Even if our bodies are burned to ashes, we will not regret it. Even if our bodies are burned to ashes, we will not regret it. Following the spirit emperor, all the forest of life's creatures swore the same thing. All the spirit race warriors had the same hand posture as the spirit emperor. Spirit emperor Long Chen and the rest of the Dragonblood Legion were extremely grateful. All the forest of life's creatures were kind and pure, and they showed a kind of absolute trust to their allies even entrusting their lives to them. Because of it, the Dragonblood Warriors' grief lessened a bit. The battle had only just ended, so everyone rested for a few days. Any external injuries were healed by the Life God Tree, but the wounds in their hearts could not be healed even with the best medicinal pills. They could only be healed with time. All the Dragonblood Warriors were resting beneath the Life God Tree. Divine light sprinkled on their bodies, and they quickly fell into slumber. Long Chen, you should sleep as well. The Life God Tree's blessing will make you feel much better, said the Spirit Emperor. When she looked at Long Chen, she couldn't help feeling sad. Everyone was asleep. Only Long Chen didn't go through this method of healing his wounds. As the leader of the Forest of Life, the Spirit Emperor was connected to the Life God Tree, and she could see the burden on Long Chen's heart. Long Chen shook his head. Some pain should be kept. At the very least, It'll make me cherish my memories of my brothers more. If the pain fades, I might slowly forget them. So I want to remember them forever. I want to remember their smiles. I want to remember every day I was with them. Long Chen, you're too tired. If you continue like this, you will be like the wind, never able to stop. The spirit emperor sighed. She was unable to comprehend the human race's complicated way of thinking. You're right. That's a good comparison. The wind is unable to stop. 
because once it does, it vanishes, which signifies death. In the cultivation world, everyone is doing their best to get stronger. They're all running as fast as they can, because they can't stop, nor do they dare to stop. Long Chen nodded in approval of the spirit emperor's words. Long Chen, stay in the forest of life. The dark forest is heavily injured, so we'll have a long time of peace in the spirit world, said the spirit emperor. Long Chen bitterly smiled. No one who steps into the vortex of the cultivation world can expect a good ending. This world is like a vat of dye, and no one can go through it without being stained. However, you aren't able to understand this thinking of the human race. Although we are like wind, forced to keep going involuntarily, we have our own things that make it worth it. For example, the wind blows through an alley, smelling the buns that have just come out of the oven, hearing the laughter of children playing, seeing the marvels of human civilization. The wind blows across high mountains and great seas, experiencing the magnificence of the world. The wind blows through rivers and fields, experiencing the changes of spring, summer, autumn and winter, learning the flavors of life. As we rush forward, we gain friends, we gain true love, and we journey alongside each other in fortune or disaster. We are like the wind. We don't know where we came from. We don't know where we're going. All we know is that we have to cherish all the scenery of the journey. We have to cherish every companion, every emotion. The heavens are heartless. Cultivators look grand and powerful. But if you think about it, you'll realize the heavens are just playing a cruel game of selecting the best and killing the rest. The heavens act according to their own will. They made the rules to their game, and when they're bored, they'll randomly change the rules as they please. Whoever they say dies has to die. They are both the players and the referee toward the end. Long Chen's expression became frosty, and his killing intent grew stronger. The spirit emperor felt that the current Long Chen was a bit frightening. Long Chen looked up at the sky. This battle was something he viewed as a loss. He hadn't lost to Pen Wanshang. He hadn't lost to Sha Guangyan. And he hadn't lost to the Undying Willow. What he had lost to were these damn heavens. He had planned things out and he had used up all his trump cards. But he had still lost. Thinking of the 537 brothers of the Dragonblood Legion who had fought to their deaths on the battlefield. Long Chen felt like a knife was stabbing his heart. Due to the protection of the spirit trees, as long as a dragonblood warrior wasn't instantly killed, even heavy injuries could be healed in an instant. Only warriors that were slain in one attack would die. In this bitter battle, without the protection of the spirit trees, at least half the dragonblood legion would have died. The dragonblood legion's undefeatable legend had been shattered. This gave Long Chen a warning. He was now seeing things clearly. His opponents weren't people but the heavens. Ever since he had stepped onto his cultivation path, each step had been thorny and covered in pitfalls. There was nothing that ever went smoothly for him. Essentially, none of his opportunities had been gained through luck. Instead, his bad luck always made things gravely life-threatening. This time, there was nothing for him to complain about when it came to the Dragonblood Legion's fighting. Whether it was their arrangement or their individual display, they were all practically perfect. And yet, they had still fallen to this point. If Len Yuian hadn't appeared at the critical moment and reversed the tides, the Dragonblood Legion might have been completely annihilated today. Long Chen silently thought to himself, had he been too brash and made too many enemies? No, because if he had endured instead, his enemies would have long since climbed over his head and crushed him. Had he been too hot-headed and not understood how to act pragmatically? Should he have instead simply slipped away? No, if he had done that, he would have violated the essence of the nine-star hegemon body art, as well as betrayed his own principles. Then he wouldn't be Long Chen. Yes, he could have pretended not to know about the battle in the spirit world. Then he could have had more time to focus on getting stronger. But if he hadn't been here, and the forest of life had been destroyed, it would become a stain on his life that he would never be able to wash away. What would be the point of cultivating if he acted like that? Cultivation was to get stronger. Getting stronger was to live with dignity, to protect what you loved and believed in. If he hadn't come to the spirit world, forgetting about his past debts and abandoning the beliefs in his heart, then what would he have been cultivating for? When he thought about it, 
He felt that he hadn't taken a single step wrong. What was wrong was this world. What was wrong was the heavens. They were intentionally making things hard on him. The spirit emperor chatted a bit longer with Long Chen, trying to untie the knot in his heart. But she found that his thoughts were wandering, so she didn't keep bothering him. Long Chen went to a floating island alone, sitting on a huge leaf seat. He looked at the flow of the waterfall in front of him and felt incomparable pain inside. Battle was not a game. Sacrifices were inevitable. Upon stepping into the cultivation world, death was just a matter of time. People had to view death indifferently, or they should simply not cultivate. These were all words Long Chen had lectured to the Dragonblood Legion so that they could fight without being restrained by the fear of death. The Dragonblood warriors had never questioned his words. He had persuaded them, but now that it was his turn, he found he was unable to convince himself of the same thing. When he thought of those brothers he had eaten, drunk, and laughed with, when he thought of how he would never see those familiar faces again, he felt like his heart was being ripped out. Long Chen stared at the waterfall with a blank expression. His head was empty, and time silently passed. Long Chen, a soft hand gently stroked Long Chen's cheek. Chu Yao appeared before him. Meng Qi and Tang Wan'er had also come. The three of them felt their own hearts stabbed with pain when they saw Long Chen like this. Long Chen was a hero of indomitable spirit, but he also had his fatal weakness. He cared too much about his people. But it was because of this that he possessed such charisma that people followed him unswervingly. Meng Qi, are your eyes all right? Long Chen was pleasantly surprised to see that Meng Qi's eyes had regained their luster. Most likely, the life god tree had helped her heal them. Long Chen, if you want to cry, you should cry. You might feel a bit more comfortable. Meng Qi held Long Chen's hand. Just seeing him like this, she began to tear up. Long Chen smiled faintly. I'm fine. I'm just trying to think about them so I can forever remember them in my heart. I know they wouldn't want me to be like this, but I'm just doing this to cherish them. Once everyone's recovered, I'll also come out of this. We still have a long path to walk. Those people that harmed us will have all their debts dragged out of them. The three of them were slightly comforted to hear this, but their eyes were still red. Long Chen was the leader of the Dragonblood Legion and he couldn't even vent the feelings he wanted to. He could only keep them to himself. That's right, Meng Qi. Did you manage to gather the powerful souls I asked you to gather? Long Chen asked Meng Qi. At this time, a bit of light began to shine in his eyes. This matter was extremely important. Chapter 1460 Those closer to Len Yuan are closer to reincarnation translator. Born to be before the battle had started. Long Chen had given a mission to gather any powerful souls of fallen experts. That was because the armor and weapons that Guo Ran had forged didn't have item spirits. They couldn't count as true ancestral items. That was why the Dragonblood warriors had had their lives stolen under the attacks of their opponents' ancestral items. Almost all the warriors had died to the rank 9 Celestial's ancestral item. The magical beasts might have been powerful but they had at most been capable of heavily injuring the Dragonblood Warriors. Those heavy injuries were instantly healed by the Spirit Tree's life blessing, so the majority of the Fallen Warriors had been slain by that Rank 9 Celestial from the Ancient Family Alliance. In the end, his body had been torn into pieces by the Dragonblood Warriors. If the Dragonblood Warriors' armor and weapons had had item spirits, they would have become true ancestral items then perhaps they would have managed to keep their legend of zero casualties. However, there weren't so many ifs in this world. There was only the cruel reality. Meng Qi nodded. I gathered many powerful souls. Most are from 11th rank magical beasts, and some are from the corrupt path, ancient races, and ancient family alliance. Meng Qi took out a dark red pearl. This was a soul item, the soul locking pearl. During the battle, Meng Qi's spiritual strength had been spread throughout the battlefield. There were now millions of powerful souls sealed within it. For the magical beasts, only those above the 10th rank had souls that wouldn't instantly dissipate. As for humans, soul transformation experts were able to keep a complete soul upon dying. The fighting had been exceptionally fierce. Many powerful attacks had contained a powerful soul-killing aspect to them which meant that only one in dozens of viable souls had managed to survive. 
From that, it could be seen how grand that battle had been. Calculating like this, the number of experts at the soul transformation realm and above had numbered in the tens of millions. Furthermore, those tens of millions of deaths had come from the dark forest, corrupt path, ancient races, and ancient family alliance. That was because the forest of life spirit beasts and warriors all had their souls returned to the forest of life when they died. Pick out 15,000 of the strongest souls and have them devour the other souls. Then they can be used to create ancestral item spirits, said Long Chen. To inject spirituality into an item like this after the forging process required the souls be very powerful. The stronger the souls were, the better. So like raising poison insects, he would have them slaughter each other until only the strongest remained. This method was very cruel and was commonly used by the corrupt path. A large reason the corrupt path was so powerful was because they used such evil cultivation techniques. However, Long Chen didn't feel any guilt about this. He was still full of hatred and pain. He had to strengthen the dragon blood legion. All right. Men Chi nodded. You don't need to look after me. I really am fine. Men Chi, how did you end up struck with such an immense backlash seeing their worried expressions? Long Chen comforted them and changed the subject. The three head nine eye illusion spirit beast's power is too terrifying. I only used the slightest bit of it but it immediately caused a spiritual backlash and snatched away my sight. It was similar to a kind of curse. Fortunately, the life god tree removed it for me, or with my current power, I would be forced to stay blind, said Men Chi with some faint fear. To unleash a huge, terrifying attack, Men Chi had tapped into the three head nine eye illusion spirit beast's energy. She had just used the slightest bit and it had caused such a backlash. If she had used a bit more, she might have lost her life. Is it really so terrifying Long Chen? Chu Yao and Tang Wan'er were startled to hear this. It was clearly just a skeleton that had died who knew how many years ago. But it still possessed such power? The three-head nine-eye illusion spirit beast is an ancient species, and a king amongst soul beasts. Although it's already dead, its crystal core and nine eyes are still intact. They aren't the slightest bit damaged. So a significant amount of its energy was preserved. Although it's less than half, it's still not something I can currently use. Furthermore, I still haven't pinpointed the source of its soul and cannot control it. I can only borrow the slightest bit of its energy. And so, I almost made a huge mistake. Side Men Chi, the three-head nine-eye illusion spirit beast was truly worthy of being a legendary existence. However, as long as I spend a bit more time, I should be able to pinpoint the source of its soul. Then I'll be able to control it, said Men Chi confidently. All right, then just study it closely. You can give us a pleasant surprise when the time comes. However, first handle the matter of the souls. That's very important to the lives of the dragon blood warriors, said Long Chen. Men Chi nodded. This matter was very simple for her, and she quickly set it up. After finishing Men Qi's matter, Long Chen took out a fist-sized ball. Inside was the sealed undying willow. Long Chen still felt some fear toward it. It was too terrifying. Possessing a practically undying body. This little sphere was just the size of a fist. But the undying willow had created a huge space inside it. As if it was a spatial ring. Within this space was a seed. It looked like a walnut that was tightly sealed. The black soil's devouring energy was being blocked by the seed's outer layer and was unable to harm its core. Although it was just the size of a fist, it was as heavy as a mountain. There were also countless runic chains sealing the outside. There was no way for the undying willow to escape. Chu Yao, the undying willow is sealed inside. You can use this to slowly absorb its energy, refine it, and you will be in control of the undying willow's power. You'll be in possession of both great defensive and offensive prowess in the future, said Long Chen, handing the sphere over to Chu Yao. Chu Yao received it, excited. Long Chen was correct. Once she refined it, she would be able to peer into the undying race's mysteries, wildly increasing her combat power. Her offensive might would sharply increase. One or, sorry, but I don't have a decent gift for you. Long Chen was a bit embarrassed to have given Men Qi and Chu Yao such priceless treasures but left Tang Wan'er empty-handed. Tang Wan'er shook her head. I don't need a gift. I just want you to be happy. 
Tang Wanar's eyes reddened. Although she did her best to suppress it, she couldn't hold back some tears. Seeing Long Chen in his current state had been heartbreaking. He was normally a laughing scoundrel and an unrivaled hero on the battlefield. Yet just now, he had appeared haggard and lonely. All right, don't cry. That matter has already passed. Our brothers will always stay by our side. They will see our glory. So what we have to do is live happily so that they can rest in peace. Long Chen smiled and wiped away her tears. Tang Wan'er might be a bit petty and liked to fight. But when it came to big matters, she never caused any trouble for Long Chen. She treated him sincerely. And her expression of emotions was the most direct amongst the women. All right. If you don't want me to cry. Tell me if you had an affair with Len Yuyan. Tang Wan'er wiped away her tears and looked at Long Chen seriously. Long Chen's expression became odd. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry. If you change the subject so quickly, you might cause the card to flip. Don't act dumb. Speak. What happened between you and Len Yuyan? In particular, did anything intimate happen between you? Tang Wan'er stared closely into Long Chen's eyes seeming to want to determine if he was lying or not. Meng Qi and Chu Yao laughed. Tang Wan'er's expression looked both serious and mischievous. Long Chen didn't have any way to handle her. Long Chen bitterly smiled. It's not so exaggerated. You should know. She's always wanted to kill me. Helplessly, Long Chen explained all of what had happened between him and Len Yuyan. Len Yuyan's is the number one figure of the corrupt path's junior generation. No one can contend with her, and she's both unrivaled in power and viciousness. But curiously, she doesn't kill experts from the righteous path. It seems she always kills people from her own corrupt path, said Chu Yao. Perhaps this is the hell flower that kills those closest to it. Those closer to Len Yuyan are closer to reincarnation, said Long Chen. Also without comprehending, Len Yuyan was a mystery. Sometimes. He felt like she had a split personality, as if there were two souls within her. Even now, he didn't know what she was thinking. Anyone who tried to communicate with her would have to be prepared to go reincarnate at any moment. Her character was unfathomable. She really is terrifying. She even almost killed Sha Guangyan. He had to sacrifice an arm to get away, said Meng Chi with some admiration. Because she had been blind at that time. She had used her soul to cover the battlefield. She was the one who had witnessed Len Yuyan's fighting the closest. Each time Len Yuyan had attacked, she had launched a vicious killing blow to directly wreak her opponent's life. Sha Guangyan hadn't had any chance to fight back at all. In the end, even his strongest defense had been broken. He had left behind an arm as he miserably fled. Long Chen also couldn't help sighing. In truth. On the outskirts of the ancient battlefield, he had had mercy on her, but hadn't she also had mercy on him? If she had really wanted to kill Long Chen and used her full power from the start, he might have died already. That meant Len Yuyan hadn't really wanted to kill him. But then what was her goal? Neither Long Chen nor the corrupt path understood Len Yuyan. No one knew what she was thinking. Len Yuyan rarely spoke. She usually communicated with her bone sword and those who she communicated with usually died. However, Len Yuyan's words to him made Long Chen feel some distress. If I one day die, will you feel sad? Long Chen, Len Yuyan is hiding immense pain inside. Although she's powerful, merciless, and kills decisively, when she saved me, I touched her hand. My wood spiritual energy allowed me to sense the helplessness and indecision in her heart, said Chu Yao after pondering for a moment. Helplessness and indecision. Tang Wan'er was gobsmacked. Even such a terrifying killing goddess felt such emotions? What level of expert is Len Yuyan? Asked Long Chen. He had too many questions when it came to Len Yuyan.